welcome to the stream. I am Super Hog Wild. This is my first stream, so you'll have to bear with me. Luckily, wrote some notes. Just get a look at these right now. Okay, that's right. It says welcome to the stream. I already said that. I am Super Hog Wild. Said that. Uh, you know what? This is actually just a picture of a cat. <laughs> I don't actually need these either. Okay, so let's just get this started. Get right into it. Get into the nitty gritty. Uh, I'm going to be doing what are called merchant commodity runs. If you're not a Sea of Thieves player, that's fine. I'm sure you will catch on quite quickly. The gist of the game is that you are on a sea full of thieves. You sail a ship. This is my ship. It's a nice ship. Does what I need it to do. Gets me where I'm going. Uh, we'll get more into that in just a minute. But first of all, let's just get this shit started. Most people, when they play this game, snakes are misunderstood. You know? They head around and uh, look for people to sink. Most streamers, anyways. I think most people who uh, play this game, judging by reading the subreddits, is they try to do PvE content, and then they get sunk by some sweaty crews, and then they go and they post about uh, how PvP is ruining the game. And that's a fair, that's a fair take. But also, you know, everybody tells them it's a skill issue. And what I hope to do with this series of videos here. They show you that there are things you can do. You can get away. There are evasive maneuvers that I have learned um, through these futile commodity runs that originally when I started doing them, uh, I just did them to see, you know, I used to run crews with uh, galleons and brigs. There's three types of ships in this game depending on how many crew members you want. My little ship there, that's a sloop. That's a, a two-man crew. Most people sail sloops solo though because it's one of the only ships, the only ship that you can do it. I mean, ah, there's people who sail galleons and brigs solo, but there's just too many sails in my opinion. Kind of a pain in the butt. And the sloop's actually designed to be run solo. I'll show you uh, a couple of quirks about it that allow that to be possible. Uh, so as I was saying, when I originally started doing these commodity runs, uh, I was just kind of sick running crews because running crews is fun I'm usually the captain which can be fun but you gotta tell people uh, you know lower the sails raise the sails adjust the sails fire the cannons pick up the loot hey man maybe stop fishing when like uh, there's people here that are putting their work in <laughs> one guy I had uh, he just played happy birthday on the accordion for instance for uh, it must have been like 45 minutes straight um, but that's part of the fun of the game, you know, you go on, you post a looking for group, uh, little post there, you run a galleon, you're stuck with three totally random people on voice chat for uh, anywhere from an hour to five hours because of the way the games run. Uh, the longer you keep your ship in the ocean and the longer you keep your run going, the more loot that you're going to get and the more bonuses that you're going to get from that loot. So you really have an incentive to stick with these people for as long as possible. No matter how rough it gets sometimes, <laughs> man. And like, you know, that's cool. That's cool. I love them all, even the annoying people, man. Because it's just like, you get to go on there, it's like chat roulette. Or uh, Omegle or whatever, if that was a, a thing. I think that's what that was called, where you just go on there and you just get teamed up with these randoms and you never know what you're going to get. But uh, everybody gets burnt out on that kind of stuff, so... I was just trying to find a way to make as much money solo as possible. And running these commodities from port to port seems to be the best way that I've come up with. Now, of course, when you're solo sleeping, unless you're one of these uh, amazing streamers on here who can just uh, solo sleep PvP, absolutely no problem, you're going to get sunk a lot, and it's going to feel futile. Uh, originally, I just decided to see, you know, how many ports could I run until eventually someone does sink me, but after doing this enough times, I actually found that you can get away. There are these little things you can do to help you succeed. And the number one thing to remember, I think, is that 
Um, if you've ever been in a crew chasing a ship, especially since those crews are a group of people and you're not solo, um, when you're chasing a ship, it starts to get uncomfortable when you can't catch them. And, uh, you know, a crew of three or four people, they don't want to do something if it starts to feel futile, right? They're not going to hang out when they feel that their captain isn't going to, uh, to get them that loot. And it just seems like you're chasing the ship around and you're just not getting anywhere and they're going to call it off. So the trick is, is you got to outlast them and you got to remember, even though it's an uncomfortable feeling being chased, um, like I've said before, it kind of feels like falling off a cliff with a bomb strapped to your chest. It's a good, great deal of adrenaline. But if you can uh, manage to keep, you know, shaking these people off your tail, if they're in a, a bigger ship, you can uh, use your outmaneuvering. You can do a little club haul, which is an anchor turn. If you reach the edge of the map, boop, sail past them. They might get a couple of cannon shots in you. But they will not be able to catch you. And as long as you don't get boarded, you're probably going to do just fine. Um... I'm not really sure what we're going to run into. I've gotten so good at this that, you know, I can usually do a five hour uh, commodity run, not have any problems. Um, one of the number one things is spotting your ships before they spot you. And then you kind of just make a gamble on whether or not you think they're going to make that beeline towards you or whether it's just going to be another player who's out there, you know, fishing at an island, uh, collecting treasure or, uh, you know, whatever. But one general rule is if they have an alliance flag up and they look like they want to be your friend, it's a trap. Don't fall for it. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll get it started. I'll keep yakking on about uh, some of the things that you can do to uh, increase the distance behind the ship, uh, behind you, because the sloop, um, as we all know or don't know, is the slowest ship in the game. So you got to use uh, what you can. Even if you're going directly upwind, which is something we'll talk about some more, uh, each ship has its own uh, situation where it's its fastest regarding um, wind directions, right? But the sloop, the only way the ship uh, this gets any kind of um, speed advantage over others is if you go directly into the wind. You can't even go like on an angle up the wind. It's got to be directly into the wind, and even then you only get like, ah, it's not even 5% on a brig or a galleon, so it's just... Um, it's not a strategy that works, but what does work is you run them into islands as much as you possibly can, and it is just, it is a shit show, and I fucking love it. And that's why I was uh, inspired to start, uh, to start doing, uh, doing these in the first place. What's up, Stibbo Narnar? Yeah, the drug runs in uh, GTA. Stibbo Narnar says, uh, this seems kind of like drug runs in GTA 5. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me, I'm going to actually probably do some streams about those as well. Yeah, buddy, it's it's exactly like that. Um, the big thing about those drug one runs is about reading the lobby, right? Because a lot of people, they, they fucking complain that those are tough to do as well. But you just got to learn to read people. And, you know, don't get frustrated when you fuck up. Because we all fuck up. I'm going to be fucking up. Like I've said before, I'm going to get harpooned probably. I've been harpooned before. Uh, it's not a good feeling. But, eh, fuck it, you know. Let's just get out there and see what the fuck happens. So, uh, if you've never done these merchant commodity runs, first thing you got to do is you got to come down here. You got to uh, pop an emissary flag because it will not let you purchase any of these commodities without uh, the merchant emissary flag up. So, unfortunately, you know, you can't do um, other emissary runs and do these commodities at the same time. But, to be honest, I think if you could do that, it'd be a little bit OP anyways. Uh, in regards to the emissary flags, if you've never played Sea of Thieves before, so what it is is each one of these different, uh, what do you call these things? Fucking things like the merchant house, the, the treasure guys, the skull hoarder dudes, dudes and, and ladies. Um, you pop one of their flags and then what that'll do is you get uh, five different levels depending on um, what you're doing. The more stuff you do, like say you sink a skeleton ship, that'll give you a level. Uh, if you find some treasure on an island, the more treasure you bring on your ship, it levels it up. And at each level of the flag, you will get a bonus when you turn in your loot. In regards to merchant commodities, you get uh, the bonuses to the flag when uh, not when you put the loot on the ship, but when you sell the loot. So it's a little different than the other houses there, or whatever you call them. Um, but yeah, when you get uh, level 5 on that flag, it gives you 2.5 times bonus on what you get. So it's absolutely worth doing it. But it does take some time to level that flag up. And, of course, what happens is uh, you get that 
little tail on the top there gets like 50 fucking feet long and then everybody can see it from the edge of the map and they know that like hey you're the rabbit that's got all the loot and everybody's gonna try to kill you or in this case kill me it's gonna be a fun time it's a good time i love it i love adrenaline i'm not a skydiver but like you know i find if you get a little bit of excitement in your life where you can then uh for me anyways just speaking from personal experience Helps me calm down, you know, when I'm just like in day-to-day -day situations, because I'm like, ah, oh, at least I don't have three hours of loot on my ship, and I'm being chased by fucking murderous pirates. So yeah, get this run started. You just go in here, buy all the commodities. We're at Dagger Tooth, so Dagger Tooth is the fucking worst port out of all seven ports. So um, I'm just gonna dump those there right now, and we're gonna harpoon them on the ship, because this dock right here, if you bring your ship in to load uh, you always want to try to keep your ship in a situation so that if somebody does roll up on you you can just jump in pop sail lose whatever shit you got on the dock and just get the fuck out of there and live to sail another day it's uh, better to lose the entire load on the ship than it is to you know, lose a couple of these commodities because they don't really cost much so if you lose one drop of uh, cargo, or even all your cargo, it's not really a loss of actual coins, like the cost of the cargo, right? But it is a uh, loss in time. Uh, it takes about two hours to get that Emissary 5 and to get your cargo fully stocked here. So there's different ways you can do this. Uh, there's seven different ports. There are seven different goods. Uh, resets once a week where each good will have, or sorry, each port will have a different good that they have an excess of and one good that they do not sell and wish to buy at top price. Some people run these just buying up one good, you know, yeah, for instance here, I didn't check to see what it was, like chickens. but you go in here and you'll see for instance, they sell 10 spices, right? So some people go in there and they figure, ah, oh, just buy 10 spices and then run those directly to the port that they need them Please don't scare the chickens. What I've found, uh, doing it the best way, is to just buy everything at every port, and then you sail around either clockwise or counterclockwise, and you unload whatever good it is that sells the highest at the port you sail into. What you do to figure out what port uh, has an excess of what, and what port has uh, has a surplus or needs it or whatever is you go into this little book here and it says shores of plenty these are the different ports so sought after raw sugar surplus upgraded tea new golden sands unclassified gemstones broken stone etc etc and then what I recommend is you write those down into a uh, little little handbook or onto you know sheet of paper. What I got uh, set up right now, now that I'm doing streaming, I got a second monitor here, so I transferred it all over into a, uh, a little WordPad document. I'm just still checking the horizon here. You never know who's going to roll up. So let me just get this open here. Good old Dagger Tooth. The worst port. All the other ports are pretty good. Galleon's my favorite, except for probably Moro's Peak. Then uh, either Ancient Spire or the other ones kind of got a long dock, which, you know, whatever. Talk about that when we get to it. That's a galleon out on the uh, horizon, but that's a skeleton galleon, so we don't have to worry about it. I'm almost 100% sure it's a skeleton galleon. Usually what it is is you can see the lamps, right? They'll be either blue and green. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I'm not so sure that's a skeleton. But, yeah, whatever. It's not coming our way, so we're fine. So this is the part of the stream where I fucking load this shit up. You can, like, I don't know, man, go make a sandwich or something. Stimbonarnar asks, does your dog help you? Um, I'm actually helping the dog for insurance reasons. He is the captain of the ship not me. So um, I don't expect the dog to help me because he, he's officially the captain. Before I load up here, let me give you a tour of my ship. I'm quite proud of this. Uh, I've named it the Centennial Falcon, which is of course a reference to the fact that there is a falcon on the front of the ship. Right? It's a beautiful falcon. 
my dog, which I've already stated, is the captain of the ship. Uh, his name is Chewy, which is once again a reference to the fact that uh, he likes to chew on things all the time. I've uh, only started coming back into this. Um, I took kind of like a year off, but I came back at this last season. So I don't know when they added this shit where you can uh, actually buy a ship, put your name on it. There's like these little trinkets you can stock the shelves with. I got this smoldering geode. Uh, I, I used to do a lot of things in the, the Devil's Roar, as you can tell by all my fucking glowing clothing here. Ah, I'm pretty proud of that shit, man. It used to be when you do uh, merchant runs. You go and do them in the Devil's Roar. Anything you do in the Devil's Roar, like if you want to make money in this game, solo or with people, whatever. Volcanoes are a fucking pain in the ass, but you get one guy on the ship or whatever to watch it. Not a big deal. Just uh, pull out when the eruption happens, pull back in. Um. <laughs> Some of the fucking things that I'm going to end up saying on here are going to sound pretty dirty, and I'm going to try not to bring attention to that, man. I always talk about, like, taking the dog out of the box, and I'm always like, there's something about that? Taking my dog out of the box? Like, that sounds wrong as well, right? But yeah, so uh, pull up, dur pull out during the eruption, and then when the eruption's done, pull the ship back in, <laughs> right? And uh, you should be good, man, and then all your loot's double when you do it over in the Moros Peak. So what I used to do is I used to do cargo runs where you sail around to the fucking little islands and shit. It's not like commodities. You don't do them port to port. You have to bring them to some fucking jackass on a little dock. It's like, you know, you got to bring him his little devil's rum bottles or whatever, but you do those over in the Moros Peak, and you get double for him. So that's where I got all this cool fucking gear, man. Um, especially, like, if you're trying to level up your your uh, your houses or whatever to uh, get your pirate legend, that's another thing. You get double loot over in the Moros Peak, so that's worth doing. And then, like, yeah, you just head over to the fucking place where the sea dogs used to be, and you can buy all this cool shit, like this flaming jacket and these pants. My fucking belt buckle's on fire. I got a fucking banjo. My banjo's on fire. Like, literally everything I own is on fire. It's great. Like, I got a fucking flaming drum. Like, oh, this is good shit. I like it. So, uh, yeah. Since we're over at the uh, fucking Dagger's Tooth, I gotta pull this shit around. Kinda awkward. Yeah, Stibbo Narnar says saves on heating. Absolutely does. That's important. Unless you're in the Devil's Roar, then you need to save on cooling. Because you're going to spend a lot of time on fire. We'll be sailing through there. Um, if you haven't seen any of that, because one of the nice things about doing these commodity runs is that you get to sail to all seven ports, so you get to see all of the different locations. And uh, a full run around all seven ports takes about two hours, so it's actually quite a nice little scenic route. Another reason why I started doing this to begin with, these merchant runs and stuff, instead of doing like digging up treasure on the islands and whatever, is when I first started playing the game, man, I just liked sailing. And doing merchant stuff, it's mostly just sailing. So if you just like sailing from point to point, making coin, escaping f fucking crazy people on ships, then this is the job for you. I always joke with people because, you know, it's like, well, why would you play a game called Sea of Thieves and be a merchant instead of a pirate? Yeah, it's it's pretty stupid, especially considering, you know, I'm on the Sea of Thieves. That would be like, what if there was a city called, like, the City of Thieves? And you're like, oh, I'm just going to open a fucking uh, warehouse or a corner store in the City of Thieves. It's like, yeah, it's, it's not smart, man. So that's why I think, you know, it takes real courage to be a merchant out here. And incidentally, if you take a look at the uh, Xbox achievements... I'm on Xbox. You can see that not a lot of people do these merchant runs. I think it's just not cool enough, man. <laughs> but you'll see. You'll see. It's fucking cool. Shut up, Chewie. He's just reminding me I gotta buy meat and bait. Which is, it's actually meat and bait. I'm not, I'm not fucking saying dirty shit again. <laughs> Stimbo Narnar says you should play GTA and not steal any cars. Funny you should say that, because when the Kyle Perico heist came out and you could make like two million dollars a day just grinding that shit over and over again, um, I bought a 1.3 million dollar convertible with like zebra print uh, fucking cushions and shit, and what I do is I just drive around the city now and I just blast reggae music and just use the fucking hydraulics to bounce the front. 
and flex on Nuke. And yeah, I just like, that's all I do in that game, man. It was the best $1.3 million I ever spent. I thought it was like a joke at first, but like, man, it just, it's a fun game to just fuck around driving a car that nobody else can ever afford. <laughs> I get a lot of compliments on it too. I'm definitely going to do some GTA streams at some point. I haven't been back uh, since, I don't know, they they updated all the shit. I got burnt out on the Kyle Perico shit, just doing like that fucking CIA shit over and over again. Which it's, it gets a heist, but crawling around in the dark wearing other people's clothes just reminds me of CIA activity for some reason. It feels more like you're working a government job than you are being a criminal. Eh, yeah, it's, it's fun, but... I just wish, like, what I really like doing, like, talking about those drug runs, right? I like doing the, um... Doing the shit with, like, the weed houses and the fucking cocaine dispensaries or whatever the fuck you call them. That shit was fun, man. Just delivering those stupid fucking packages while everybody's trying to kill you on flying motorcycles. Which, like, I guess they added a car to shoot those down, but... I also figured out that as soon as you see him coming on radar, what you do is you just dismount from your vehicle and you use like a fucking anti-air missile launcher and you can actually knock him down, man. And it feels good finally getting back at those fucking, those fucking guys, man. They should have never added that flying motorcycle. Everybody calls them broomsticks. So I have a specific way of organizing these. I'll explain that after it's done here. It's fucking brilliant. I'm really proud of it. You don't have to be organized, you know, you can just huck your shit all over the place, but I find when you're, uh, when you're sailing and you just want to, like, get to a port, unload, and then get back in the water, which, again, sounds dirtier than it was supposed to be. It's really good to have your, uh... <laughs> yeah, Stimbo Narnar says, I bet this part would be a lot quicker with a first mate or a, or a bot swing or whatever, I don't know. It would be, but then I gotta fucking put up with the guy. I used to have this, like, British guy that I knew. I think he's Welsh or something. I actually met his, his ex-girlfriend first. She was cool. And then I met him, and then I made friends with him, and then, like, she didn't really like that. Uh, that's a little tip. That's a little tip. If you want to be friends with a girl, don't make friends with her, her fucking ex. But I, I kind of did it on purpose because, you know, whatever. I just think it's funny. <laughs> Whatever that says about me, I don't know, but she was kind of being annoying to me, so I was like, oh, okay, I'll just go make friends with your ex-boyfriend, though, and she was like, rrr, rrr, rrr. like, she didn't say anything, but I don't know. anyways, whatever, point being, uh, yeah, he just, like, spent a lot of time on his phone, and it's like, that's cool, I guess, but, like, you know, I don't know, man, some people, sometimes, when you're sailing on a ship with them, being on a ship with them, it's just, it's so much worse, because you just can't get away, and so it's like, if it's like, claustrophobia or something, like, social claustrophobia, yeah, I don't know. But they're good people. Everybody's good people in the end, man. Everybody's just trying to do their best. Okay, so uh, there's seven goods. That's a fucking sloop. Let me just take a look at that first. That's actually two skelly sloops, so we're good there. You don't often see two of them together. They must be a mated pair. This is actually, uh, this is pretty amazing. This is like the nature channel. We might get to see uh, a baby sloop. There's three of them. They might be competing for dominance within the herd. This is absolutely astounding. That one's not a skelly, though. I think that one's a real boy. But those two are skellies. So skeleton uh, sloops, they are uh, just AI sloops if you're not a Sea of Thieves player. So if you hear me talk about skeleton sloops, they're just, uh, you know, you can go, you can shoot some cannonballs into them, get some free loot. They're actually good uh, because they'll level up any of your emissary flags. So if you're doing these cargo runs, or commodity runs, rather, cargo runs are something different, but I'll probably be using the words interchangeably if I'm not careful here. Um, when you're doing these commodity runs, if you sink one of these sloops, it'll actually give you a bar on your flag, so it's an easy way to get some some bonus real quick. And then, of course, you can sell the uh, the emeralds and rubies and shit that they drop at the merchant place, and you get a bonus on that. Okay, so talking about my organization here, there are seven kinds of goods. I only got six of them on here because, like I said, one port, or all the ports won't sell one kind of good. So I organized them into two types, left and right. So on the left side, I got organics. On the right side, I have non-organics. I picked the right side because the non-organics are like stone, minerals, and gemstones. And that's kind of like stronger than like cloth and spices. And I'm right-handed, so that's why I picked it to be the right side. And when you're organizing shit, that's the way you organize it, is you got to organize it in whatever way makes sense to you. And the more connections that you can make sense for your organization, then the easier it is to remember it. 
So since I've split them from uh, organics on the left, non-organics on the right, port and starboard, Stimbo Narnar says, yes, thank you for correcting me. I'm a real captain. Well, the dog's the captain, but I am a certified captain. I went to captaining school, which is not a real thing, and it never happened. But uh, it's still, you know, I, I, it's true to me, man. Sometimes I like to just wear the hat, get the, I'll get the eye patch. You got to switch the eye patch, though, or else, because, you know, you'll go cross-eyed or whatever. But the point being... I'm a professional, okay? So on the starboard side here, what I've done is I've organized them uh, to least complex to most complex. So create a broken stone, least complex. We got minerals. They're like, you know, a little more complex, something more going on there. And then we got uh, creative unclassified gemstones, which is like, you know, there's all kinds of shit going on in there. I just like to picture like rubies and emeralds and everything. So that's like, to me, more complex. As for the left side, we have creative raw sugar, doesn't get uh, least complex than that. It's just a bunch of fucking sugar. It's white powder or whatever in a crate. We'll be talking about that later because, like, when I'm delivering 15 crates full of sugar to a port that only has five people in it, I start to question, like, what's really in these crates, right? But just fucking don't ask, don't tell, man. I don't care. I'm just the merchant. I'm just running the goods. I'm not asking the questions. Next up, we got the crate of unguided tea. Ungraded tea, rather. Right here will be silk cloth. Uh, I think it's fucking unsorted or something. And then these are the spices, which I consider to be the most complex. And then interestingly enough, uh, based on my organization that I did, the price of the goods when you sell them actually goes uh, cheapest, starting with the sugar to here, and then up to the stone to most expensive here. So... Total coincidence, but that's the way it works. And if you're doing it yourself, I don't know. It's a good system. I recommend it. But the most important thing is to find a system that works for you, man. Shut this fucking lamp off because we don't need none of that. You'll see how far you can see these lamps from, man. It's fucking outrageous. These ones are fine. I don't know, I don't know if it's the bilge. The bilge is like the lowest part of a ship, but I don't know if you'd call it a bilge on a sloop. Uh, so now at this point, we got to figure out whether we're going to be doing clockwise or counterclockwise. Just for now, we should be fine. Okay, so I've circled all the ports here. We're at Daggertooth. This is Galleon. We'll be coming down here to Moros Peak and then cutting across to Ancient Spire. Down to Plunder Outpost. Right up here to Golden Sands. Sanctuary's up here, and then coming back around to Dagger Tooth. And a round trip should take us about two hours. So it's quite the sightseeing. Let me just fucking fix that. I don't know if you guys have ever played this game before, but it's such a trip because, like, you'll spend five hours on a ship. And then you'll shut the game down, you go to, like, get a glass of water, and I swear to God, man, the room, if you close your eyes, it still fucking does a little bit of sloshing. And it used to kind of, like, I don't know, not, like, disturb me, but it was kind of weird at first. But now since I've played this game so much and I have so many good memories playing it, it's actually, like, kind of a comforting feeling when you're just lying there trying to go to, to sleep after a, a long day playing Sea of Thieves. And it's like, yeah, just feeling the motion of the ocean. So, checking my little list here on commodities, I think what I decided is uh, we're going to do counterclockwise. Because what you look for is you look for the most number of, like, how do I put this? You want to make your sales as often and soon as possible. So, like, if you sail in one direction, for instance, we're dagger tooth and I'm picking up silks. So, the closest sale for silks is oh no sorry i read that backwards we're picking up spices so the closest sale from spices is two ports away and that's moro's peak so it looks like we're gonna do clockwise if we're going that way but let me just see what else we got here now we're gonna do counterclockwise so i won't sell these sales uh sorry i won't sell these spices as quick as i could but um when we get down to some of these other ones there'll be some other quick sales here Tea, minerals, minerals, yeah, that's good. Spices. Spices. Stone, stone. 
Golden Sands to plunder. That's counterclockwise. So yeah, we're taking it counterclockwise. Take her into the shores of plenty. Which is my favorite place to chill out because it's got those turquoise seas. But also, I think the loot is like the fucking worst. But I'm not sure. I mean, all I know is obviously you got that specialty loot in the... Uh, the Moros Peak area there. I'm not sure if the loot spawns are different in the other three seas that you can sail through. They got the wilds, the ancient isles, and uh, the shores of plenty. But I just kind of have a suspicion, man, just because the shores of plenty, uh, it just looks the nicest. So I'm assuming they counteract that by giving you shittier loot drops. But I'm always into like custom, not custom, hidden game mechanics. Um, for instance, one time, you know, I was wondering, is there any pattern to which way the wind blows? It always changes, it blows every which way, but is there any pattern? So I sat there one time and fished, and I wrote down uh, an hour's worth of wind patterns, and there is actually a pattern to it. It changes every 15 minutes. It will only change um, at most 45 degrees in a change. And then generally speaking, at the same time of day, so in game day so it's every 24 minutes it will be blowing the same direction now whether or not you can do anything with that uh stimbo narna says whoa cool cloud yeah you're gonna see a lot of them buddy this fucking game i love the graphics in it it has a lot of uh artistic artistic design rare is there it's a they're a fucking bunch of artists man one of the things that I've noticed is no matter what angle you're looking at these islands from or where you're standing on the island, there's always like a really artistic composure to how they put uh, the rocks and the trees and the barrels and shit. There's never like a, a spot in any of the islands or ports where it, it looks like there's something missing. You know, it's like if you were to sketch a picture of an island, you would want to put stuff to look at kind of all across the picture, and they've done a really good job of somehow balancing that out even though you can go anywhere on these islands and look at them from any angle. But yeah, was that the cloud you are talking about? That fucking big old pirate ship cloud? Because that's actually an encounter. That's probably why those skeleton ships are over there. That's like, uh... That's a fucking big-ass storm over there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do those, those uh, skelly encounters. You have to fight the skeleton galleons in them, and those you kind of want a crew to do. It's a pain in the ass, unless you have like, oh, you need like 300 cannonballs to do them, and then even if you have 300 cannonballs, it's like, fuck man, it's a pain in the ass to sink a galleon. With uh, skeleton crews, they won't bail out the water, but they will repair the holes, so you just gotta fucking blast them, blast them, blast them, blast them, blast them. And they'll patch them up, but, you know, if you hit them a whole bunch, and then you run them into an island, and then you come back to hit them some more, they will not bail the water out, so you can do it in like a couple of, uh, a couple of things. Yeah, Stimbo Narnar says, I didn't know Rare made this game. I remember Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Dude, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Oh, shit. Is that counter music? Yeah, so speaking of that cloud, I'm like in the shit. I went into the encounter here. I gotta straighten this out anyways. We'll be good. We'll be good, man. Ah, this is fine. Yeah, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Uh, my first Rare game that I played was like Donkey Kong Country, um, which is funny because coming back to this shit, a lot of Donkey Kong Country was like um, pirate themed because a King K. Rule was a pirate, so there's a lot of fucking barrels and bananas and coconuts and shit in that game. So I came back to this and I was like, oh my god. Yeah, this was made by Rare, but dude, Conquer's Bad Fur Day, I fucking can't remember how old we were when that shit came out, but like, I was like old enough to think I was too old to play the game, even though it was like an M rated game, but it was like, oh, what's this game? Just got a bunch of fucking fart jokes in it and it's about a squirrel. And then, like, one time we just sat down and played that shit, and oh my fucking god, that is actually like a 10 out of 10 game, man. Really fond memories. Even though, like, dude, there's, there is some shit in there that's a little bit like... Just, I'm not even gonna go into it, okay? Just just play it for yourself and you'll see what I'm talking about. They did a, an HD remaster of that, I think. I don't know what the fuck you can get it for, because... Like, I think they did an HD remaster. If they didn't, they really need to. I'm just saying that I don't think that's something that you can buy on the, uh, the Nintendo store there. Because, like, for one, Rare is not a Nintendo company anymore, and also, too, I just don't think that's the kind of, like, 
kind of quality content that they're looking for. Okay, so yeah, I'm a little bit off. Um, one thing I was saying earlier is like if you're running a sloop solo, it's actually the perfect solo ship. You can you can have a crew of two, but unless you're doing PvP, it's not really necessary. And it's set up that way because after I get past this rock, this is some shit that I didn't know. You can just fucking look over the back here and you can see the map. Look at that. You don't have to run down those steps. So yeah, you just set the map up at your destination and just sail around and you can see it. It's perfect. That's why, like, man, you were talking about me having a first mate or a skipper or some shit to help me load and unload the goods. But what happens is they start trying to, like, run my sails and move my map and shit. And I'm just sitting here like, oh, man, like, I'm not OCD, but, like, if I have my shit set up, it's like, dude, just don't, like, don't touch the map. Don't touch my fucking cell. Okay, maybe I'm a little OCD. I don't know. That's fine, though. <laughs> but, like, the, the amount of help they give me loading and unloading the 15 pieces of cargo is, like, not worth having them on the ship fucking with my sails. And I feel like such a dickhead, too, because it's, like, how am I supposed to tell somebody to just, like, just sit in the corner, man? Just, like, just fish. Just fish or something. Like, I don't need you to touch my sails. It feels like, I don't know. Just, it just feels awful having somebody touch your sails if you don't want them to. It's like, no means no, man. Don't touch my sails. On the other hand, you run a brig or a galleon, and it's like, you can't get these guys to run the sails without fucking yarping at them constantly. Which, as a captain, like, I used to kind of think that was a shitty thing, because I was always like, well, we're trying to you know, everybody get on the same page here. Like, we're trying to go from island to island as quick as we can or whatever, so just fucking set the sails. Why do I got to keep telling you? And then I kind of grew out of that, and I realized that, like, you know, your crew probably shouldn't really be doing anything you're not telling them because uh, that way you have full control of the ship, and it's like... It doesn't take long to tell people to set sail, man, but it just... It fucking... It feels uncomfortable telling people what to do, especially in a video game, you know? <laughs> yeah, Stimbo Narnar says, hold this pail of sand. I wish, I wish. I think that maybe I could just get him to fish. Um, speaking of which, I didn't pick up some bait. Because sometimes, you know, if a port is, uh, if a port's taken, like a ship's sitting in port, sometimes it's good to just pull behind a rock and catch a couple of fish. Have been fun, see if you can catch that fucking charcoal whippersnapper or whatever the fuck they're called. You can sell them for like 4500 But it's not really about the money, it's more just about like, you know, prestige of having a fish on your wall or something. I don't know, video games. I could talk about that, like, forever. Like, why do we even play these games, man? Because they're fucking fun. They are so much fucking fun, but, like, I try to explain some of this shit to people, and they're just like, oh, like, a buddy of mine, I was trying to show him Minecraft. He's like, what's the point of this game? And I was like, dude, you just opened a fucking philosophical can of worms. Like, what is the point of Minecraft? Like, dude, I can't even fucking tell you. This is gonna be the worst docking that you'll see all stream. I'm actually pretty fucking intense about getting a good parking spot. <laughs> okay, good enough, good enough. Because, like, you know, you gotta load and unload a lot of goods, so it's really important to get your ship in a place that that's gonna go as quickly as possible. These little holes, man. Don't worry about these little holes. These holes. It's just good to wash the mud off your boots, you know? Get a little bit of water for... Well, I guess the dog can't drink it because it's not, like, desalinated or whatever. But, uh, you know, whatever. He's the captain. He gets the captain's wage. Buy bottled water if he wants. Um, talking about, like, you know playing these games like these little fucking ornaments man they cost 25,000 gold each and there's like no point to them at all right but oh my god does it fucking feel good when you make the money and you just decorate your ship and a lot of it is like if anything the more it costs the more satisfaction it is to put it there because it's not about like what it does it's about looking at it and remembering like all the shit you did to make the coin to buy the thing and then that somehow gives you, like, this dopamine release every time you look at it. Like, I don't know. They should be getting, like, scientists and universities and shit studying this stuff. Because I think that they could do a lot to, like, um, I don't know, fix people's, uh... State your business, please. Like, how do I put this, man? A lot of people don't like to work 
but then we go and play video games where we're basically just doing work anyways. So, like, is there not a way that we could maybe combine the two somehow and figure out how to, like, you know, treat people better at their jobs? And we'd all just, like, maybe enjoy work a little bit better? I don't know. Getting a little bit deep there, but it intrigues me, man. Because the amount of joy enjoyment I get from just, like, running this uh, cargo from island to island, it's just fucking great. A lot of it, of course, is like the risk of total annihilation. That's another thing I found is, uh, for instance, people get addicted to gambling, right? Like, I love gambling, but I don't gamble for money ever. I just like the thrill of it. So, like, there's something about that thrill, um, about, like, you know, the risk of losing it all that somehow makes the success more enjoyable because a lot of people think like myself included I always thought it was like the success which is what uh, what makes you feel good but then you go and play a game with cheat codes on and there's no risk it no longer means anything you don't care about the success so like what's up with that it's something about that the gamble of the loss is where the enjoyment comes So yeah, I don't know what, this is uh, this is sanctuary. I could give a little island tour. We got time. These goods, another thing, I forgot to mark this down. You got your pocket watch here. It says uh, day 14. The goods respawn every five days, is what I'm told. I always forget to check it. A round trip. Usually they've respawned by the time you get to the first port anyways. Even if you try to sail as hard as you can, you don't run into any problems. Sometimes you do have to take a little time off and fish. Like, for instance, if you buy the goods at the start of the day instead of the end of the day, because they reset at 6 a.m., so kind of like that half day is what matters, whether or not you're going to make it in time. Used to be three days that they reset, and then they changed it to four days, and now I've read it's five days, but if, like I'm saying, if you go on Google and you try to Google that shit, it's either three days or four days or five days, depending on where you read it. I think it's five days personally. They've nerfed this a lot. It used to be like the fucking first time I did this in a galleon with some dudes when it first came out. This is like uh, two years ago or whatever when they first released these commodities. We would get like 110,000 coin per stop. And uh, we just did that shit for seven hours and got... I made two million dollars that day. And it was fucking hilarious because we were just in a galleon. And if anybody was in the port or if anybody got in our way, we'd just fucking blast them. And we didn't get any good fights, but we must have sunk like seven fucking sloops with white sails that had maybe just spawned in the fucking port and the first couple of times it was funny and then eventually we were just like oh my fucking god like yeah I'm the captain blast them boys but like I don't feel good about this I hope I don't end up in sea court asking me like it was just civilians man why did you sink that ship that's ah, it's the sea of thieves come on cut me some slack man <laughs> but you know uh, it's fucking it's a fun game but you can't take it too seriously like I was saying you go into the subreddit and people are just like just fuming over getting sunk and they're like oh, I got my friends into this game and some sweaties pulled up with their sweaters on sweating all over the place and they sunk us and we had no chance and now my friends don't want to play the game and rare needs to change this and rare needs to change that and it's like dude it's just gambling you're just gambling you're out there gambling with your life gambling with your pride and you're always gonna run into people who are better than you no matter how you are and also, too, another thing you gotta understand is that these people just seem like they have fucking godlike abilities in these games. And you're like, how the fuck can anybody be this good at a video game? If you actually follow those people from game to game, a lot of what you experience when you get annihilated by them is actually just them getting lucky. And because you only see that one moment of luck, you're like, oh, these guys must just be like no life or sweaty tryhards man but it's like hey we all get lucky sometimes um one game that's really good for that is if you play chivalry 2 i'll be doing some more like action oriented streams in a bit i fucking know a few weeks or whatever whenever but uh you always check the guy at the top man some of those guys will be like 40 kills and three deaths and then you hang on for another round and you check them and they'll just have an average score of like 15 kills 15 deaths or sometimes they're even negative so it's like, you know, just because somebody's having a good round doesn't mean that that's, like, indicative of all the players or even that player or anything at all. Uh, you just got to, like, keep playing and just keep watching and 
when you're losing, um, use that as an opportunity to like collect information about what's going on, right? Like, like I said, when I first started doing these runs, um, I'm yakking here, but I gotta pay attention to what I should be selling. This is sanctuary, so like I'm supposed to sell sugar. We only have one crate, anyways, but no point holding on to it. Here's your massive crate of sugar. <laughs> no questions asked, right? Like, whatever, whatever there, lady. Never mind when I stop by with 15 of them. It's like, guys are making a lot of brownies in Sanctuary. And there's only, like, seven of you here. Okay, I'll be back in five days with another 15 crates of sugar. Not weird at all, right? So anyways, yeah, when I first started doing these... Ah, I'm a fucking professional captain. I did that on purpose. I knew my anchor was down. Um, but when I first started doing these runs, I was just doing it just to kind of see, like, you know, who's out there. How many times am I going to get attacked? I figured I was going to get sunk anyways, so I just fucking did it, man. Did as many runs as I could to see if I could get away with it. And lo and behold, I could get away with it, and I've been getting away with it ever since. <laughs> and, uh, you know... When you're just getting in there with any new game, especially online games with communities and stuff, just like uh, when you're getting annihilated, just use that time to use your eyes and ears and just take a look around and just enjoy the moment and collect some information that'll help you when you actually do have the skill to use it. That's my little gamer advice. So uh, this is your captain speaking and we will be sailing down to Golden Sands which is uh, recently been redone. They got some construction going on there. It's a beautiful little port. I will actually be doing a tour of that one because it's the only one worth doing a tour of, walking around, checking out some of the shit in there. You would not believe this, but they have three frying pans on a stove just right there next to each other. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable luxury. Just unbelievable. <laughs> um... But yeah, I guess there was a community vote to see whether to blow up Golden Sands or to rebuild it or whatever. It was closed for a few months, and then everybody voted to rebuild it, which is great, because uh, you know, I, I don't know what would have happened if they blew it up. As a guy who just runs commodities, I like there being more ports. When Golden Sands was closed, that was like one port that you could not sail to, so one of the goods was like off the list. And uh, the goods still refreshed every five days, so you really had to spend some time just fishing or whatever. Fishing is cool too. Which again, like, you know, I don't know why it's so much fun, but I think it's like that slot machine vibe where you just fucking, like, cast that rod and you really don't know whether you're going to get uh, shit fish or good fish. And it's something about, like, the thrill of the unknown that I think is a real appeal. When it comes to excitement and shit. These two ports are right next to each other, by the way. That is Golden Sands right ahead of us. The ports are usually, they're kind of laid out in pairs, but these two are the closest. You can kind of see uh, Galleon's Grave from Daggertooth, but not quite like this. And would you take a look at those turquoise seas? I fucking love the art style of this game. Before I played this, I uh, caught it on Game Pass there when I first got my Xbox. I used to be a PC gamer, that's another story. Long story short, uh, I switched over to Xbox because I played Battlefield, uh, which one was it? Battlefield 1 on Game Pass there. And uh, lo and behold, I didn't once question a single time that I was killed by an enemy player. Whereas on PC, it seems like every third time you die, you're like, how the fuck did that happen? Like, this guy's got to be cheating. So, you know, I don't know if there's actually that many cheaters um, on the PC, but I just switched over to Xbox even though, like, all thumbs with the sticks, I sucked at it, but it's just like, dude, it is so much more chill playing with people. I really, really honestly think that it's a fucking cheater issue. Like, I got no proof of it, but like, I'm telling you, you play on a console versus playing on the PC with some of these competitive games, and it's just like, night and day. I've seen good players in Battlefield, for sure, I'll be doing some Battlefield 5 streams, but like, yeah, I've never questioned it. Like, I've never gotten shot by a guy from like, 14 kilometers away through a fucking smoke grenade, you know? It's like, shit just doesn't happen like that when you're playing on a console. There'll be, like, some guys who are top, and they're fucking good, but if you then realize they're good and you start fucking uh, ducking and dodging and everything, then, yeah, they they can't do shit. 
And I should have dropped this tail like fucking 15 feet away. I gotta get used to the, the whole rhythm of yakking, but also like doing it. So this is gonna be another fucking hard part. That's why ships got bumpers, man. Just don't tell Chewy, and he won't tell the insurance broker. Didn't even get scratched. Didn't even get scratched. It's actually not a bad port job unless somebody like rolled up on my behind and decided to put some cannonballs in there. You know, then it's probably no good. So let's see, golden sands, gemstones. Gemstones are the most valuable. Let's see what I get for them. Another thing a lot of people don't know about these commodity runs is that the prices actually change week to week. So like, if you go on Google or whatever and you look up what they're worth, yeah, so this week they're actually standard. Gives them what the, the wiki will say. So it's like 900 for the gemstones and then it's like 850, 800, 750, 700 all the way down to like sugar, which is the worst, which I think is like 500 or whatever that works out to. But some weeks, man, I've sold uh, the gemstones and the fucking gemstones are worth like 1700. And last week, uh, I was gonna start streaming, but then I was too busy fucking getting my panels and all that other shit in order. And the prices were like, oh man, they were so bad. It was like, f it physically pained me to sell the goods because I'd sell like the gemstones and it would be like 650 gemstones. The sugar was like 400. It was fucking rough. I thought because it was like, you know, with uh, Grog Monet and the Christmas shit going on that maybe I would get like a break on that. And you give some good shit, but it's like, no, merchants, you get hosed. You get nothing. But whatever. It's pretty good most of the year, anyways. I usually see them uh, higher than normal. So whatever it says in the wiki, usually you'll get a, a bonus on top of that. And like, even what they're at when uh, you got that emissary going. You know. It's still working. And also, too, like, I'm not just doing this for the money, the grind and everything. I'm gonna stream these all. I'm gonna fucking, uh, edit them down. I wanna do, like, 500 hours of this just to do, like, an art piece. So, like, everybody complains about PvPers on the sea, right? But I wanna actually get, like, 500 hours of footage of me going from port to port and prove to people, like, it's just your luck, man. You know, you can get attacked, but like, if you know how to evade, and especially if you know how to spot ships before they spot you, and then do like a little bit of uh, maneuvering before they get right on your ass, then most of the time they won't go for you because either they don't see you or they don't think you're worth it anyways. So, I feel like I can give maybe like a, a little glimmer of hope to people and show them that it's like a great game, and it is just, I love that term skill issue it's like such a fucking a polite way of burning people skill issue but we'll see maybe i've just been having good luck and i will get uh, annihilated i had somebody for? come after me on my first fucking port the other day but uh he was in a sloop i'm not afraid of sloops because we're the same speed so you can just run them into islands or whatever and they won't be able to catch up to you anyway. So unless you really fucking do something screwy with your maneuvering, it's easy to keep them off. Briggs and Galleons, on the other hand, they get scary because the speed difference, when they catch wind, uh, they get like a fucking damn near 50% speed difference on you, man. They're going to close that gap real fucking quick. So you got to like do some quick thinking uh, real quickly in order to deal with what's going on. And that's another thing about this game too, is like, due to the nature of ship combat and ship maneuvering, the ships themselves aren't going very fast. They don't maneuver fast. Everything kind of happens in slow motion. So like, if you're a new player, you got to understand that you can't really react to the battle or the evasive maneuvering in real time. What you have to do is you have to like think about the whole situation when it's not happening and then you gotta come up with like all these maneuvers and strategies that you can just fucking jump into pre-planned when the battle goes down. Because it's not like playing a Twitch-based shooter um, 
I mean, yeah, the pirate versus pirate shit is, but the ship versus ship stuff, it's not like playing Call of Duty where um, you can just kind of learn how things are going by watching them happen in real time because, like, things in this game take two or three minutes to unfold. So, like, it's tough to be able to piece together, like, three minutes worth of uh, happening as it's happening. But once it's all over, yeah, you can take a look like, okay, what went wrong, what went right, what could I do better, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But as it's happening, it's really tough to fucking try to figure out what's even going on. So that's another piece of advice, man. It's like, you gotta have a plan. Especially, like, if you're working with a crew, and you guys are new. Talk about that shit before it happens, because if you get into a fight and you haven't already, like, talked about it a little bit or whatever, then you're probably just gonna end up as dog meat. You do, of course, have to get into some fights before you get some experience. Uh, some ship versus ship combat, and then, you know, when you get sunk, try to take a look at what didn't work and what did work. My advice is, like, try not to get bored, boarded, like, just ever. I was going to say, you know, especially if you're a new player, but... Some of these people, man, this is like, talking about Twitch-based shooters, this is, like, the most Twitch-based shooting game imaginable. People with fucking jumping around. They've been drinking fucking mochiatos all day. No scope 360 with the eye of reach, the whole fucking blunderbuss eye of reach combo. Like, I'm just of the fucking opinion that if I get boarded, it's a write off. I'll do my best, but like, I'm not gonna feel bad if I get outmaneuvered by some of these people. Cause, like, yeah, they're good, man, and I'm gonna give them the respect that they deserve. But, like, yeah, I ain't dealing with that shit. One of the things about, like, that kind of combat style is I could get good at it, but the way that I get good at shit... Um, for instance, like I said, I switched over to Xbox years ago. And I wasn't good with the sticks. So what I did with the sticks is I did the same thing that I did with the mouse and keyboard, is I went to a shooting range. I used the PUBG shooting range, actually. And I'd spend, like, two hours a day, man, just fucking blasting targets, drinking coffee, until eventually I fucking felt confident shooting targets because something that's going to surprise you man is like if you're not doing good at first person shooters just take your gun out and try to fucking hit something stationary and it will absolutely blow your fucking mind the first time you try to do that how bad you are at just hitting a stationary target um i played battlefield on the pc for like six or seven years man and it wasn't until like year six or seven that finally I was like, yo, let's go into the shooting range and hit some targets, right? Mouse and keyboard. And I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, no wonder my KD ratio is never positive. I can't hit a fucking stationary target. And it's humbling, man, to realize, like, how bad of a shot you are and, like, how much of uh, your combat experience was just luck. And then that, coupled with the fact that what I realized is, like, okay, take a game like Battlefield, for instance. The amount of time you actually spend shooting at the enemy as opposed to like running around maneuvering doing other shit objective shit whatever the amount of time you actually spend with somebody down your sights is going to be like less than five percent of the total experience so if you spend two hours in a battle that's only equivalent to like you know five percent at the fucking shooting range so if you spend two hours at the shooting range that's the equivalent of like 20 hours worth of battlefield experience in terms of shooting and also since it's a stationary target right um, there's games that have moving targets and shit and you can move on to that what i would do in uh, PUBG is you just like shoot at another player and they run around and there's no like health penalty right you're just shooting each other and so that's a good way to practice on moving targets but you got to learn how to shoot a stationary target first man and then once you get comfortable with shooting that target um, then you can like jump into the matches and I'm telling you man you will not only have like a hundred times the score you will have a hundred fucking times the fun and a hundred times the confidence and it's absolutely worth doing so that's what I did with the joysticks right to learn how to do that the old dual analog and I got good at it that way just spent some time in the old PUBG shooting gallery there but the problem is right is like what Rare needs to do, I think, to really level the playing field is they should have, like, they used to have the Sea Dogs Arena, right? And that was okay, except for the, the fucking 30 minute load times, which they're still having a problem with this Hourglass of Fate shit here. Replace the, the Sea Dog shit. 
Um, what they need is they need like a island deathmatch mode. They need a fucking mode, or even better yet, they should just have a mode you can spawn into, and it's just four dudes on a galleon free for all. Stimbo Narnar says Apex Legend shooting range is dope because you can toggle health. Yeah, so like health on the targets, because that's another thing that's that's really important to get like that muscle memory for uh, the targets in um, the targets in Battlefield were like that too, where they'd flip down when they took as much damage a player would take. And so that's like, oh, on teammates? Yeah, well, I don't know. That's cool, actually, because then you can fucking spar with your teammates. Like, that's some shit, actually, that they need in Sea of Thieves. You should be able to toggle health on Sea of Thieves, because, like, if, if you could load up a galleon and just fucking shoot with your friends, man, I'd do that shit for six hours. And then everybody would have an, an equal opportunity um, to do the on-ship stuff. So it's like, I don't know. I just haven't had enough experience to uh, to do it. I'm going to fucking, I keep forgetting here, I'm going to buy some meat. Buy some meat and buy some bait. I'm gonna stop yakking and we'll hit up the next part here. Bye! What's Can I help? Here? Sharon's pretty funny. I like some of these characters. I don't like some of them as well. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. They're mostly all cool. One of these shipwrights is like super negative though. She can just she can just fuck right off to the ocean, man. I don't I don't care for that at all. <laughs> Especially when all the other shipwrights are so happy, it's just like, your problem, lady. I'm bringing you guys 15 crates of sugar, and you can't even have a good time with it? Come on. But then again, that could be the merchant's problem, because I don't know what the resale value on this sugar is. Maybe nobody can afford it. Yeah, I'm going to buy some meat and bait. So I got it. It's down here in the barrels now. So, uh, this chicken. I got my little bottles of mystery. Yeah, I like those. I was gonna buy some more stuff. I'll buy some more stuff at the end of the stream though. So I got uh, 8.5 million coins here. So that's enough for the dark adventure sales. Oh, oh, but I'm gonna save that probably. Maybe if I get like enough followers here on Twitch, I'll buy the dark adventure sales. Simbo Narnar says, I wish I had a ship. Uh, me too, buddy, in real life. As I was, uh, I was actually gonna say that earlier, and I never fucking did. I caught this game on Game Pass first, and I was like, "See a thieves? Like, why the fuck would I want to sail a ship around? Like, that just sounds boring as fuck, man." Right? But then I fucking did the tutorial, and I was like, "Oh, sailing ships around, huh? This is fucking cool." And I've just been like sailing this stupid ship ever since. There's just something about the feel of it, man. Getting out on the waves. Smelling that digital salt air. It's great. Some about the freedom of just being in a sloop as well, just solo slooping. Just being able to like sail around, do whatever the fuck you want. It's great, that sense of freedom. It's like that's why I like playing uh, Forza. I'll do some Forza Horizon as well. I like to take uh, cars that shouldn't go fast and put like 1500 horsepower in them, like the fucking Chevy Ventura, and then race supercars with them. I'm really good at tuning the suspensions, man. I'll do whole videos on that shit at some point. I got a lot of ideas for streams I'm gonna do, but I'm always gonna be doing these CFD streams, man, because like I said, I want to get like just 500 hours and edit it down and be going port to port. Get all my fucking uh, amazing daring escapes. Yeah, I never played Black Flag. Uh, Stimbo Narnar says that was the best part of Assassin's Creed Pirate or whatever it was called. Black Flag, yeah, I never played that one. My problem with the uh, Assassin's Creed series is that, like, I played the first one, right? I fucking loved it. And then the second one came out, and I was like, oh, that's fucking dope. I'm going to play that. And then the third one came out, and I was like, bro, I haven't played the second one yet. And then the fourth one came out, and they're like, oh, it's the best one yet. And I'm like, I've only played the first one. And then the fifth one came out, and they're like, oh, it's pretty good. And I'm like... I haven't played the fucking second one yet. And then the sixth one came out, and I'm like, I'm never going to fucking play these games. Like, they're just releasing them too fast. I don't know. I don't know where to go. I still want to play the second one, because I feel like um, people complain about the quality of, like, the third and the fourth. Not the fourth. The fourth was good. I think the third one wasn't as good. Then the fifth one wasn't as good as the fourth one or something. But was it better than the second one? Like, I don't know. And I feel like there's some storyline there that you want to you wanna get into. 
So yeah, this is your captain speaking. We're going to be heading on down to Plunder Outpost, which is uh, way to the south. I was going to show you, uh, I was going to show you fucking Goldman, Golden, uh, Golden Sands is what it's called. Uh, I didn't. I guess that was a meme. We'll catch it in two hours when I come back to it, I suppose. I don't fucking know. I mean, honestly, it's got three frying pans in one place. It's pretty fucking glorious, but it, it's also kind of a joke. I wish that they do, like, more shit, like, in there, so... I should have shown it to you guys. But, eh, there'll be other streams. We'll catch it. I keep having these reoccurring dreams, man. Where, like, it's Sea of Thieves. But instead of, uh, like, the Caribbean islands, it's, like, the uh, Caribbean coast. And, like, there's a city at each side, and there's, like, these uh, river routes that go in kind of a bit in some places. And then there's, like, islands out uh, on the outside as well, but I mostly just sail up and down this coast. And, yeah, it's weird. I've had dreams about that five or six times now. And it's, like, it's fucking dope. I wish they'd do that. Because they totally could, man, like... You know, they could just do a coast. There's no uh, technological limitation of it because you can just put up cliffs so you can't get any further inland or whatever. But I don't know. Maybe for a sequel or something. The point being is that there's a lot of, like, uh, a lot of cool shit, like, in those coastal areas that don't exist because it's just talking about a dream I had. But dreams are weird, man. Dreams are super weird. I had uh, a dream the other day that I was watching cartoons like on a TV just on the beach with my friends but it was also like a fucking uh, like those neural net video generators right so like you could just type in like a synopsis for like a Garfield cartoon or like a Smurfs cartoon and it would make the cartoon and like the wilder that you made the synopsis like if you tried to type in shit that wasn't in like the sample uh, the sample load then it would come out just like all glitchy and fucking weird I remember trying to put, like, Poochie from The Simpsons in, like, a Garfield cartoon or something, but yeah, I don't know. Just like watching a TV on a beach, man. I wish that's the kind of shit that you could do in real life. Like, set up, like, a pinball machine down by the river, and people wouldn't just come and, like, smash it or whatever. <laughs> but, whatever. Dreams, man. That's why dreams are dreams. Always got a dream. Speaking of dreaming, I'm dreaming I'm a legit captain right now, because I think that this is probably too shallow for me to fucking make it through here. I usually just go around. Simbo Narnar says, oh man, you might get replaced by AI streamers. Yeah, but would an AI streamer do this? Come on. Just doing a little off-roading. This is, we can fucking make it. Oh no, did they patch this shit? It won't let you fucking off-road anymore. Hey! This is why they pay me the big bucks. It used to be that you could, uh, uh... I didn't burn this pork either, man. <laughs> it didn't light on fire, okay? And if it did light on fire, there's plenty of water in the ship to put the fire out. So, really, sometimes the problems, they just fucking cancel themselves out, and there's really no point in worrying about anything anyways. And, like, this pork chop's still good, man. Like, you know, I can, I can fucking eat that. Um, as for actually being replaced by AI streamers, I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's cool. I'll just, like, learn to fucking juggle or something, and then if jugglers get replaced, then I'll just learn to, like, uh, I don't know. There's always something. There's always something you can do. Entertainment is a new and evolving industry. Which, like, speaking of new and evolving, man, I was trying to show my, my fucking friend the other day, because, like, I'm trying to get a few of my friends into this shit. But you try to explain streams to people who haven't streamed before, I... I don't know why that exploded. Okay, you know what? It's foggy, but I actually... I gotta look. I gotta look here. That's a rock. One time, I got a fucking screenshot. I'm gonna... I'm gonna publish that, actually. I actually put that screenshot in one of my Twitch panels. I was in a brig uh, with those two British chaps. British guy and a girl. Uh, that I was talking about earlier. And, uh... It was foggy like this, right? And we were going top speed crosswind. Fastest you can fucking go in a ship. 
and we hit the fucking island so hard that the ship was literally completely out of the fucking water just sitting on the beach in like maybe like one inch or whatever. Yeah, uh, Stimbo Narnar asks, are you sinking? Well, once again, it's a philosophical can of worms because water is entering my ship and it is filling up, but am I going to go under? No. So am I sinking? I, I choose to answer that question. No, I'm not sinking. I'm not sinking. But yes, if you get enough of these holes, they will fill your boat full of water, and you will sink. Which, also, I called it a boat, but technically it's a ship. That's a big argument people get into a lot, is you know, what's the difference between a boat and a ship? So the difference between a boat and a ship is that a ship can contain boats, right? So like the lifeboats go on a ship, but a boat could never have like another boat on the boat. So, you know, people have like those yachts, like those 20 foot yachts. Is this the same fucking rock? Are we in the Bermuda fucking triangle here? Like, what's going on, man? Chewie's gonna fucking fire me, man. This might be my last stream. This is it. I'll have to get a new ship and a new fucking captain. Okay, let's try this again. West. West is good. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna err on the side of caution here. Just raise my sails a little bit. And, uh, check out those holes. Hashtag didn't mean it like that. And, uh, you know. That's that. Push that shit up. Okay, we're good. I can just check the map too. It's not like a storm. When you get stuck in storms, your compass spins and it gets a little like weird knowing which way's which because it's also pulling the fucking the wheel all over the place. So you try to check the map and by the time you get up to figure out what way you're going and you're already way off course. Yeah, okay, so we just have to go like way the fuck east. This is turning into like the slowest merchant commodity run ever, but it's good. It's been a good chill. I'm having fun. Kind of fitting for the first one. This would actually be so fucking creepy, man. Being out on the ocean in this amount of fog. The ocean in general is a trip. If you go out there on a small boat, I've only been out there like on a small boat a couple of times. Like it's different if you're on, you know, like a a ferry or whatever. Uh, like a big ass ferry or I don't know what other kind of ship you'd be on the water. But I've just gone out on like a little boat, man, and it's like the waves are so uniform that it's like. I don't know, dude. It just plays tricks with your mind. It's like you're sailing on fucking out in space or something. Like, it's it's just a weird vibe. It's a weird vibe when you actually get out there. Stimbo Narnar asks, are there giant octopi or krakens? Yeah, there's krakens. Krakens are my friend, though. Because uh, the way this game works is, like, the bigger the ship you're in, the harder the kraken you have to fight. So when you're in a sloop, you can just, like, hit him with the blunderbuss and slash him with your scimitar a couple times. Excuse me. And, uh, yeah, they just fuck right off. But then the uh, the brick or the galleon that's chasing after you, they get crackened, and it's like this 20-minute ordeal that their crew has to go through. So I like the kraken. Kraken's my friend, man. And he usually shows up, too. I don't know if this is, again, like a hidden game mechanic or what. But uh, a lot of the times when I'm being chased by people, I manage to get away because they either get crackened or they get... Uh, hit by a skeleton ship, like a galleon will pop up and they have to focus on that. Or uh, one of these fucking fog events happens, or gas attacks, or whatever people call them. Or a storm, or whatever. It's another way you can lose people. But I've been so extraordinarily lucky with it that I'm almost inclined to believe that it's like programmed into the game in some way, that if you're getting chased by somebody, then a lot of random shit will happen to break off the chase. But again, I have no proof of that. 
like I was saying, I'm the kind of guy you're just like, I'm always wondering what's what's a game mechanic and what's not. Like the fluctuating prices, funny thing happened to me because talking about the other week, right? Like I was selling this cargo and uh, it was just fucking garbage prices. I was getting like 500 for broken stone or whatever. And then all of a sudden I'm selling it and it was giving me 1100 for the broken stone. And that was like right when I was ending my session. So I didn't stick around to figure out what was going on, but had nothing to do with the emissary bonus. It's just right at that moment, it decided to give me fucking twice as much money for the shit. And the only thing I noticed is that it was at 5 o'clock p.m. It was 5.01 p.m. Because that's the thing. The shit happens and I'll be like, okay, what fucking time is it? Check my clock. What's the date? What's going on here? What the hell's going on? And I noticed it was uh, 5.01 p.m. Uh, which on Sundays, 5 o'clock Pacific time is the time when they switch all the goods over. So I was thinking like, man, maybe day to day there was a price difference, but then I went and I, I did a little uh, a little run, just a one port run the next day, and it was giving me the same prices. And I've gotten the same prices like in the last few days and this week as well, so it's not a game mechanic, could just be a bug. I'm not sure. When I was doing cargo runs, um, once in a while it would give me like a 50% bonus that had nothing to do with the emissary or anything. I had no idea what it was. I was thinking for a while like maybe it had something to do with like wearing the right cosmetics, because it fucking says, like, oh, always make sure to dress the part. And I was like, oh, shit, are they giving, like, random hidden bonuses if you wear the right fucking gear or something? But another time I thought maybe it was, like, if you drop them off at a specific hour, like it's 6, 12, or uh, 18 o'clock. I was trying out all sorts of shit, man, but I could never figure it out. And I honestly think it was just a weird bug. Because this game, that's another thing about it is... Uh, weird shit will happen. We might run into some ports where, like, you go in there and you go to buy commodities from them. And what happens is, even though you haven't bought the commodities yet, it'll let you pick up commodities that, like, I want to say somebody else has bought them, but it's crew-specific, so it shouldn't matter. Even if somebody goes in there and buys commodities, you can't pick up their commodities. So. Dagger Tooth used to always be fucking rigged, man. It never worked. You'd go into Dagger Tooth and you could never buy commodities. It would just give you free ones. And then you go into like the commodity buy window and it would just say out of stock. So yeah, I don't know. Dagger Tooth is always weird. But they fixed that. I haven't seen Dagger Tooth fuck up for a while. But last time it was actually um, here at Plunder. Or no, it was Ancient Spire because I remember it was Matilda. And she's like a uh, senior citizen. So I was like, oh, Matilda. Maybe you should like write this write this down or something. I don't know. It's all good. So that's a skeleton sloop straight ahead. Speaking about the the merchant ladies, I like the way in this game that they have like a different person at each port. Matilda's actually one of my favorites, man. They're all cool. I like all the merchant ladies. They're all just like so unique. I mean, I struggle with memory myself sometimes, and I think that like... What was I talking about? So this is Plunder Outpost, which is funny because uh, it's the one with the spire and then Ancient Spire is the one with two spires. But I always think that this one is actually Ancient Spire because it has the spire. And this is, this is one, like, if I'm going to be honest, this is another port that, like, I don't really, uh, really like it because of the length of the dock here. I'm just going to, like, pull this around. I could have just pulled it in, like, straight there, but another thing, too, is, like, with the front of the boat and the, uh, 
I don't know what you call that thing in all the nautical terms, but that big pointy thing on the front. So like that thing can get hitched in between some of these posts, or sometimes it can get hitched uh, like right up in there and then you gotta harpoon yourself out. And I've been in that situation before with people when, when dudes have rolled up on us and it's just like a total fucking shit show, man. Total shit show. Plunder, so we're unloading stone and we should be selling silk. So this is actually the first big sale here. Yeah, this is not gonna work. I think what I can do crank it the other way, maybe I can just get, like, back in there. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Doesn't get much better than that, actually. Yeah, so, um, talking about the fucking merchant girls, right? Um, a little tip, if you're ever delivering cargo, because you have to sail to these ports sometimes and deliver them, uh, all of the people will actually, depending on what their job is, their name will start with the same letter. So, Stimbo Narnar says it's called a bowsprit. The points thing on the front, I googled it. Called a bowsprit. I wonder if I'm pronouncing that right. Bowsprit. Um, I'll look that up myself, man. But like, yeah, that's good to know because I'll probably be referring to that at a future point. So yeah, all these uh, mer merchant girls. Are you up to they all have like M's. This is the chickens one, I think. She's fucking funny. Think twice before returning. I no, this is the one fear. that's like, uh, I sense your fear. Mm -hmm. But it's true, man. Running these commodities, it's a fucking dangerous business. So that's not even a joke. Everybody thinks that being a pirate, like, that's the fucking, that's the dangerous business, but when you're being a merchant on a sea of pirates, that's the real danger. I personally don't even think of them as pirates, I think of them as tax collectors. And I think of myself as a smuggler, because the thing about <laughs> pirates, man, is usually when you're uh, like a merchant on the sea, most of the ships you run into are not going to be pirates. So when like, you know, 90% of the ships you run into are pirates, it's less like they're pirates and it's more like they're uh, the sea police, I suppose. Everybody wants to check your cargo, man. Everybody wants you to pay taxes. They want you to pay 100% tax on your cargo, and that's not very fucking fair if you ask me. Beware. Peril will wait. Good old broken stone. And once again, you know, I'm going to be delivering like 12 pieces of broken stone. 12 boxes full of broken stone. You guys don't even have a shipyard here. Where, Where's all this stone going, man? What are you doing with it? Is this real stone? Is this something else? I don't know. I don't ask and they don't tell me.
Divo Narno says you should call the pirates Justin Trudeau's or Biden's. And he says, oops, sorry, not supposed to get political. Yeah, so since you broke the chat rules, I'm going to uh, have to dock you 100 points. Um, the points aren't real and they don't matter. So you're just going to have to deal with that on your own time. Uh, for anybody watching this after the fact, um, because, you know, most of the views are going to be going to be offline. I have uh, I have like nine chat rules on my Twitch page, but like I think they're pretty fucking good reels, man. I think they're good enough that I'm going to actually uh, print them out on a little card, and then when I fucking go to hang out with strangers, I'm just going to hand them the card, and I'm going to be like, yeah, so uh, these are my chat rules, man. I'm just like stick to the fucking card. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Pretty good stuff. And like I said uh, in all those panels that I wrote, like, you can break the chat rules if you want, but like, it's gonna be a lot more entertaining for yourself and everybody else if you don't, if you don't break them. They're more like guidelines than they are rules. But it's funny because I wrote, like, I wrote all these rules and then I, I read them to myself and I was like, holy fuck, what is even left to talk about? Because it seems like I go out and talk to people and that's like, all anybody talks about is all that shit that's on there. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna like write these, write these down. And then after I got like the rules, I was like, well, okay, what can you talk about? And then I wrote like another list of like chat examples of things that are okay to talk about. And then I fucking felt pretty good because the list of shit that's okay to talk about is actually like more verbose than the actual chat rules. So I think it's all good and it should make for an entertaining community, which is what I'm hoping to fucking build here. Um, I know that like it's going to take longer to build up the community because of all the chat rules because like we're living in a world where people don't like rules, you know. How dare you tell me what not to speak of. But it's like, you know, again, you can talk about it, but what's probably going to happen, right, is if I get into, like, a big discussion about something that's, like, against the rules, I'll do my best to uh, to make it entertaining or whatever, but you're going to see that it's, like, not going to be entertaining, and I'll be like, okay, well, there you go. Womp womp. It's on the fucking... It's on the chat rules, man. That's why it's there. And, yeah, politics is one of them, just because, like, politics, man, it's all fun and games when everybody's on your side, and we can just like fling shit at the other side or whatever. I mean, I can, I'm not really on a side. <laughs> I mean, everybody's on a side, like I vote, okay. But like every time I vote, it's usually for a different political party. And like, I don't know how I'm gonna vote until about a week before the election. Cause it all depends on like, oh dude, everything, like every interview, every fucking whatever, everything anybody tells me, like I'm not the kind of person where I'm gonna be like, uh, Oh yeah, I'm on I'm on red team or I'm on blue team. Like I'm Canadian, so we don't have red team and blue team. We have um, the Liberal Party and then the far liberal <laughs> Liberal Party, <laughs> which is the big joke. Uh, no, we got Liberal and Conservative. We have NDP as well, but NDP's kind of saying wasn't gonna get political. But they say some stuff about like they want to like demolish our military, and it's like that's really idealistic of you, and that's cool. Maybe like. 100 years from now, but like, I don't think that that's really something that our government should be concerned with at the moment. There's so many other things, like, could you just like pave the roads and stuff and manage the country finances? Like, it's just weird that political parties, they just all want to do like all kinds of shit that like, it wasn't what a government used to do. A government used to just like, you know, collect the taxes, provide the services. And now they're just like, oh, we want to tell you what you can and can't say. And like, who has these rights or those rights or whatever. It's like, okay, whatever. But yeah, so I don't know. I think it's not a very like entertaining topic. I mean, of course, I don't want to alienate people as well. But also too, it's like, okay, even if you have a political debate, two people go at it. Neither side really gets fucking convinced, man. So, you know, in terms of, like, an actual community, I think that having people... Are, uh, 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 excuse me. I had my fucking anchor down. Sea of Thieves. Pardon me. Chewie's not even on the boat, so this isn't him. But, like, this is what I'm saying, man. Sea of Thieves. There be ghosts in this ocean. Yar. Yar. Okay, well. I got my commodities anyways. Did I, um... 
Load up that broken stone or what? I need these last two crates because 10 crates of broken stone is not enough for this port. They need 12. Otherwise, they'll run out of it. If anybody can think of like what they're doing with all this uh, broken stone, feel free to leave a comment when this ends up on YouTube eventually. It says in the description it's supposed to be like ores for smithing ships, but like, I mean, I guess I could believe that considering every time you spawn into the game you have a new ship. It's like they're just constantly building ships. So, yeah, okay. The sugar, though, I mean, 15 crates of sugar. Nobody needs 15 crates of sugar. I say as I fucking drink root beer. Sugar, man. I'm currently off caffeine. You guys want to talk about caffeine? Another one of the rules is, like, no health and fitness, which is a fucking funny rule, I think, because, like, I've come to realize, speaking to people about health and fitness, is that, like, what's healthy to one person is actually offensive to another. Oh, that's a real sloop there. That's a, that's a fucking real dude. Okay, we gotta fucking... Gotta get the sails and gear. Engage warp drive. Spock, raise the shields. McCoy, bring the sugar. I fucking love McCoy, man. You ever watch that old Star Trek? I, like, binge watch that on Netflix. Funniest fucking shit ever. I used to see that as a kid, and I used to think that, like, I was like, oh, this show is fucking so shitty. But then you watch it, and you're like, oh, they know it's shitty as well. Yeah, because it's like the fucking costumes and the props and stuff are so low budget, but it's like. The stories are good. Real trippy stories, man. Especially considering in that age of Star Trek, um, they had this weird thing where, like, Okay, first of all, instead of calling it the warp drive, it was the time drive, right? So they weren't, like, warping space, they were warping time. But then also, there was this whole thing where, like, um, all the planets would develop uh, to be Earth-like, no matter what. So, like... Yeah, Stimbo Narnar says, yeah, I've watched a few of the old episodes. A lot of good philosophy in there. Yeah, it's mostly like philosophy, man. It's less of like a like a science fiction sort of thing and more of like a philosophy uh, show. Because what will happen is they'll go to like an alien planet, but then it'll be like Earth and gangsters run the government. Or like one of them was a, a show where it was like Earth, but then the Roman Empire is like modern day United States, but they're Romans. Because there was like this thing that they scrapped in uh, like the movies in the next generation when they started doing like the uh, the later Star Trek stuff where it was like, yeah, no, that shit isn't like that. But they had this thing, I can't remember what they called it. It was like the law of con converging evolution or something where it was like, yeah, all planets just are like almost like Earth. But not like all of them, but like a majority of them are just like fucking, you know, Romans and English people and whatever. So it made for some really interesting storylines to really get into the nitty gritty of the philosophy. Uh, Next Generation was fucking amazing. Deep Space Nine, that shit's fucking amazing. Um, the Enterprise, the one with uh, that guy from fucking... What the hell's that guy named? Uh, fucking Baccarat or something? I don't remember. He was from Quantum Leap. Uh, that shit, people thought was dumb. I liked it. I really fucking liked it. It was not actually a bad Star Trek. It had a, that Cowboys in Space sort of uh, feel to it. It was ridiculous. One time he held an alien, like, out of an airlock and choked him. And it was like, whoa, you wouldn't see that in any of the other Star Treks because they're all, like, non-violent and shit. But it was like, yeah, they're, like, the first Star Trek, so he's all like, yeah, I'm bending the rules. He smokes a big cigar and puts a cowboy hat on. Yeah, I mean, that didn't really happen, but that's yeah, a good show. I liked it. Speaking of uh, speaking of good shows, I watched that movie uh, Bullet Train last night and today. That was good. Um, it's been advertised a lot on Prime Video. It's kind of like an anime, but live action. 
but it's fucking good, man. But it takes place like on a bullet train, right? The whole the whole show. Uh, so you know, if you can't handle that, lots of talking, a lot of dialogue. It reminds me of, like a Tarantino movie, but it's not. It's not Tarantino, but I, it's very inspired by it. It's kind of like an anime Tarantino thing. Um, there's some extreme scenes of violence, um, which like you know I'm usually okay with it, but like oh man. There's like, how do I put this? Like, close to a minute worth of footage of people vomiting blood. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I don't, I'm not into it, man. I don't need to see that when I watch a movie. There's like some things that don't bother me, but that's like, I think everybody's bothered by that. And it just seems like they're really like, uh, we're just going over the top with it. And they keep coming back to it and they keep showing it. And it's just like, dude, just get over it already. I know you want to do like a Tarantino thing and be as violent as possible, but like, so, you know, trigger warning, if you're not into that, it's in there. But it's otherwise very violent anyways, so, you know, if you're bothered by violence, I wouldn't recommend it. On the other hand, Glass Onion is fucking phenomenal. Don't know if y'all have seen that yet, but I won't do any spoilers for that. But that was just fucking good start to finish. Not excessively violent or anything. There's nothing fucking kooky about it. And it's, uh, you don't really see movies like that. Uh, anymore where it's just like a lot of visual jokes all the editing is just like boop 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 like every shot is composed for maximum entertainment value and it's just fucking full of jokes from the start to the finish man and the pacing is perfect the story is perfect uh stimbo narnar says i gotta download that i mean pay for it in a totally legal way it's on netflix um Glass Onion is on Netflix. I thought that you had to buy it as well, but it's streaming on Netflix right now, so I don't know if you got Netflix, but but I recommend that. That's the only reason I watched it, because if it ain't on Prime or on Netflix, I usually won't watch it until it comes out on it, because it's like, you know... I'll watch anything. I've recently been kind of in the whole frame of mind with movies and entertainment, because shows have been fucking just awful. That, like... I'll just put something on and I'll try to get through it. I'll turn it into like a meditative exercise where I'll just put on a fucking movie and just be like, oh, this is so bad, man, this is so bad. And then I'll do like the, oh, ma -na -na -ma -ma -na, you know, and just try to get through it the best I fucking can. Because like the thing about shows is that even if something is so fucking bad you want to turn it off, there is usually at least one scene that makes the whole movie worth watching enough that you're like, okay. I'm glad I saw that because it was like one good joke or one like good character or one redeemable moment or whatever. And so I'll sit through like the whole thing for that just to see if I can recommend it to uh, somebody or whatever. But what happened is um, I got Amazon Prime. And Amazon Prime, let me tell you, I thought there were some bad fucking shows on, on Netflix. And uh, Stimbo Narnar says, like, a lot of Family Guy episodes. Yeah. yeah. Fam I don't watch Family Guy anymore, man. I don't know. I don't know when it ever stopped being good or if it ever was good or what. I used to really like it when I was, like, younger in my teen years there when it first came out. But I think it was probably, like, better then. Um, who's that guy who makes it? Whoever that fucking guy who makes it, he likes to do those jokes where the joke is that he's wasting your time. And I feel fucking personally offended by uh, creators that do that. Because it's like, yeah, you want to make that joke once, man? Yeah, it's usually one good joke. Yeah, because that's like the whole episode, one good joke. It's like, you know, that part where he, Peter hits his knee and he's just sitting there going like, oh, oh, my knee, right? And it's like, that was funny, like the first time he did it. But then he just, yeah, Seth MacFarlane. He just started doing that shit like all the time. And it's like, bro, like the Conway Titty Hour or whatever. I was like, bro, don't, like, what are you fucking doing, man? Like, I hope you're getting a laugh, because I'm not, and then I just will not really give a show another chance after that when it's like, they're just going to fucking waste my time. Just waste my time. I'm going to waste my time on my own, okay? I don't need your show to waste my time. I'm going to put on a show on IMDb that got a 2.3 rating if I want my time wasted. And I'll do that. But yeah, so talking about, like, Prime Video... Um, there's some fucking movies on there that I swear are, like, borderline scam movies. Like, you see the credits, and they're made by real people and everything, but, like, there's just something about them that is just so fucking off. 
that I don't know, like, there was one I watched, man, where this guy, like, travels back in time. No, he travels into the future because the planet's, like, running out of air. And then it's, like, f I can't remember what it was called. But, like, dude, there was something about it that was just off. Like, for instance, there was a scene where, like, when he first travels to the future and he's, like, never seen a tree before. So he's, like, walking around the jungle being, like, whoa, a tree. But it goes on for, like, three minutes. And it's, like, I get what they were trying to do. They were trying to build this big, like, emotional scene of the guy never seeing a tree before. But, like, in a real movie, that would just happen. It would go on for, like, 20 seconds maybe. But, like, he just kept walking around this forest being, like, oh... Oh, like not saying anything, just like looking at a fern, looking at a tree. And it was like, dude, what is... The pacing was just so bad. Then also, too, I like to watch those movies because it makes you appreciate... Like you watch a movie like Glass Onion, for instance. And it's like, dude, good pacing, good everything. And then you compare the two. And when you're watching like a really shitty movie, you're like, what is it about this that makes it so shitty? Because it's not like... It's not just the acting. It's not just the lighting, but it, but it is the acting and the lighting. That'll go a long ways. Just even, like, bad lighting will make something look like... Not, like, bad, not, like, unpleasant to look like, but just, like, flat. Or, like, a home movie, or just, like, I don't know, it's different. Man. And then the editing sometimes can be real shit. It's really made me, like, you know, as somebody who... Um, I like making content, and I'd like to get into making, like, some short videos and stuff, but I've always been too intimidated by, like, you know, directing and, and that kind of stuff. Watching something bad really can open your mind to uh, how to make something good. And that's even like, you know, talking about going out and hanging out with strangers and all they talk about is just like shit that you're like, oh my god, get me away from this person. Like, haha, yeah, you're just making small talk, but they're just going on and on and on and on. But then it's like I've realized that when you hang out with people like that afterwards, you, when you when you get away and you're like, oh shit, so... You kind of can like learn from their mistakes and realize like, oh, why was that such a bad conversation? And then like, how can I not be that guy? And then also too, like, you know, I'm not like judging people because we all have like our off days or whatever. Or, like, you know, you drank too many coffees in the morning and you got that midday headache and then you're just talking to some fucking stranger in the street with a beard and just saying whatever the fuck you want. Like, I get it, man. <laughs> I fucking get it. <laughs> it's not a big deal. These aren't bad people, but like sometimes you get trapped in these conversations and you just want to like escape, but you want to be polite as well. And that's like part of how I came up with these chat rules, man, because I just thought about like all those conversations I've got in over the last two years. Especially since, like, I don't know if it was because of, like, the pandemic or whatever, how everybody was just locked away and then, like, a lot of people, we got to get used to, like, talking to others again. So, like, that first year after the lockdown stopped and you run into people and they're just, like, so stoked to be having a conversation, but they don't even have any idea how to have a conversation, you know? I don't know. But it's cool. So, what are we at? We're at Plunder. No, this is Ancient Spire. I'm just fucking yakking, man. Let's get these T's off this fucking boat. This is why it'd be great. I gotta get a first mate, man. But like I said, I've been talking. Like the problem with is you can't uh, you can't just take anybody and make him your fucking first mate if you're gonna be streaming on Twitch because they're gonna be saying like some shit that'll bring the big old hammer down on our heads here. But at the same time, I've talked to like people that I know and I'm trying to get trying to like maybe pique their interest in it. I, I I'm not you know it's like whatever. People are into different shit and everything and it's a whole lot of work and whatever. But it's just been funny that trying to explain, like, what is a stream, man? They just don't fucking get it. Like, I brought a friend of mine over, and I was fucking showing him some games, and I was like, oh, shit, I haven't even shown you a Twitch stream. So I turned on, um... Stimbo Narnar says, Leonardo da Vinci would just back away from those people. That's what I heard. Dude, I am like, oh, my God. That's funny to hear that he, he had that problem. I don't even know, like... I don't even know what to do. I guess I'll just figure something out next time I'm in that situation. But I've, I'm almost at the point where, like, I'm just going to stop being polite. Like, I've stopped being polite to so many people because it's like, dude, like, when you can only be polite and, like, I'm Canadian, so that's kind of just our way, you end up just becoming paralyzed in some situations. Because, like, how, how can you politely tell somebody that, like, bro, like, I don't want to fucking argue about, like... Sumerian pyramids and shit like I don't even fucking know you and I'm agreeing with you but you're shouting at me like I'm disagreeing with you like how do you even be polite about that shit and it's like I'm into Sumerian pyramids but like bro like you know 
it's mostly just people who don't let you get a fucking word in. Which is why, like, for me, I, I'm so into streaming now because it's so therapeutic that I just get to sit here and fucking yak my fucking head off at a million miles an hour and I don't have to stop and think about, like, oh, maybe somebody else wants to say something. It's like, yeah, that's the job. Like, you just sit here and you yak about shit. You try to be as interesting as possible, right? Like, I eventually want to get as much chat engagement as I can here. But like I said, it's going to take some time to build up the community, but I think that once we build up a decent community, it's going to be worth it. Um, but yeah, man, until then, it's just me yakking my head off, and I'm going to be honest, it is therapeutic. It's like, uh, it's good. It's good. Because, dude, there's so many people out there, you run into them, and it's like, I don't like to cut people off when they talk, because that's rude. But, like, if you don't cut some of these people off, they never let you get a single fucking word in. Like, at all, man. And then, like, you and then you want to leave, but it's like, how do you just be like, okay, well, fucking see you later. Like, you got to close the conversation somehow. And I'm not, like, this is coming from a guy, like, I'm not, like, a socially awkward guy. Like, that's cool. We all are. Because, like... You know, there's so many different social situations and shit. But I'm a kind of guy who's like, you know, ah, fuck. I've spoken to a lot of people. I feel comfortable speaking to people. Like, I get out there. I've been, like, you know, to a lot of parties in my youth. I've had a lot of friends that, like, you know, I don't fucking talk to all of them anymore for whatever reason. But, like, yeah. And, I, and I'm, like, struggling out there these days. Because some people are just, like, I don't know. They just don't, like... And I, I don't want to be negative, man. Get into the nitty gritty of it here. But, like, some people don't get, like, what a fucking conversation is. And they don't get, like, what a fucking, like, what a friend is. Because it's like, dude, I'm all down for, like, we got to help each other out. And we got to lift each other up and shit. But at the same time, like, don't drag your fucking friends down and whatever. And I got some people I try to talk to that I haven't seen, like, for years and whatever. And if you're watching this, you know, ma, love you, love you, buddies, and everything. But, like, at the same time, like, we're all just trying to do our best out there. And it's like, if you're just, like, grabbing onto my foot trying to pull me into that fucking, that lake of people from Lord of the Rings that Frodo goes through. And I'm like, Jesus, man, just let go of my foot. Like, I just wanted to talk about donuts today. I didn't want to argue about, like, whether or not forestry is renewable and, like, cutting trees down. They don't make air for 50 years or whatever. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, not only is that wrong, but I just, why are we talking about it? Neither of us are in forestry. I'm not in charge of that shit. Like, I don't, I'm not the minister of environment. And, like, that shit's important, but, like, talking to me isn't going to fix it. If anything, it's just going to make us both depressed and not want to fucking do anything. So, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's a, it's give and it's take, I guess. Sometimes I think, like, my problem is, is I'm too positive, And if I just drag some of my friends down with my fucking dark shit, then maybe they would be, like, I wouldn't feel so, like used by them if I was also using them as it but it's like dude I don't know your friends aren't really your therapists man there's like a time and a place for it but it's when it's like every conversation you have with some people you got to start to wonder like what do these people offer you in your life in terms of like like I said like to me a friend is like you know we should all be coming up with shit that makes us happy and then we can hang out and, and bring each other up and whatever but it's like yeah you know whatever you gotta fucking, you gotta look out for people you care about, but at the same time, some people just don't, like, they don't care about themselves, man, so. That's the thing. Okay, so, uh. Where the fuck are we here? Ancient Spire. I'm dumping tea. Gonna have a good old tea dump. But yeah, man, look at that. Even just like, even just like talking about that as much as I did, that's not entertaining. It's not entertaining. So, so there you go.
15 crates of unupgraded tea. There's somebody up there at the fucking Ancient Spire Tavern just doing cartwheels. Vibrating at the speed of light. 900 milligrams of caffeine just shooting through their veins. Which like, yeah, so speaking of which earlier, I'm, I'm off caffeine right now. But again, I'm bringing my own chat rules because then that's like, is that like a health? Is that like a health thing? Because some people would swear by caffeine, man, and I don't want to like, uh, I don't want to rain on their parade because uh, caffeine's great and everything. But like, you got to recognize um, when you drink like three cups of coffee every morning for two years, then like you start to get like headaches in the evening from the withdrawal of the caffeine. And you start to wonder, like, where are these headaches coming from, right? It couldn't be the caffeine, but it is the caffeine. And then not only that, like, when I quit uh, caffeine cold turkey, because that's what I was getting. I usually got to do this once every couple of years. I quit the caffeine because, you know, getting those evening headaches. And then, like, dude, my anxiety just fucking just shot through the fucking roof. And so... You know, the added stress that since now I'm starting to do these streams, I want to try to keep my anxiety as low as possible. So I just kind of quit cold turkey, but it takes two weeks, man. Two full weeks to go away. And then on top of that, not only can you get, like, anxiety and headaches, but if you look it up, you can actually get uh, full-blown, like, uh, flu-like symptoms for up to two weeks after you quit caffeine. So, you know, it's just something that, like, people got to be aware of, I think, if they're, if they're going to fucking do that shit. But again breaking my own chat rules because uh, it says no talking about health and fitness and again that's the thing what's healthy for some people is not healthy for other people like for me I'm off caffeine right now and I'm probably gonna fucking stay off it for a long time but I don't want to rain on somebody's parade where caffeine might actually be exactly what their lifestyle needs and some people get no withdrawal symptoms whatsoever so who am I to say that it's a good or a bad thing and this goes with like fucking literally everything man you know not just caffeine like so I just find that like getting into those conversations are again kind of pointless same thing with like uh, you know sugar people swear by it that sugar is really bad for you I don't personally believe that I'm not a scientist though you know I'm not a doctor I don't know but I have seen studies where, uh, for different people, depends on what they, they eat and they drink, they'll get completely different uh, blood sugar spikes. Like, you know, if you drink, if you eat like a sugar cookie, as opposed to eating a piece of bread, you'd expect your blood sugar to, to spike, right? But in some people, the bread spikes their blood sugar more than the sugar cookie. I don't know. It's just something I read. And that's, again, the whole thing about, you know, health and fitness and science and all that shit is it's like, you can almost read a study that says just about fucking anything you wanted to. So what's even like, what's even the point of arguing about it? There is no point. It just goes in circles. But you know, if anybody is checking this out on YouTube, check out my Twitch panels. You can see the chat rules, all of them. I won't read them out right now. But beneath the chat rules, there's also, like I said, a bunch of shit that'd be great to talk about. I personally just want to hear, like, stories uh, from people's work, like jobs and shit. I don't really give a fuck if you flip burgers or if uh, you work, like, road construction or anything. Um, or maybe you're like the CEO of a fucking Fortune 500 company. I don't know. I don't care. But I would love to hear about it. Because to me, I think that like, even if you think your job's pointless, if you're getting paid, there's a point to it. So there's a story there somewhere. There's something interesting. You know? So I just like to hear about, you know, what's going on in people's lives. And it's pretty cool. I don't have any chat rules. Like, ironically enough, right, is I have all these chat rules for like subjects not to talk about it but most people put rules where they're like oh be be respectful and like obviously you want to be respectful but like whether you're positive or you're negative that's fine I think we can work with that
But we'll see. I'll probably have to, like, change shit up as we go. Oh. Is that that same sloop? There's another guy doing merchant runs. You can tell. Like, I can't tell if that's him, but I can check the, the board. It'll tell you. Somehow I think that's probably him though, because he's sailing from port to port as well, so. I should stop like hanging out in port, port blocking him. Because that's annoying, sometimes you go to like, uh, you know, not that I owe the guy anything, but like, <laughs> sometimes you go, uh, you go to like deliver commodities, and someone's in the port, so you go fish or something, and they're there for like 20 minutes, and you're like, oh my god, is this guy just like, on his phone? Is he just some streamer? Yakking on and on. Kind of makes me just want to like uh, sail up beside him and blast a hundred fucking cannonballs into the side of his ship, which is appropriate conduct on the Sea of Thieves. But also, you know, I got a lot of cargo on my ship too, so I don't want to go in there to like pick a fight and then catch him just as he's pulling out and get boarded. That's a big risk, man. What's my flag at three still? Yeah. I've been yakking a lot. I gotta, I gotta get a better balance between like talking about fucking nonsense and also getting these uh, packages delivered, which is what I should start calling them packages instead of commodities, because it's like, yeah, I don't really think that these are full of what they say they are. I mean, I'm not. Uh, I'm not Superman, I don't have x-ray vision, but I don't think you need to figure out there's something amiss. Goods in, goods out, man, it's just the logistics of it. It doesn't make any sense. It's so far, uh, so simple, man. It's only been like two hours, I'm gonna keep it going for five. Do at least one round. I like to, uh, I like to get my emissary up to like five and then do a couple of pork drops after that. But since I'm streaming too, it's worth it to just fucking chill out. Chill out, sit around, the more the stream's up, the more exposure it gets, etc, etc. So this is Moro's Peak, talked about this shit earlier. This is where the volcanoes are. You get the quests. The good shit. You get like, uh... Double the price on it, they're like flaming skulls. Oh, magma skulls, magma chests. Magma everything, everything's just glowing red. It's great. Until you get smoked by one of these, uh, fireballs from a volcano. Which in and of itself isn't that bad, but if you're on the sloop and then you get fucking annihilated from one of the fireballs and you die and your sloop's got holes in it, then that's like starts to become kind of an issue. Because by the time you respawn, your ship's probably going to be underwater. So yeah, we're selling spices here. And we are buying gemstones. Great day to do business. Ooh. I forgot to pimp my music at the start of the stream. had this joke about um, tooting my horn. I have a horn here, actually, but I'll probably do that a different stream. Back 
to making money. Wasn't right. I hate dropping that one box into the void. You just can, can never get it back again. Smooth move. Alright, almost got the level 4 emissary. Now we're gonna be rolling in it. Not really. I mean, I want that level 5, but... I'm making 1400 for sale with these spices. And we're gonna be doing, you know, 15 of them every stop, so... It adds up real quick. It would actually be nice, man, if uh, I could get somebody to chase me down here. Gets to be in like the later hours of it, I actually start kind of hoping for some aggressive players. But uh, what you end up getting is like, over the Christmas holidays there, man, it seemed like everybody was like really actually quite nice. I didn't get any trouble. Now that it's the new year, I was hoping people would get like a little more aggressive. But we'll see, just kind of like depends on luck, right?
gonna take it through this volcano. It's actually fine if you get hit, but it's not fine if the hit kills you because you will not spawn in fast enough to fix your ship and bail it out. So there's a little bit of a risk, but it's not that much of a risk. Might as well cook chicken while we're at it. Chicken ain't gonna cook itself, man. That was kind of close. I want to change heading here. It's funny that I've done most of these uh, commodity runs from port to port so often that I can uh, almost sail it without using the map at all. But there's been a couple of times, man, where I thought, like, like for instance, Ancient Spire and uh, Ancient Spire and that other one, Plunder Outpost. I thought I was at Ancient Spire because of the spire, but the spire is a plunder. And then Ancient Spire has like two spires? Unless maybe like, I'm not really sure what a spire actually is. I thought it was just like a peak, but maybe it's, if you can't go up it, it's not a spire. Not really sure. Tough to say. Over here in like Moro's Peak, man, it's always so fucking dismal. This is where the good loot is. I always joke about that, man, because it seems like in games, like, to get the good shit, you always gotta go to the worst places. It's never in, like, the nice green fields with all the grass and the blue ocean. Like, uh, you know, playing Elder Scrolls Online, you gotta just fucking spend most of your time in caves doing dungeons. It'd be nice to have a game where, uh, place where the good loot was, was also a place that wasn't like in a cave or in a volcano or in like the ninth circle of hell or on the moon or inside of a glacier or like, I don't know, some sort of shadow dimension where everything's just dark and there's no color.
But, you know, if you want to get the good stuff, you got to go to the places nobody else wants to go. That's just economics 101. Oh yeah, that's not Galleon's grave at all, man. I can do this without a map. Oh, actually, my heading was pretty good. I take it back, I am a pro. Beautiful. I kinda wanna, like, check this map out. And, um, memorize all these islands, right? So then I can really impress people, so I can be like, that's Kraken's Fall, which, like, I don't think it might be Kraken's Fall, but Kraken's Fall is, like, near here. That's not Kraken's Fall. This is, okay, Fetcher's Rest. Kraken's Fall's on my left. Yeah, so, you know, whatever. It's funny, it's Liar's Backbone. That's, like, kind of what I feel like calling a Kraken's Fall. kind of feel like a liar. But it would be a nice trick, man. Nice little parlor trick. Bring all these islands. It also maybe help with navigation too, because like if you're trying to escape enemy ships, you really want to know where all these big islands are, and some of them are fucking better for evasive maneuvering than others. Like they have shallow bits, they got little little uh, parts where you can cut through the middle that larger ships can't get to. Lots of shit like that. But generally, the larger the island, the better it is for evasive maneuvering. It's going to be in the middle of that storm, isn't it? That's why I can't see it. Yep. It is right in there. Which is fine. I want to get my uh, commendations for time spent in a storm anyways. Keep thinking I'm seeing a ship out there. But that's just like some rocks. Yeah, it looks like the lamps of a ship, but it's not. It's just the horizon. Oh yeah, okay, so I gotta hit the target. Professional captain time. Galleon's Grave is always actually pretty easy to uh, recognize on the horizon. Because it's got like, you know, there it is, right? No island that looks like that, man. It's got the Galleon on top, it's got that little peak. It's also one of my favorite ports because you can pull in like right next to the merchant, so that's always good. Really easy to load, really easy to unload. The storm's a good thing because you get commendations for your ships, right? when you can get titles uh, based on the things you do. I'd like to get the legendary ill-fated title. I've got the ill-fated one right now, but legendary ill-fated I think would be pretty funny. Because it's like, yep, yep, ill-fated, man. This is a ship that sinks. 
It's too bad because my luck's actually been really good lately. I don't really feel ill-fated at all on this ship. The seas have actually been quite quiet. Might take me longer than I thought to get up my highlight reel. Can't really get uh, any daring escapes if nobody's chasing you, man. that thing Bow something, I'll never remember it. Okay, let's see. Galleon's Grave, selling minerals, picking up sugar. The ever important boxes of sugar. Which is my least favorite cargo. Because it just doesn't give any money. Hey man, people gotta have their shit. It's important. Society runs on that shit. Actually, pirate society. Is this right? This isn't right, though. These are gemstones. I also forgot to feed Chewy, man. He's gonna fire me. That dog's a hard boss. Very hard boss. But he's fair. You know, he's tough, but he's fair. He's got a great coat. Oh, shit balls. Huh. Never seen that before. That's good luck, right? Good luck. Didn't strike Chewy, man. He doesn't deserve that. He's a good boy.
Just a little watery, man. sakes it happened oh maybe I can get it there we go it's supposed to be up here there we go those fucking death rattles man when your ship fills up with water it makes those creaking noises those things like I almost have PTSD from being in PvP hearing those noises it's like oh my god somebody bail water but it's alright, it's just a little bit of water. That's also when, like, you know, you hit a, a beach and you forget about it. And it's just got one of those little holes and then you'll be, like, fishing or sailing along or something. And then all of a sudden, you hear those death rattles and you're like, oh no. Onward back to Daggertooth. That's that. Am I rocking a five yet? No. Daggertooth will settle it up though. This is like, you know, part of the stream where I'm just gonna chill out. Been at this for two and a half hours. I've run out of shit to ramble about. I'm just gonna hang out. Watching this on YouTube or whatever. I mean, you probably uh, got that vibe already. If anything else exciting happens, man, I'll, I'll mark it in the timeline.
Oh, we got a level 4 Reaper on the uh, map. There might actually be some action after all. Sloop coming at me. That's not the Reaper though, is it? Let me check that out. No, it's not. Reaper's probably gonna go do the tornado. Most of these Reaper ships, like it's a PvP flag, right? So everybody can see you and then um, you get a bonus for everything instead of just each one of the different uh, guilds. So no matter what you loot, you're going to get a bonus on it. But usually what these guys do is they pop a Reaper flag specifically just to get the bonus, and then instead of sinking other players, like as in the spirit of the Reapers, they'll just end up going to, for instance, that Fire Tornado Island, which is like kind of in the right direction of where they are from me, so I think they might be doing that. That's like a PvP event there. you got to fight a bunch of bosses and stuff, and then what they'll do is they'll use the Reaper bonus to cash everything on Make a maximum uh, amount of fucking loot off it. So, like, a lot of the times, people with Reaper flags, you think they're going to come at you to do PvP, but actually, they're just PvE players, and, like, if you sail up to them, they'll fucking run away from you. And I've done that, like, running crews with Galleons, and, uh... Running a Reaper flag, right? And it, it seems like when you run the Reaper flag, it actually keeps you safe, because most people just fucking 
stay away from you. Except for the odd group of people who are just like coming in to completely annihilate you or whatever, which you do get. I think one guy on the rowboat with the TNT barrel. <laughs> Had that one happen a few times. It's some pretty funny shit. I like using the Sovereign Dock at uh, Dagger Tooth to sell because it's way easier than running the goods down the, the dock any way you park. There's just no good way to do it. You can harpoon them up, but to get them down the dock just doesn't really, doesn't really fucking work, man. No matter how you park. So usually what I'll do is I'll park here at the Sovereign Dock, and then I'll dump all my goods. And then, uh... Roll around to the Merchant Dock and buy them up there, and then harpoon them in like I did at the start of the stream. Works out. Nope. This is no time to take a seat. There is work to be done. Alright, now I will pull around to the front of the drive through These goods harpooned in, man.
Reaper's gone. There goes my content. Waka waka. Oh well. More coins for me, man. That guy looks like, oh, never mind, Skelly Sleep again. Oh, it would just be terrible if somebody were to come pirate me. Just, just terrible, just terrible. Been out here for two hours and 40 minutes. Let this be a testament to the safety Let's see if thieves. Oh, there's too much PvP in this game, everybody says. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Let's see, man. Let's see just how much PvP there really is. <laughs> This will do. Bad spot for somebody to roll up on me, but you know what, honestly, this has been a real quiet journey, so... Feeling dangerous, man. Feeling real dangerous. I think I can get by with it. Stimbo Narnar says spooky. What's spooky? The complete absence of uh, any fucking dangerous ships here? <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna make the full five hours without getting a single chase in. But it's like I said, man, more coins for me, but it would have been nice to get like some highlights and stuff tonight. There was a level four Reaper. I was gonna go like shoot some fireworks at him maybe, but uh, then he just disappeared as they often do. Probably got hit by one of those guys with a powder keg on a rowboat like I was joking about. That's always the funniest shit. I don't care if you do it to somebody else or it happens to you, man. When somebody fucking rolls up with a powder keg on a rowboat and your shit just blows up, it's, oh, it's fucking, it's a riot. So I remember one time that happened to me and a crew, man, and it was like, I don't know how fucking long that guy must have been rowing that boat to get to us because we fucking, like, fixed the damage because we were unloading, right? So we fixed our damage, unloaded our shit, and then we just, like, sailed around. We couldn't find anybody anywhere. But it was just like one lone pirate on a rowboat with a fucking powder cake. <laughs> That's one strategy that like I haven't talked about that, but I was thinking about uh, putting a powder keg under the deck there so then I could jump off it. Hit somebody with it if they were trying to chase me. But the thing about the whole powder kegs is like people used to keep them up in the crow's nest. Uh, but then people kind of got wise to that meta, so that's like the first place you check with the sniper rifle, right? If there's a powder keg up there, you can just fucking pop it, and that brings down your mast. And then, like, they're good under the deck, but if you take even one cannonball shot that hits it, then you just fucking powder keg yourself, so that's not really good either. But, uh, you know, if you're in a position like me where you're just getting chased by people, then it's kind of alright to have, because if you do have to do a maneuver where you're coming across their broadside and you're going to get hit by cannonballs or whatever, then you can just dump the powder keg before that happens, but... But even then, it's like, when you got the powder keg in your hands, you can't really run with it, so... Usually people are trying to hit you with the fucking Eye of Reach anyways, which is the sniper rifle, right? And when you got that big-ass keg in your arms... It's, it's an easy target.
And honestly, too, I haven't really been in a situation where I've had to actually, like, uh, use the keg. Because, you know, like I was saying earlier, I mostly just hitch people up on islands. And if you just, like, fucking run around like a madman and they can't get a shot off at you, they'll give up in less than 20 minutes. It feels like they're going to be on you forever, because uh, it's just like... When you're being chased by somebody, it's stressful, man, and it's like every second feels like a minute, right? But like I said, I've been on the other side of that, and when you're a captain and you're running a crew, especially if it's just an, an LFG post and they're strangers and they're not good friends with you, man, your crew starts to revolt. Uh, if you're just at the helm and you're chasing down that fucking one sloop or whatever and you're not getting any, any actual decent ground on him and he is snagging you into islands and getting away, then your crew will just start to turn sour, man, and be like, yo, fuck this, let's do literally anything else but chase this one soup or sloop around the the whole sea so you gotta always keep that in mind like when you're doing any any kind of uh pvp or in my case evasive maneuvering whatever you got to get into your enemy's state of mind right <laughs> trying to figure out like what are these guys thinking about as all this is going on but of course being me the fucking clown that i am i'll just launch fireworks at them i'll fucking take my dog and spin around in circles on the back I'll do anything and everything I can just to fucking aggravate them into chasing me more. So it's like, oh uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a mixed bag. But uh, on a long enough timeline, man, eventually they'll get cracking or they'll get hit by a skeleton galleon or they'll get hit by the fucking fog or a storm. Or like that one highlight I get did, I did like a couple of test streams there a few weeks ago just to see like, I don't know, just like whatever. Um, I was originally just gonna cut highlights until I realized like a lot more people watch the VODs than they do watching the live streams. I didn't realize the VODs get so many fucking hits, but I guess it makes sense. Uh, so I wasn't trying to make like an entertaining stream or anything, but yeah, that one ship, man, they chased me around for so long, I'm eventually gonna cut that up and edit it onto YouTube because that was like, talking about daring escapes, they were on my ass like three times and I shook them off all three times. And one time, like the highlight that was posted on the main page for a while there, it's still on the Twitch, Twitch page, they literally just took their fucking ship and just ran it straight into a fucking island, and I was just like, what are these guys thinking, man? But, you know, that's the thing. Everybody always, like, complains about the sweaty crews and everything in this game, but it's a total fucking mixed bag, man. Most people I run into are just, like, totally un uncoordinated, just shit show crews. It's just it's a good time. Just fucking around. I mean, just as much the... The next test stream I did there, I fucking ran into a ship that had infinite cannonballs. And that's not that fucking weird because it's easy to get cannonballs in this game, like I get that. But then they started shooting purple flares that were, uh, fuck, they must have shot like 40 of those fucking things, man. They lit the whole sky up. And then, of course, right, what happened is I led him over to, I think it was Kraken's Fall or whatever, where it kind of has that corner that's uh, really shallow that the sloop can sneak in around there, and then the galleon absolutely fucking cannot. So that's an easy place where you can just rip around that island and, uh, you know, get a couple of leagues on him, get some distance. Um, what you usually want to do is you, like, you run around the island until you've got enough distance that the island is between them and you, and they can't see what direction you head off in, then you just fucking rip it off into the wind or whatever. But what happened is the fucking game lagged out, and I got a clip of it, the game fucking lagged out, and uh, as soon as the fucking, the game was done lagging out for six seconds, the guy's on the back of my sloop pulling the anchor, like immediately, I turned around, he was right there, and I fucking, I fucking burst out laughing, because like, I thought it was, at first I was like, oh yeah, fuck me, like I'm such a fucking goon that I didn't hear this guy board my ship, but then like, I checked all angles of the clip, and like, they fucking messaged the shit out of me after that as well. And as it was happening, they were sending me like a hundred messages and I was like, okay, whatever. And then I called them out on it and they just all were like, no, 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 man. Like, blah, blah, blah. You're just like sour because you fucking blah, blah, blah. You can't admit when somebody, somebody is, uh, you know, a better crew or whatever. And like, dude, I love it when somebody outplays me. It makes for fucking such good footage. But that shit, like combined with the infinite cannonballs and the fucking teleporting onto the ship, which like... I looked that up afterwards too. I went on Google after it was happening. I was like, oh, Sea of Thieves hacks. And sure enough, you go on the subreddit, you go on the forums. That's like the number one hack is people fucking lagging your game out and teleporting onto your deck. Uh, even though I've played this game, like, full disclaimer, I've played it for, you know, 500 hours and that's the first time I've ever fucking seen a hacker. So that is like, you know, whatever. Not something that happens often. So it actually made for a really good clip. 
Um, but yeah, that was kind of fucking weird. You get like, you know, you get a mixed bag, you never know what you're going to run into. That's the whole excitement of it, to me, anyways. Okay, so that's the last piece. Fuck Daggertooth, this place fucking sucks. Somebody needs to fix that dock. Never mind blowing up Golden Sands, man. If there was a fucking, uh, a vote to blow up Daggertooth, I would have fucking blown this thing up ages ago. Just dropped a nuke on it. Just nothing left. Just turn it into a crater, man. <laughs> Kind of an intense response, just because of a shitty dock. But dude, look at this dock. This dock fucking, this is just a, just a nightmare dock. If you want to get in here to load or unload, you got to pull into this little death zone. So like, if somebody rolls up behind you, you're fucked. That's it. Uh, and then if you want to like, park at the end of the dock, then you got to carry your loot like 60 fucking feet. I'm sorry, it's 60 meters, 60 million feet. It's a long ways compared to the other docks, man. The other docks are chill. Daggertooth is just not my, not my dock. But all the rest are good. Especially coming up on Sanctuary next. Sanctuary is chill. The blue skies. That's a sloop ahead of me, but I'm like 99% sure it's a skelly because I looked at it before. Oh, and I'm 100% wrong. So I'm not going to take my chances with that guy. Even though there's one other merchant on the server, and I think that was probably him. Which is interesting that he's fucking raising sail too. Because, you know, like I've talked about before, 99% of this, and everybody always says that it's like, oh, you get fucking slapped around by, uh, by crews and stuff, but like 99% of it is you gotta spot the enemy ship before they spot you, and then you figure out whether they're a danger or not, and then you can gamble on it. And that guy, for some reason, I'm not getting weird vibes from him, but especially since, like, he fucking raised his sail. He's still pointed at me, but he hasn't dropped sail yet, so I don't think he gives a shit. That was the guy that was out there. I thought he was possibly fishing. Another thing is, like, you gotta figure out what these people are up to, right? Because if they're not doing anything, they're probably out there looking for dog meat, right? So, like, that guy, for some reason, struck me as a fisher. Um, another thing is, is, like, if people are parked at islands, for instance, and they have their sails down, but they're not moving, that means that uh, their anchors drop, but their sails are down, and like most aggressive or like sweaty players or whatever, they'll have their anchor raised and their sails up. So like to me, if I see somebody who's stopped with their sails down, that shows to me that they're probably either gonna not be an aggressive player, or they're gonna be like, you know, somebody younger or inexperienced who uh, might engage you in a chase, but you could probably shake them real easy because they don't really know uh, any tricks of the trade here. But it's the guys who are parked at islands, man, or, uh, usually they'll just be sailing around. Like if they're parked at an island with their sail up, usually if they spot you, they'll just fucking drop sail and beeline to towards you, and then it's like, yeah, just immediately fucking re-maneuver yourself to engage in some evasive maneuvers. Uh, but that guy, I think he's fishing or something. I don't know. Whatever. Like I said, I'm not getting bad vibes. Uh, I checked the tables, and there was another merchant... Oh, now he's tricky. Yeah, he's kind of fucking shattering me. He's also wearing a merchant flag. That is the guy. There was another guy wearing a merchant emissary. Let's check his name, too. Oh, the tax collector! Oh, I was fucking... I was complaining about taxes earlier, man. I was talking about how these pirates are like tax collectors, and there he's got the fucking... He's called the tax collector. So I've completely changed my mind. I think this guy's gonna probably give me some shit. We'll see. <laughs> it's Biden. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Oh, these fucking tax collectors, they just want to inspect all your cargo, and they just want to make you pay a 100% tariff and duty on all of it. And it's like, hey, you can't make a living out here on the Sea of Thieves if you're going to make me pay 100% taxes, man. I can't do it. He's going to try to smell my hair. Uh, yeah. You know what? I was talking to somebody about that the other day there. How, like, I feel like that got memory hold, man. I completely forgot that Biden was the fucking guy who smelled hair. Which is like, you know, whatever. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. You gotta fucking smell some hair to run a country. I'm just not gonna let my kids near them. I'm kinda like really lenient when it comes to fucking... Not like, not like that kind of shit. Like, if I knew somebody personally who was doing that, I'd be like, ah, come on, that's fucking weird. But it's like, dude, 
If it takes some weirdos to run a country, then whatever. Just let them be fucking weirdos. It's kind of like always been that way through history, you know? But like, ah, whatever. I'm not going to break my own chat rules that are like totally 100% serious, right? Like, don't fucking break those rules, man. So uh, I'm just going to focus on what the fuck this guy's doing. I don't want to pay no taxes. Yeah, fuck this guy. I'm going to fucking cut south, and I'm going to see if he fucking follows me, and then I'll know for sure what his deal is. And we're both in sloops, so wind doesn't really matter. But straight up wind, like I was saying before, is your best bet when you're in a sloop. It's the only fucking way you're going to outrun anybody. So here's a little psychology trap. One of the fucking problems I'd run into is you think like, okay, well, if I cut south, right, he's going to know that I'm trying to fucking evade him. So he's, he might be like more inclined to chase me because uh, he knows I've got cargo, right? But that's just a psychology trap, man. Like, just run. Like, just evade. Don't worry about trying to psych them into thinking you don't have anything valuable because they'll fucking chase you anyways. That's you, All you're doing is you're wasting time that you could be spending evading somebody who's going to try to fucking attack you. Okay, so he's taking the bait. He's going to fucking try to follow me here. Uh, so now, what you got to do is you uh, try to get him on one side of your ship, one side or the other, which is usually the way it'll happen because nobody fucking follows straight behind you because when you're trying to catch a ship, what you want to do is like, say I'm going like up this way and he's going this way. You don't try to hit their back. You try to go where they're going, right? So you want to end up both in the same spot. And that's how you fucking you catch up to a guy, which is kind of what he was doing before. But the problem with that is you're going to end up off one side or the other of the ship and also, since this guy's a merchant, I should just say this right now. He might want to try to fly an alliance so we can both get money off our merchant runs, but, like, I don't, I don't fucking play that way. I don't fall for it. I'm not even going to get near you. I don't give a shit. Fuck that. Unless, like, I got some dice emotes, and at some point, if we want to, like, roll some dice, I'll do some stupid shit, and that's one of the stupidest things you can fucking do. Uh, never fall for that. <laughs> even if he's a merchant, a fellow merchant, man, you know, we're all out for blood. We're all out to make money, so so fucking forget about it. I won't get close enough to find out if you're my friend or not. I've got all the proximity chat muted anyways and shit. I don't want to get into annoying fucking bip, 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 chat thing on my keyboard anyways. But uh, as I was saying, what happens is the one guy will be to one side or the other of your ship, okay? So then what you want to do is you want to fucking maneuver yourself. So say, for instance, this island coming up. Stimbo Narnar says, it's not the sea of making friends. Uh, I made a lot of friends playing Sea of Thieves, but no, no, it's Sea of Thieves, man. Yeah, and everybody always says that. I was reading on the subreddit. Some guy was all complaining about getting fucking sunk or whatever. Why did you do that? And the guy's like, ah, oh, Sea of Thieves, man. Pirate game. It's like, yeah, it's a pirate game. It also means a lot more, like, I like playing games where you, like, Rust, for instance, and everything, where it's like, yeah, you can be, like, the biggest prick in the universe, but here's the thing, is when you do actually make friends with somebody and you take that risk, then it just fucking means so much more, right? So, like, when you do actually take a risk and then you do, like, meet with somebody and you're drinking grog and playing the fucking banjo and shit, then, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's more special than if there was no PvP. It's a cooler interaction, I feel. So that guy looks like he, he doesn't want none anyways, even if he did want some in the first place. I'm going to have to come back to Sanctuary at some point, but... Like, you can skip ports, you'll still make bank. Sometimes it's worth it to sell instead of to buy and sell. If you only got time, you want to get in and get out, just just drop your fucking, your one big sale, and then instead of loading up, just sail to the next port or whatever. But, uh, unfortunately that guy's not chasing us, so I couldn't show you this thing, but... Long story short, if he's on this side of your ship, see on the left side, what you do is you fucking cut your maneuvering so that what happens is you cut past the island, or in this case, this rock formation, just such so that the rocks are right on the left side of your ship, and so when he tries to converge, okay, the rocks will be here, and he has to either cut around the rocks this way or go around this way. And through the power of triangles, that adds a couple of leagues between you and him, and you can gain some ground. And then, when he doesn't see where you're at, yeah, yeah, port side stimbo, yeah, okay, I get it, nautical terms, come on, we already went over this. Um, <laughs> you can fucking keep doing that, man. So, like, if he's on the left side, when he's trying to go around it, he can't see which way I'm going anyways. So at this point, I can fucking cut across, 
knowing that he's going to be on my right side. I could then cut across this fucking island, because by the time he comes around, he's going to end up on one side or whatever, and then you just keep snagging him on islands, and eventually they'll get sick of it, and they'll fucking leave you alone, or they'll just crash into some islands, and you get some good fucking uh, highlight reels. Now, as I was saying, with the fucking galleons and the brigs on the other hand, they are so much faster than you, especially if they get wind. Uh, which is why you should almost always, like if you're solo slooping it, always head up wind, because in that way, like you gotta head straight up wind, like I was saying, because if you cut diagonally one way or the other, they even still get a fucking little speed advantage on you there, but at least it's not like 20% or whatever. Uh, let's see, we got a fucking reaper up here. I'm gonna chill down here at Plunder Outpost. I'll, sk I'll skip those two. But we'll actually see. It might not have been five days, so the goods might not have uh, reset, and I'll just have to head back up there anyways. Just play it by ear and see if that guy's gonna go for it or not, and see what those Reapers will do. Maybe get a couple of fucking funny videos. I don't know. We'll see. But, um... Yeah, man. Evasive maneuvering. With the Galleons and the... the uh, the brigs, right? They're so much faster than you that sometimes just snagging them on islands, like you can get some extra distance, but you're not going to lose them completely. So what you kind of got to do is you just got to find the biggest island you can. Or like I said, some of these islands, they have uh, sandbars that the brigs and the galleons will hit, but the sloops won't. And you just keep fucking circling around that island and they'll try to chase you around the island. And then eventually you'll get like a whole island's width between them because they'll end up on one side and you'll end on the other and then when they can't see what direction you're heading in you break loose and you just try to hope for like a kraken or you find some fog or you find like a storm works too or sometimes like a skeleton galleon will pop up and take them out you just kind of kind of wait for something lucky to happen because like a lot of smuggling is just being lucky right it's just all about luck just flip a lot of coins and practice man <laughs> just like roll some dice until you feel good about it and then get out there on the water it's all good Stimbo Narnar says sorry. Apology accepted, Stimbo Narnar. That's very, very big of you. No, for real though, I should be using like nautical terms. What the fuck was the front of the boat called? That thing off the front? I tried to look it up again, but it's lost in chat. It was like a bow something. Cause I still don't even know like the bow's the front and then the stern is the back. Cause I always feel like that should be the other way around. Cause when you bow, your ass sticks out. That's like but you bow forward, so maybe that's how I should remember it, because when you bow, you bow forward. So the bow's the front, and then the stern's the back, because maybe it's like, yeah, the bow sprit. Okay, that fucking makes sense. I think I was calling it a bow sprit. Yeah, the bow's the front. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I'll fucking remember that. Talk about mnemonics and organizing my fucking cargo here. This sandbar I fucking hit every time, doesn't matter what ship I'm in. Didn't hit it this time, though. Right on. Totally gonna fix those, uh... Oh, yeah, the aft. I forgot about the aft. The aft would be the back, because it sounds like ass. What the fuck is the stern, then? You can be our nautical terms expert for the stream. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how I remember that too. Port is left. Apparently it's called that because all ships... They load and unload on the left side, is what I've heard. They always go into port with the port side that way. Um, yeah, I should fucking learn some of these terms. Make me look really impressive. I'm sure I'd get... Just fucking all kinds of like accolades and medals. Maybe someday I'd get to stand on a stage and they'd pin stuff to me. Chewy! Didn't give the dog a spin today. Sorry to hold things up. I gotta feed him some chicken too, I feel bad. What do I got here? It's pretty good, but... He is the captain, so the captain's gotta get his due. Here you go, buddy. Eat up. Eat up. Eat some more. Eat some fucking more. Okay, just, you know. Yeah, whatever, I'll eat some more then. It's just dog germs, it's all good, right? Oh, <laughs> you don't like me eating your chicken, huh? <laughs> you fucking eat it then. Fuck. I'm telling you, he's a tough captain, but he's fair. 
He's fair. He pays me well. Uh, 100%. Stimo Narnar says, Stern is also back, possibly just alternate turns, or maybe there's a technical difference. Yeah, 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 yeah. That made me think about the poop deck. Yeah, so the poop deck, the poop deck is, uh, oh, okay, the stern is the back, the aft is the direction. Thanks, Timbo, appreciate that. So this up here is the poop deck. Yeah, this is it. So the poop deck is, uh, what the fuck was it? Or maybe it's maybe it's not. It's supposed to be like the deck that's at the above the shit at the back. It's like the top deck that's over like the captain's quarters, on like a galleon or whatever, where the wheel is. Like the wheels up here as well, but it's got nothing to do with the wheel. And apparently it's because of uh, French. It's like a la poupe, la poupe or something. I don't know. It's an important term to know. Uh, so where even the fuck am I, man? I'm at plunder, so we're gonna be unloading stone. And picking up everything. Oh shit, the stone. I was supposed to buy the stone at uh, Golden Sands. So, there's not really that much of a reason to be here. I'm gonna fucking stock up instead of selling. See if these goods have reset left. Last time I remember looking at this clock, it was the 24th. And I've been like yakking more than I've been sailing. So it should be five days. Okay, well my memory's not very good. Because either we've gone back in time... Maybe a coconut fell on my fucking head. Are you up to this? But uh, let's see. Let's see what we got here. They're probably still locked. That's my guess. Yeah. So these are out of stock. So uh, the only two places that should be open are actually Golden Sands and Sanctuary. So we're gonna have a fucking good old smuggler's time here, and see if we can fucking get in and out of those ports before these people put some cannonballs in me and my captain. My captain, oh captain. Yeah, galley is the kitchen, but like galleon is a ship. You can sail. Like a Spanish galleon. Okay, so I'm gonna check the little spot of where that fucking Reaper is. And then what I think I'm gonna do, depending on the Reaper's position, is I'm gonna sail west. Way the fuck out west. Like just. Just way out there, man. I'm gonna fucking sail so far west, I'm gonna be wearing a cowboy hat. Might see a, a shootout with some six shooters. I'm gonna listen to some fucking Katy Perry in California. I'm gonna be just as far west as I can possibly get. Which is like one or two islands, there's not really that much not much land out there. And then uh, That should give me enough like maneuvering land to see again if that, that uh, other guy on that other sloop is either going to attack me or what. Or I might, depending on, like, I don't know, I might feel saucy. It's pretty far into the, the stream here, and it's there hasn't really been any action. It was just smooth sailing. It's been three hours here. I might just, like, I might just see what he wants. Maybe he wants to uh, have an alliance. I could pop a fucking alliance flag. Maybe, maybe play some banjo. Maybe spin my dog a bit. <laughs> Which, that sounds, again, that sounds like a euphemism song. Spinning my dog. But, uh, hashtag didn't mean it like that. We'll see how it goes. I'll just play it by ear. I'd like to get some more storm time as well, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go around this storm. I want that legendary ill-fated title, man. I feel like the ill-fated title's the funniest one. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna sing you a sea shanty. I actually have a real banjo behind me here that I know how to play. But, um, I don't know, maybe not today. I'll, I was gonna, like, play it a little bit and then just tease people and be like, Oh, hey, maybe if I want to get more followers, I'll play you guys some more songs, but... No big deal. I can just like bang the all fucking drum in game here. I like grog males. I cannot play any of the songs on the banjo though. Grog males is actually uh, when you you play it on the banjo, it's two banjos that are like tracked over each other. Which you know, I'm not like calling out rare or anything. I'm not being like, oh, it's the two banjos, man. Guys are lying to us, but like, it is. It's just a matter of fact. You can hear it. I don't know if you could actually like, uh, if you could actually play that. Grog males on one banjo, but the way they play it, you definitely could not because there's parts where they're strumming and picking at the same time, and it's like you can't strum and pick at the same time. If you if you played it like solo uh, on a banjo, it would certainly sound different. 
it wouldn't sound as good. So I'm, it's one of my fucking favorite songs in this game. So I'm glad they recorded it the way they did. And also, I can uh, I can relate to that man because when I do recordings, I fucking cheat. I cheat so much. That's my recommendation. Is like if you are a musician and you do recordings, oh my god, cheat as much as you fucking can. Track that shit. Play one thing t once and fucking if it's the same again, don't even bother playing again. Just copy and paste. You not only will you not hear the difference. I mean, unless of course your your com your composure, or whatever you call it, composition. I don't know nautical terms. I don't know musical terms. But uh, if your composition requires, uh, you know, that part of the song to be played differently, certainly. But with rock music, man, it's like bass lines, especially. Just fucking copy and paste it, dude. It saves hard drive space, and it even like it almost sounds better because it like tricks out your fucking brain somehow that, like, you wouldn't expect to hear the same thing over and over again. Uh, vocals, though, I won't, like, I won't copy vocals, even if I have a part of a song that you gotta sing twice. Sing it twice. But that's, like, another story. That's another whole story, because, like, the way that, uh, pop singers do it... Not to say that this is the way I do it, because I like to keep my cards close to my chest when it comes to music production, but the way that pop singers do it, right, is what you do in a professional studio is you go in there and you record uh, like say you're gonna sing a fucking song um, you get all your shit ready you sing the whole song front to back and then you immediately do three more takes front to back boom 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 now you got four takes of your vocals and what you do is you go in there with your little fucking digital scissors nah, 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 and you snip up every line from the four takes and you take the best of those four takes and that's how you get that shit to sound like fucking, mm, just fucking perfect, man. Uh, if you can't get what you want out of four takes, then like do six takes, do ten takes, do twelve takes, do whatever it takes. But uh, what's gonna happen is like you're gonna burn out. You could like do like four takes, like four takes one day and four takes later, but then the consistency between the takes isn't gonna be there as well. So like you do have to fucking practice. Like I will practice my shit a hundred fucking times before I even do one take. But in order to get, like, just that magical, perfect fucking sounding take, the best way to do it is to do four takes back to back and then cut it up and, and fucking splice it together. Once again, not that I do that, but I've heard from people like Britney Spears, for instance. That's the way they do it. Okay, so. I mean, even Kurt Cobain, that's the way that uh, they do it. Did you hit my fucking dog? You skeleton son of a bitch. Unbelievable. Not fucking believable. He's good. He's good. I think that the thing about dogs, right, and cannonballs is because they don't weigh much, uh, they just get, like, knocked out of the way. You know, the cannonball doesn't doesn't hurt them. Um, I don't... Yeah, he didn't like that. Chewie didn't fucking like when I said that. I don't advocate shooting cannonballs at dogs. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, like, you know, within a Sea of Thieves context, I think that if a, if a cannonball hits your dog or a bird, for instance, it just, like, they just get knocked aside, man. It's because they don't weigh much. It's, like, the more weight, the more mass you have, because you need, like, that resistance to the cannonball. Speaking of resistance to that cannonball, man, if you have uh, any interest in cannonballs, I don't know if you've seen it, but... I recommend looking up that uh, picture of that breastplate from like the 1700s or something. It's some nobility, I can't remember who it was, and he got hit by a fucking cannonball, and it's like, it's just literally like a cannonball shaped hole in the breastplate, and it blew clear through it, and then all the metal is like pushed inwards, right? It's just like a cookie cutter hole. It's like, man, the shit people used to fucking, used to do. I mean, we, we got scarier shit now, but I don't know. Some of that old school shit I find is almost like, it's almost like worse. Because at least if you get like artillery dropped on your head, it's just fucking, it's just done. I mean, I guess it would have been done with that cannonball too, what am I saying? But I don't know, whatever. These megalodons are usually fucking chill, it's no big deal. Generally encounters in a sloop, in general, they turn it down a lot. If they ever were that tough. Uh... If one of those skelly, uh, skelly ships comes up, like a skelly sloop, sometimes they pop up beside you. A lot of people complain about those because they're like, I mean, not a lot of people. I haven't heard about that, but that was like one thing years ago. I used to see on the subreddits. People 
people being like, if I'm solo slooping and a, and a skelly sloop comes up, am I just, is my run over? Like, what's up? And it's like, no, you just gotta immediately get 10 cannonballs and just fucking psh, 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 hit them with 10 and then repair your damage and usually they'll sink from the 10 shots. But you just gotta get on it. Like, as, as soon as you hear that music, hit them when they pop up. Because what happens with those skeleton ships is they will hit you with magical cannonballs and depending on what cannonball the ship is carrying, because each one carries a certain type, holy fuck, man, you get hit, hit with three of those back to back, sometimes, yeah, it just it starts to get a little a little hairy, especially if you're a newer player. Chewy. Something to chew on, buddy. What's the matter? Oh, he's hiding behind the barrels again? Aw, oh, dude, that's, that's not cool. You're the captain. You're supposed to be, you know, all stoic. That's all right. That's all right. He gets a pass. Even the captain gets the shivers sometimes. I just wish I could give him some chicken or something, lure him out out of there, maybe a pork chop. So I said I was gonna look at that fucking uh, Reaper. I didn't even look at it. This is me just rolling the fucking dice. He's only a three, anyways. So yeah, fuck Golden Sands. I'm gonna go straight to Sanctuary. Just keep doing the fucking the run the way I was pick up where I left off. Sorry for wind. I'm also fucking funny with the sails because I never like, I just never set the sails when I'm solo sleeping. I just always lose the M square because it's like if you're going upwind, this is the fastest way to set the sails on a sloop. If you're on another ship, uh, depending on like how far across wind you get, you'd actually want to turn them so they're not catching the wind. But if you're going straight upwind, you want to keep them square like a sloop. So. When I was like first playing years ago, I, I used to like crank them to the side if I was going upwind because you'd think like. Physically, this makes no sense that this would be the fastest way to sail upwind, but uh, yeah, it's a fucking huge speed difference, man, when you just leave them square. I'll be honest, I'm like more concerned about that other merchant with the emissary up than I am about those reapers. I feel like those reapers are just like, I was saying before, like a lot of people just pop the reaper flag to get the, the full guild bonus on all the loot. Because, you know, you'll get, like, the Merchant Bonus plus Order of Souls plus the Treasure Guys. And, uh, like, when I used to run a fucking Galleon with, with a Reaper flag, we'd pop that shit and everybody would just leave you alone. Because they think that you're the fucking badass sweaty group of the server. But, like, you're actually just out there doing, like, fucking Skull Forts and digging up treasure and shit. Until, like, yeah, the one guy rows in with the TNT keg and blows your shit up. And you're like, oh, what the fuck? But I also, uh, like, when I'd run Galleons, and I'm I'm always the, the fucking captain, because, like, I don't know. It, uh, it's just the way it goes. I enjoy it, but I'm also usually the best at it, so it's usually just whoever fucking takes control, right? I don't like to sit around, so I'll start fucking taking control. And everything, everybody loves it, man. Everybody loves, loves me as the captain. They say I'm the best captain ever, because I fucking care about my crew, and it's true, I do. I like to, uh, you know, keep things moving for everybody. But, um, yeah, when we used to do that shit, man, because we'd do stuff over in the Devil's Roar with those volcanoes, and I would just, like, be the guy to just sit on the ship and do lookout. I'll just sit in the crow's nest. I'll take an ammo crate up there. If they can, like, lure some sit shit to the shore if we're doing, like, uh, skeletons or whatever, then um, I will just pop them with the, the eye of reach, do a little extra damage for the crew. If not, if they're digging up treasure, solving riddles, I don't do fuck all because I don't give a shit about riddles, man. No, fuck those riddles. Those riddles are stupid. Digging up treasure is a pain in the ass on the best of days, so I would just like sit in the ship. I didn't even have like a phone or a second monitor or fucking anything to like pass the time. I'd just get right into it and cook chicken, talk to my crew. But most of all, I'm watching the horizon, man, because that's another thing that people don't get is like... Stimbo Narnar, I fuck with riddles. I should show you some of the riddles in this game, man, because you probably haven't seen them. They're fucking funny. They dialed them back. You used to have to do like uh, these three and four part riddles to get one crate of treasure, but then it's like, now I noticed I did one the other day with a friend and it was like, oh, we only have to do one riddle to get this chest? Like, holy fuck, they're listening. Nobody likes riddles, man. Stimmo Narnar says, hit me with a riddle. Yeah, I'm not a riddler. I'm not a riddler, man. I've known to be a fiddler once in a while, but I don't fiddle with riddles mostly. It's uh, not my cup of tea. You know? I don't know any riddles. I'll like I'll solve riddles if I got to. Like if I'm at the Sphinx or I got to do it to cross a bridge or whatever, or to like save my friend's life in some sort of situation where we've been kidnapped by the Riddler and Batman hasn't shown up yet, or you know, 
he's just like dealing with his own shit because he's 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 got his own problems. We don't give him enough credit for everything he does for other people, right? Simbo Narnar says, "Just call me Edward Nigma." Yeah. Are they? Uh, was the Riddler? I haven't seen that new one with the fucking the guy from. Uh, I want to say the guy from Twilight. What's his fucking name? Robert Pattinson, I think. But I don't even want to call him the guy from Twilight anymore because I've seen him in some other movies since, like he was in Tenet, he was in this other movie, which I'm not even going to talk about. It was one of those movies I saw on Amazon Prime that, like, yeah, I wish I could get that hour and a half back, but hey, yeah, whatever, man. It's all good in the end. There was a couple of scenes that were worth it. kind of made you think, but then it took a really weird turn at the end. But the point being is, like, he's actually a fucking... He's, like, a, he's a good actor. I mean, I don't know if he's, like, a good actor, like, or whatever, but if I see him in a movie, he's entertaining to watch, you know? There's, like, just some actors and actresses where, like, I don't know what it is about the art, how they do it. It's not, like, I don't care about people, like, oh, disappearing into a role or whatever. I just want to see somebody that's, like, I don't know, man. It just, like, makes you feel good. They're just fucking, they just got away. Got away of being cool about shit, I guess. And, uh, he's one of them, man. He's actually fucking... It's pretty good. Pretty good in some shit I've seen, but... Yeah, I didn't see him. Like, I thought when they were talking about him being, like, the new Batman. I was like, are you kidding me? They're gonna make the Twilight guy the new Batman? But then, like, I've seen him in some other movies, and now it's like, yeah, totally, totally. He can pull that off, so... I'm still saving that one, because it hasn't come out on any streaming services or anything. So I'll watch that when I can, but, like, uh... Was that the Riddler in that? That's what I fucking was asking. To start, I think it's the Riddler. Because it wasn't the Joker. And it wasn't the Penguin. But I don't know what the hell they were doing with that movie. Because it's like a Batman movie, but Batman kills people. And it's like... Yeah, Mr. E. Okay. But yeah, I don't know about that, man. Like, that's, that's pretty badass because, you know... The whole thing about superheroes not killing people is super important. Super duper important. But sometimes you do start to wonder, like, you know, if Batman had just punched the Joker really fucking hard in the face just once, man, then, like, think of all the fucking people he could have saved in, like, the ten years that the Joker was just keep, like, running around the fucking city fucking shit up. And it's like, ah, oh, he escaped from the mental asylum again. It's like, dude, at what point, you know, do we just have to invoke, like, capital punishment or something but i don't know that's that's fucked up because like superheroes man then they're not really heroes are they but it's a whole can of worms it's phil it's philosophical man it's philosophy and like superman especially like like batman and the riddler is one thing or, or the joker but like superman and lex luther it's like dude can't you just like just throw him into space yeah the killing joke uh, Stimbo Narnar says, did you ever read The Killing Joke? Yeah, I did, and that's that's actually what made me think about that shit, because he fucking kills Robin and shit, and it's like, dude, at what point is Batman just as fucked up as the Joker? Because, like, the only reason he's keeping this guy alive is actually just so that he can justify, like, his own existence as a superhero and wear, like, a cape and run around the city saving people from a madman, whereas it's like, if you actually got rid of this guy, then would you just have to fucking just be Bruce Wayne? When all the super criminals are gone, right? But yeah, I feel like Superman and Lex Luthor, like Lex Luthor is like worse than the Joker in a lot of ways. And it's like, couldn't you just fucking throw him into space and he'd just go missing and he'd be like, oh, I don't know what happened to him, man. I don't, I'm Superman. I'm not like fucking omniscient about everyone's location all the time. I'm sure maybe, I don't know, he went sailing and never came back. I wouldn't be a fucking very convincing superhero, man. But, uh, whatever. Where are we fucking at here? Sanctuary. I'm selling sugar. Picking up tea. Is this sanctuary? Let me just look. Yeah, this is sanctuary. Let's get rid of these 15 crates of raw sugar. Stimpo Narnar says, yeah, it's a little sus to say the least. Yeah. Superman, he's an alien as well, so I, I give him a pass because, like, you know, he doesn't want to lose his humanity, man. And that's like the whole thing about all that shit is it's like the the black knight or the white knight chasing the black knight i don't know what poem that was i remember reading that in school where it was like that white knight uh he's going through all these villages and you know he's crawling through the mud and going through the shrubbery and everything and every village he goes to they tell him they're like hey man you just missed him the black knight was just here and then he goes to the next village and the next village and the next village and eventually he's just like so fucking covered 
in dirt and muck that the last village he goes to, they're like, what are you talking about? Look at yourself. It's you. You're the Black Knight. And that's supposed to be like some sort of a metaphor for like, uh, you know. We gotta fucking keep clean. Gotta take a shower sometimes, I guess. <laughs> right? But uh, it's funny because he doesn't really do anything like evil, but that's supposed to be the metaphor. Is like as you're trying to like catch the person, the evil black knight, you yourself do things unspeakable horrors to catch him. But all he was really doing was like crawling through mud and shrubbery and stuff. It wasn't a very dark poem. I think I think I remember uh, reading that in probably like fucking grade seven or something. So it was like, uh, you know. I think it, it could just as much be an allegory for about the importance of having a squire to clean your armor so people don't think that you're fucking crazy when you ask them where the Black Knight is. Or, here's a thought, just fucking color your armor black in the first place because, like, why you gotta be the White Knight? Why don't you just be the Black Knight chasing the Black Knight? I mean, there ain't nothing wrong with being black. Nothing wrong with color black, man. Ain't nothing wrong with black armor. You know? Nothing wrong with that shit. But I guess the medieval times were like, they were different symbology was like much more important in people's lives you couldn't just fucking uh you know couldn't throw the devil horns people would probably burn you at the stake for it so being the white knight is probably probably pretty important you know so anyways here i am at sanctuary uh that sloop kind of turned towards me I don't know. Didn't give me any shit. There's a Reaper on the map. I'm not having any problems. So just once again, another study in uh, how dangerous is the Sea of Thieves. Because if you went into the subreddits, which like, oh god, you want to talk about Reddit, I'm not going to fucking start talking about Reddit, except for the fact that like, I started browsing Reddit 12 years ago, and it was precious and amazing and everything about that website was fucking perfect now not gonna get into it but anyways you fucking go to these subreddits and it's mostly just people complaining about shit eh, yeah for better or worse whatever um and the number one thing people are complaining about on the sea of thieves subreddit right now is like just getting sunk by sweaty crews and uh i'm doing this this series this streamer documentary series where i'm gonna I'm just going to film like 100 hours of me doing commodity runs, man. <laughs> and then be like, hey, check this out. I literally did this for 100 hours and I didn't get sunk once because, like, maybe it is a skill issue, boys. Like, you got to keep your eyes on the fucking the horizon. And that's what keeps it exciting. You're gambling with your life and, you know, I'm fucking yakking about the White Knight and the Black Knight. But, like, you got to always kind of keep one eye open out there on the shit that's going on. And if someone's coming towards you or even if they're not... Just fucking stare them down and try to figure out what they're up to, you know? Because it's fun. It's fucking fun, man, to always kind of be, like, on the edge and you never know what you're going to get. And then when you do that, you stay safe. The crew stays safe. People come back, you know? Stimbo Narnar says, In the Once and Future King, there's a questing beast and he gets caught once and he gets all depressed because he's not being chased anymore. And so does Sir... Uh, I thought it was Belvedere. But Bed Bedivere, not sure if that's right, gets depressed too. Yeah, and that's like, I was talking about video games before, man. And Stibbo Narnar says, okay, but don't worry because they resume the chase and all is well. And that's the fucking thing is we all think that it's about like the destination and it's about the loot. And like, don't get me wrong, it's about the loot, man. I fucking love the loot. Like, let me just take a look at my character here for a second. Like, yeah, it's not about the loot. It's not about the loot, man. Like, it's about the fucking loot. But at the same time, the loot is only good because it, like, if they just gave it to you, it wouldn't be worth anything. The fact that you have to, like, go risk your fucking, uh, I want to say life and limb, but it's more like risking your ego, because, you know, getting sunk, dude, it fucking hurts the ego. And that hurts, that hurts more than, like, physical pain sometimes. It's just getting fucking, you know, it almost, like, knocks the wind out of you, where you're like, I'm not the greatest? Fuck! Oh, right? Like, it's, <laughs> it's fucking tough. But I, uh, you know, I like it. I like being chased. It's fucking fun. Like I said, it feels like falling off a cliff with a bomb strapped to your chest. It's like skydiving, but I don't fucking skydive. Because I feel like, you know, in real life, I like to keep it safe. Because there's people who care about me, and there's people I care about, etc, etc, etc. And, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Not to say that I totally fucking get the adrenaline rush, but... I get my adrenaline from uh, video games by risking my fucking ego. 
And um, now that I'm streaming, I'm recording it too. So when I fucking embarrass myself, I'm gonna post it on the internet and everybody gets to fucking see that as well. And then I get my ego fucking crushed even more if it goes wrong, or maybe it'll go right. And I'll be a hero. And like I said, I'll get to stand on a stage and they'll pin things to my chest and uh, maybe I'll get to wear a sash. I'll get to wear a sash for a day, you know? How about that? And it'll say fucking hero on it. Just say fucking hero. And I'll be like, yeah, what's up? But even the sash, they take the sash away. You don't get to wear the sash all day, every day. Eventually they want it back. They want to give it to somebody else. They want to clean it. That's another thing, talking about hygiene. They want to clean the sash. So like, you gotta go out and you gotta risk it again and again and again and again. Because like, if you want to be the fucking shit, you gotta do the shit and you gotta put your head on that chopping block and hope that you don't hit the wrong button and pick up the emissary quest like mm -hmm. I just did, which is which Good is day. fine. It used to be um. <laughs> <laughs> Stimbo Narnar says, who would jump out of a perfectly good plane? Uh, soldiers. Uh, rangers. Rangers, they're called. Yeah. And they lead the way. And they're fucking badass. But, like, yeah, people who do it, like, uh... I don't know, I, I know people, uh, fucking here, here where I live who skydive and shit. I don't think any of them have died yet. They're not, like, they were, like, friends of friends that I knew in high school and stuff, so I don't, uh... I don't keep up with them or whatever. But people, the funny thing about skydiving is, like... It's not 100% safe. People do fucking die doing it because you have a backup chute, but even the backup chute can fail sometimes. And it's not like, you know, I'm not even going to say it's a 1% chance or whatever, but yeah, it's like, it's something else. I don't know. I don't think I would ever do it, but, you know, it's one of those things where maybe if I was in, like, a fucking really intense committed relationship for, like, 10 years... My significant other wanted to skydive really badly that I might think of making like a fucking Yeah, you know, okay, whatever. I'll try it just for you blah blah blah, but you know not in that situation So fuck skydiving not gonna do that man I get my kicks in like a bunch of different ways. Sea of Thieves is one of them, but you know There's other ways This is great because uh, the whole thing about the adrenaline, right? The reason why I get the adrenaline from this is because it takes like two hours to get your ship fully stocked. So even though, you know, people don't like loading cargo and shit, it's like the more time you spend prepping to do whatever activity you're going to do, and then you lose all that prep when you fucking lose and you'd have to do it again, then that's where the adrenaline comes from. So, yeah. I'm really big into like the philosophy behind like what is it about games that make them so appealing? And like, like you know, we're all getting that dopamine fix, but like, what are the strings attached to it? Because talking about like, you know, sinking ships and, and whatever, if you cheat at games, it doesn't fucking matter. It's not just like the actual act of shooting cannonballs at a ship, because like, if you can't get sunk, then it's not fun. I mean, it's fun for some people, but it, like long term, it's no cheater ever fucking keeps cheating because it's just you know I, I fucking don't know i'm not even gonna get into that because like i'm so like beyond not cheating that i fucking used to try to understand like why some people do hack and stuff and like i just don't even care anymore i can't really wrap my head around it i can and i can't because anytime i do i just sound like a fucking like a prick and whatever <laughs> so <laughs> just fucking forget about it Hacker's gonna hack, man. Like I said, I only ran into like that one ship so far. I got it clipped. I think I think they were hacking. It was the flares, the flares that fucking tipped it off for me, man. Cause who the fuck gets like 80 purple flares? And then the fact that like I lagged out and that guy was on my boat and it was like, okay, you could theoretically the only fucking way. There's no way they would have had cannon angle. They were trying to convince me. They're like, oh, it's just a good, just a good cannon shot, bro. And it's like, no, he would have had to have cannoned onto the island. At some point, I wasn't watching his ship. I don't know, like, if another player cannons, does it make the fucking, like, a, that whistling noise? Because when you shoot cannonballs, it doesn't make the whistling noise. But when you shoot a player, like, I know if, if someone shoots you out of a cannonball and, you, and you're in first person, it'll make that whistling noise. So I don't know. Maybe it doesn't. I fucking, I'm not that, like, into that to, to figure it out. But, like, he would have had to have cannoned onto the island, run all the way across the island, and then sword lunged off a fucking cliff into the water and then up my boat, but during the exact six seconds the boat was lagging out. Like, the whole thing is so fucking preposterous, man. Yeah, so Stimbo Narnar says a lot of it is an escape, I feel. Yeah, I... I don't even know. 
I don't even know. And that's what got me into the whole thought about, like, philosophy and video games. And maybe I'll do, like, a whole video series on this, probably. I'll certainly be editing out some of these, these fucking rants about it and talking about it, like, just, just forever here. But, uh... A lot of video gaming, like I know for a lot of people it is it is escape. And when I was younger and stuff, it's about like going to a place that you can't go to and without like, you know, actually having to pack your bags and pay money and shit. Like some of these games, like I played that uh, Deus Ex was on uh, Game Pass. Uh, not the first one, I didn't play the first one. I think it was the second Deus Ex. It came out in like 2016 or something. And that game was like, dude, I just went through uh, fucking people's apartments in this fucking fake, it's only like three, like, I don't know, three city blocks or something, but you can go into like, uh, these three apartment complexes, yeah, I didn't play the first one, but the second one was fucking hella dope, man, because I would just go through and read people's emails, and go through their drawers and shit, and it was like going on vacation to like another fucking world, man, same with, uh, Outer Worlds was like that, that was the one, I keep mixing up Outer Wilds and Outer Worlds, but I think it was Outer Worlds, like, some games are just like, just go into another fucking, another land, a distant land, and it's not even about, like, uh, it's not even about, like, uh, shooting the guys or doing anything, it's just, like, going somewhere else and just being, like, immersed in it, and it's fucking cool, man. And then there's also, like, uh, you know, the whole fucking, uh, you get put in a situation and overcoming a challenge, that's really big to me, is, uh, overcoming challenges. I like to put games... I like to play games where, like, you put it on a difficulty and then you fucking fail so hard five times in a row that, like, you fucking just put your controller down and you're just like, this is fucking impossible. This is impossible. The developers fucked up. This is impossible. And then once you're in that state of mind, you pull yourself back and you try and try and try as hard as you can to see something that you did not see before. Because, um, Stimonarnar asks, ever play Shadow of the Colossus? No, I did not. I've heard. That's one of those tough ones, right? Yeah, because, like, these games, it's so easy to blame the developer and be like, no, 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 this is fucking impossible. Somebody fucked up here. Like, this is not possible. But then what happens, man, is if you just, like, you try to wrap your brain around it any way you can, and what you'll realize is, like, you fucking missed something. And there's something that you didn't see before because you had a blind spot to it or whatever and like that fucking feeling of like failing at something so hard that you literally are convinced completely that no this is not possible this is fucking impossible and then you come back at it and you find a new way to approach it and you figure out something that you didn't know before and then you beat it it's like holy fuck you want to talk about dopamine dude that's the fucking jackpot of dopamine you, you just feel like the champ you feel like you actually feel like bruce willis and die hard at the, the end of it like yeah i just I killed a bunch of terrorists in a fucking building like i actually did that shit so to me it's like i guess what it was is like the escapism of it i think i just gained a tolerance to it where like you play shit on like the easy difficulties which is fucking great you know i i love like i said you just go to a different world and you immerse yourself in it and the storyline and everything and it's not about like it's not about winning or losing or anything. It's just about viewing the art and uh, and being a part of it and everything. And even also, too, it's just like, um, you know, I used to load up uh, load up fucking, like, Unreal Tournament or whatever. I'm, I'm at the wrong fucking side here. This is something I'm never going to get used to is, like, talking about all this shit and also trying to fucking pilot a ship here. But um, one of the things I used to do, would you load up, like, you know, those old shooters and stuff, and you just put the bots on, like, super easy. And then you just, like, run around and just fucking murk these bots for three hours straight. <laughs> and it's just, like, power tripping on fucking nonsense, right? Or playing a single-player game, like, going into Grand Theft Auto, and you just load yourself up with cheats. And you're just, like, running around, just fucking annihilating everybody. Like, that shit's fun. But I think, like, what happened is it's like a fucking drug or something, and you gain a tolerance to it. And so, like... I don't know. Part of it is a tolerance, and part of it, too, is, like I said, like, when you really fucking struggle with something and then you break through to the other side, dude, it is a feeling unlike anything else, man. Yeah, Stimbo Narnar says it gets boring quick. Yeah, it does, man. It does. So, like, I don't know. I, I play games now. I try to, I try to like, keep it balanced because it also, too, like, I won't, I won't start a game and immediately put it on the hardest difficulty. I'll usually try to play it as intended, and then, like, depending on what kind of game it is, like, I play a lot of, ga like, Game Pass games now because of this shit. It's fucking awesome. It's like Netflix for games. I was skeptical, but then I got, like, a fucking year of it for a dollar, basically. I, it, not not a scam. It's legit, 
Um, I probably shouldn't talk about it here, though, because it's kind of like, uh, you know, I don't think it's intended, but okay, so the long and the short of it is, is that if you have Xbox Live, and you can only do this once, but uh, when you get the Game Pass subscription, you pay a dollar, and they usually only give you three months, but if you prepay your Live subscription for up to two years, that one dollar will get you Game Pass for the entirety of your Xbox Live subscription. So you can pay a dollar and you get like Ultimate and Game Pass for like a fucking year if you have it prepaid. Right, but you got to go buy like the prepaid cards from the store and shit. So yeah, I don't, I don't think that's a fucking scam, but I also don't want them to fix that, and I probably shouldn't. Like, my videos aren't getting like fucking mad views, right? But I don't know. Someday, someday that might, uh, that might become common knowledge, and they might fix it. I already got my fucking trial and everything, so it doesn't hurt me. But, but the point being is that I didn't. When I first signed up for that shit, I didn't know if I was gonna keep paying the money for it. But it is a hundred percent fucking worth it man i have played so many games i would have never have given a, a chance sea of thieves is one of them and i fucking play this game all the time now because of that shit so so it's at the point where it's almost ni like netflix like i will rarely play a game if it isn't on game pass because uh you know i don't know i'll just play it when i play it there's so many fucking games out there man so many fucking games if i fucking edit down this shit for youtube i'll cut that part out or I talk about that but that's the kind of shit that if you sit through the whole fucking live stream, that's the kind of the cool little tidbits you're going to get, man. Insider knowledge. That, like, I think a lot of people know about that. Anyways, but. Uh, so this is Golden Sands. I was going to fucking show you last time we were here. I was going to give a walk around the inside. But now there's actually, like, some fucking pirates and shit out, so maybe I, I'll just save it for another stream. But I'm telling you, bro, they got three frying pans just right next to each other. And that's like unheard of in this world. Did I really fucking... This is Chewie's fault. Okay. This whole time, every port, I'm like, parking is so important. And then I fucked up like every park job this whole stream. But like I said, I still gotta get used to like, you know, yakking and fucking sailing. Okay, okay, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. Just inch it forward, just inch it, kicks into turbo. Yeah, no, oh fuck, I should have let that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, good enough. Doesn't really get better than that, except if I did it better than that, but okay, whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah, content, man. Um, speaking of content, I'm going to check where those Reapers are at, actually, because I'll, I'll give a quick little tour of Golden Sands here. Oh, okay, so that the Reapers hide out and they got four bars. So I'm fucking... I'm going to actually just fucking cash out here. I'll show you the frying pan. Oh, this is tea. Tea. These are gemstones. It's like, what What are in these crates, man? Who needs 15 crates of tea every five days? I mean, I used to drink a lot of green tea, so that would have been me, but like I was saying, I'm fucking... I'm off the fucking caffeine pony, man, for at least a little bit. I gotta, I gotta quit it for two weeks a year, and I'm quitting it right now. I find that, like, dude, <laughs> Stiffo Narnos is addicts. Yeah, addicted to something, that's for sure, man. Five, 15 crates of it every five days. Um... But yeah, I fucking love caffeine. I love it. But like, what I found is now that I'm I'm doing these streams and shit, I'm posting stuff on the internet. Is like, it gets me kind of anxious anyways. So now I'm cutting out like stimulants and shit from my life because like you know, well not stimulants, just one. Okay, it's caffeine. But I've been known to maybe smoke a little bit once in a while. Okay, and I'm fucking not doing that either. I got like tons of stories about that shit if someday fuck people want to talk about it, but I'm not going to get into it because that's another thing where people like they swear by it. They fucking 420 every day and that's fucking great, man, because if it works for you, it works for you. But but uh, I smoked that shit for 10 years like every day and I now do not smoke it. I try to keep it to like no shit. I'll smoke like half a joint every two weeks and even that I fucking don't even do that because when I'm fucking streaming, now that I'm streaming, it's like when I don't smoke, uh, I get just major fucking anxiety if I do smoke, so, so I'm cutting all that back, and, and it's working. It's working good. It's working good, yep. Yeah. But I used to drink a lot of green tea. I used to drink fucking tons of that shit. And brewed tea is, uh, you're not supposed to drink lots of it, because it's not, like, it's not good for your 
body. It's got these things called oxalates or whatever. And we're talking like, dude, we're talking like, you know, if you're just a daily tea drinker, you're fine. But I was drinking like liters of that shit. Especially if you make it strong, like I was, I was talking like, you know, you, it's with anything you start out with like, oh, I'll just do one tea bag, and then you're like, five tea bags! It's like green tea, but it's brown. It's like, yeah, no, don't do that, I don't think. Again, not a license to uh, anything, so take my advice as entertainment only. But, uh, you know. I guess actually the best advice that I can give is just fucking go for it, actually, because it's an experience, man. Like, fuck, we all got brains in our heads. You'll figure it out if it works or it doesn't. Just don't be afraid to fucking, you know, try shit out, man. Whoa. These unclassified gemstones were giving me 1,700 before emissary bonus two weeks ago. They're only supposed to give 900, and now they're giving, like, 900 this week. But I swear, and this is something that's true. Like I said, a lot of this shit, I'm not really good about, uh whether or not some of this shit is just bugging out or if it's an actual game mechanic, but these prices change from week to week. So a lot of people think that, for instance, doing these runs isn't worth it, but they might have just caught it at a week where the prices are low. Because when that shit's up, like when you're getting fucking 1700 before emissary bonus, uh, after the emissary bonus, it's like 4500 a fucking crate. So like you roll in with 15 crates, um, and you're making like fucking 50 grand a stop at these fucking ports, man. So it's like, it's decent money. It's decent fake dollary dudes that you can use to buy flaming pants and cool fucking eye patches and shit. Now, what do you want? Mm. And like, you know, meat to fry the three frying pans in the middle of Golden Sands. Which is like, I like those three frying pans, but then I thought about the actual logistics of it, and it's like, uh, you'd have to fuck in. You can only carry five pieces of meat at once, so it's really only makes sense if like maybe like the whole crew went in there to cook, and then you can all like take turns cooking, kind of. But then like it only takes one guy to cook, so I don't know. I don't think they thought that through. I guess if you're having a big party, it's cool because you can just go give everybody pork chops, have a big pork chop party, which again sounds dirtier than I intended it to. Hashtag didn't mean it like that. Uh, Stimbo Narnar says there are lots of good non-caffeinated teas. Uh, mint is, is really good for digestion. Yeah, tea in general um, is actually good for you as long as, yeah, you, just like anything else, man, take it in moderation. Whatever that means to you as well. I mean, fuck, I don't know. Because even, you know, like the old joke... Yeah, everything in moderation, even moderation itself, I guess. Yeah, yeah, excess in moderation, that's what it is. Oh, this is where I'm buying the sugar? I'm, I'm tripping now that I'm on, like, just about to hour four here. This is where, like, every port starts to look the same. And when I stop playing the game, the fucking walls are still going like I'm on a fucking boat. But yeah, this is where I was picking up the sugar. We're selling it down at Plunder Outpost. Hippie hooray. It's funny too- oh, bleh. It's funny too because I feel like people don't like doing these commodity runs because they just feel like, oh, all you do is load and unload goods. And it's like, yeah, you do, but you also do that when you dig them up or fight skeletons. I mean, you literally, like, anytime you want to make coins in this game, you have to load and unload goods. So, like, instead of going to dig up my treasure, I'd like to just take it from a fucking cool merchant lady, man. This is, like, to me, more enjoyable than treading around in the dirt. Even though, like, I don't know, I might, I might do that one day just to fucking break it up a bit. Probably not, because it's like, eh, like I said, when I first started playing this game, even before the commodity runs were in, I uh, did the merchant stuff solo, because like, I just like sailing. I don't really like running around on islands. So this is like the most sailing you can do, is just doing merchant stuff, whether you're doing cargo runs or you're doing uh, even the fucking shit where you, what are those, the sunken ships you can do. Uh, 
the chicken hunts and stuff, those you still gotta go run around an island for those, but you know, whatever. It's cool. I also feel like a boss sailing around with 90 pieces of fucking loot on my ship. And then sometimes, like, if I'm getting chased and I'm near the end of a run, I'll just start hucking it over the side of the fucking ship if I think I'm going to lose it anyways. Which, like, yeah, I don't even know if I'm going to do that again because after these last few runs especially, like, the last time I did that was that those guys, they fucking harpooned me, man. They were in a brig and they harpooned me. And so I was like, yeah, okay, this brig's too fast. I'm getting harpooned. I'm going to start dumping my fucking crates. I only had a few anyways because I was selling out near the end of a run. And I just didn't want them to fucking get the loot because, you know, fuck you, Sea of Thieves, all that bullshit. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I ended up getting away with, with it. Even though they had me harpooned, I still managed to run them directly into a fucking island and I got away. And then what happened is, uh, they started chasing me again and I fucking got a galleon to, to chase after them. I mean, I didn't get it. I didn't, like, blow a fucking horn. I didn't, like, blow a fucking horn, you know, and the fucking, uh, the goddamn fucking skeletons just come out of the water. I didn't do that, okay? I'm not, I'm not that guy. I'm not Neptune, god of the fucking ocean. Don't ever tell anybody that, okay? But, uh, yeah, a skeleton galleon came out, and they got fucking sunk, or whatever. I don't know. I didn't stick around. I just went, ha-ha, and then sailed off into the sunset like I always fucking do. So, you know, it's all good. Yeah, I have that trumpet there just, just for fucking jokes. <laughs> That's not, I don't, I don't play the trumpet. I bought that thing fucking years and years and years ago, because if I see a cheap instrument, I'll just buy it. You know, see if I can play it. Tried to play the violin. Yeah, the strings are like 60 bucks for a set. Didn't learn that instrument. I uh, tried to play the trumpet. The thing about the trumpet mostly is, uh, for one, it's really fucking loud. And, and oh, oh, I got a, I got a, I got a jet. I got a jet. Fuck, he's coming right for us. <laughs> I should have been watching the fucking horizon, boys. Oh, it's a skelly. It's got to be a skelly. That's a fucking skelly sloop. No fucking way. No fucking way. Did I get all my cargo here? That's so fucking funny, man. Whew. He does it again. It's because I blew the trumpet, right? They always show up when I blow the fucking trumpet. Um, for real, though, I, I got all my goods, right? I don't even fucking remember. Eh. 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 Whatever. We're going to fucking... We're going to, uh... Where are we going here? Blunder? Blunder outpost? Yeah, so anyways, the thing about the trumpet, right, is like, uh... It's fucking, uh... Really loud. And I'm not that kind of guy. You know. I kind of learned to play the drums a bit when I was younger. So... You know... As an adult, living with people playing the drums and shit... It's not like, I'm not just like, how do I put this? I can hold a beat, man, and I can do some cool shit, and it's not that crazy. But when I'm trying to learn to play the trumpet, like I bought that trumpet as an adult, and it's like, yeah, no, there's no fucking way that I'm gonna fucking piss off the neighbors four houses down trying to learn the trumpet. I can like, you know, I can do a little bit, I guess. It's not that big of a deal. I could get like a mute for it or whatever, but uh, the thing is too, is you, you gotta like, there's spit valves and stuff. And I, uh, ha, 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 I didn't really, I didn't really maintain it before I put it away. So, like, I don't know what kind of condition it's in. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's basically just a comedy prop now. I might soak it in alcohol or something. The valves also started sticking on it, and I don't know if it's because it's like, it's, it's just a fucking, like, the kind of trumpet that, like, a high school student would buy. I think it's... The band is called Academy or whatever, so I think that's, you know, it's literally the cheapest fucking trumpet you could buy, man. It was like 110 bucks 10 years ago. Which, like, I'm not in the market for trumpets, but I think that's relatively cheap for a trumpet. Anyways, um, I got it at one of those uh, excess cargo stores 
too. It wasn't even at a music store. It was at one of those stores that they just stock like random shit every week. And it was just like a whole bunch of fucking school instruments, I guess. I don't know if someone over ordered or what the hell happened. And then it ended up in an excess cargo place. And so I was like, fuck yeah, I'll buy a trumpet for 110 bucks. Maybe I'll get really good, start a mariachi band. Spoiler alert, never happened. But uh, whatever, I got it. Learned a little bit about that shit. The other thing too about the trumpet, interestingly enough, is uh, how do I put this, man? I got paranoid that I'd end up with a set of like really fucking luscious looking <laughs> lips, <laughs> which is like uh, nothing wrong with that, but it's just not my style because like. Um, yeah, I fucking don't know, man. I know that's so that's so paranoid, but I dated a, a trombone player. You know, she she had some nice lips, and I was wondering if that was because of the fucking trombone playing. Because like after you play uh, a horned instrument with one of these fucking ends, right? You know, you push your fucking lips in there, and all the blood goes to your lips, and like your lips look different after you play. And I was like, is this gonna be permanent? And like, you can call that vain or whatever, but yeah, I was kind of like, I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing this for that reason. Another reason specified, right? But that was one of them. And then there's also that whole thing, like you can look up these things called uh, Gillespie pouches. Um, where like when you play the trumpet, you're supposed to keep your cheeks taut, right? Because if you fucking just blow out your cheeks, what happens is your cheeks stretch out. And uh, there was a trumpet player called Dizzy Gillespie. And he didn't keep his cheeks taut. And so it's an actual medical condition called Gillespie pouches. So that's what kind of got me thinking, like, if I play the trumpet, like, Gillespie pouches, I could deal with that, but will I just end up with, like, these fucking huge lips that just don't suit my face or whatever? I don't know, maybe it would have made me better looking. I'm just being fucking stupid, but... But yeah, there's a funny story about trumpets, man. Why well, never learn to play the trumpet better? I can hit, like, a couple notes. I'll, uh... I'll usually just learn, like, one scale or whatever. Trumpet's weird because you play like a first and a fifth without changing the things. Bugle would be fun. Bugle, you can hit more notes and whatever, but I'm not going to get into it. I don't know. I don't know how exciting the music stuff is. I mean, I get that it's like some of it's exciting, some of it isn't, blah, 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 whatever. Going in talking about like fifths and scales and yada, yada, yada. That's like nobody, nobody fucking knows. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a shit, man. Me, least of all. So... There you go. I do play a hell of a banjo, though. No doubt that'll happen one of these days, but like I said, I'm kind of just like... Just gonna have it there and keep talking about it. And then eventually one day I'll play it and everybody will be like, whoa. I do have uh, seven songs up there on the fucking YouTube. I'm gonna get a SoundCloud going in a week. It's, it's not banjo music. Some guy said it sounds like a cross between the Doors and the Foo Fighters, which is what I was going for when I made it. So I'm gonna believe him and tell y'all that that's what it sounds like, even though it's like kind of its own thing. You know, I was really big into Queens of the Stone Age as well. I mean, I fucking, you know, was, am, but not like, I like their, I say was because like, I'm still really big into like their first four or five albums, uh, right up until, what the fuck was that one? The Vampire of Memory and Ultra Sadness or whatever. That was a fucking killer album, but then, like, uh... Then I don't know what Josh Homme was doing. Is Villains good? Because, like, the fact that he did, like, a Satanism thing in 2017... Yeah, Vampire of Time and Space. Yeah, I just kind of, like, I was like, bro, maybe not a good time to do the, the, the Satanism thing. Like, you're gonna put the devil on the front of your your fucking, uh, your album. Well, it's, yeah, I think that was Villains. Villains was the one where he had, like, it was, like, the devil with the fucking hands over his eyes, and then I saw a music video where he's all doing, like, Satan shit, and it's like, okay, that was cool in, like, the 80s, but especially in, like, like, 2017. It's not that I'm, like, one of those people, but, but it was just so tone deaf, because, like, uh, everybody thinks that, like, 
Satanists or kid diddlers. It was like synonymous. The two things were like hand in hand in 2017. Like everybody on the internet was like, oh, if you're into Satanism, then like, you know, you're into the other thing I just talked about there that I'm, uh, you know, I don't even fucking go down that rabbit hole. So like the fact that he released an album that just had like, oh yeah, we're going to put pentagrams and the devil and all this shit. I was like, bro, Hami, you've lost your mind, man. You fucking snorted too many snooks there. I don't know what the fuck you're into. And then I listened to a couple of the singles from it, and it just was not that good. Uh, Stimbo Narnar says, Songs for the Deaf has the forked tail, doesn't it? Um, maybe. But again, that was a different time. I mean, I, I used to fucking joke around about that shit a whole lot. Because I'm not... It's like, whatever, dude. It's just... To me, it's just like mythology or whatever. And I know some people take it really seriously, and I respect that. I especially... I especially fucking, like... I stopped joking about it because, like, whether it's real or not... If you fucking get into that shit, then, uh, yeah, really crazy shit happens in your life, and none of it's good. And so I fucking stopped doing, I stopped joking about it, because we used to do, like, little, like, seances as a joke, and we used a Ouija board and everything. And then I just, like, I just stopped doing it, because we had this one party, man. We were joking around, and we were all going, like, oh, hail Satan, hail Satan at the party. And fucking Buddy cut his hand open. There was blood everywhere. The furniture got trashed. It was like this fucking three-day wrecker of a wrecker. And then at the end of it, I'm like looking at everybody when we're just sitting in the fallout. And I was like, you don't think maybe that had something to do with Satan? Do, do you guys? And everybody just turned like pale white and we just never fucking joked about it again. And I never fucking joked about it again. Because that's all it was to me. It was just a joke. And then like, um, especially considering... Like I said, the whole thing about, like, you can call it a satanic panic revival or whatever, but everybody thinks, okay, for instance, uh, that Bella, Bella Duccia shit or whatever, Balenciaga, that shit that happened recently. Yeah, like, that shit's been going on for fucking a lot longer than just this latest scandal, and 2017, everybody was, like, big into it at the time. So it would be like him putting out a fucking Balenciaga album right like that's how fucking yeah that's how tone deaf it was so that's why i was like oh buddy homie man i love you bro i love like your five fucking albums that were gold and there's probably even some singles off of villains that's that's all right but it was just like Ugh. it was just so stupid i couldn't get into it because it because it's like have you been living like homie have you been living under a rock bro like do literally anything else and also too like the whole satanism thing in rock and roll is just so fucking easy i feel like got burnt out in the 80s and anybody who like latches onto that is just fucking out of ideas man so that's just me i don't know whatever you know i got like some songs out so i can i can talk shit <laughs> maybe but but uh but uh whatever man whatever that's that um have you seen pictures of hami uh Stimbo Narnar says, how do I feel about Marilyn Manson? Yeah, well, he's a clown. For better or worse, I love clowns. And uh, it was, he had his place in the 90s, right? Like, that shit, when that shit happened in the 90s, like, fuck, whoever's watching this, uh, if you weren't in the 90s, you don't, you would never understand him. But that shit was like, uh, mind you, I was like also very young, but that was edgy as fuck, man. That shit was so fucking edgy. Even though there's like some edgy shit in the 80s, it was like, whoa, look at this guy. Like, that was entertaining, man. Like, that was some fucking entertaining shit. But now I think that, like, we're just living in like a post, a post edge apocalypse. Like, it's not about just being as edgy as possible. And so I think he's kind of like, like, goes, I gotta stop here for a second. What's, what's going on? Okay, yeah, we're good. So, yeah, I just feel like it's just lazy art. That's all. I feel that, like, you know, if you're going to be an artist, it's like trying to do, like, uh, the fucking Beatles again. Or trying to do, like, you know, like, 70s rock and shit, which is like, ah, uh, you know, like, Wolf Mother. It's like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Or, like, who the fuck is that band uh, that sounds exactly like Led Zeppelin? They had a song in fucking Forza, and it's these kids. They're, like, 19 and shit. They're a little older now, probably 23, 24. But they had a... Uh, all their songs sound like exactly like Led Zeppelin and then you see them in interviews and they're like oh we've never heard of Led Zeppelin I never listened to a lot of Led Zeppelin man uh, we're just inspired by the same fucking uh, albums Zeppelin was and it's like bro you're telling me you've heard every album Zeppelin was inspired of but you haven't heard Zeppelin themselves give me a fucking break man and so it's like whatever I'll listen to it but at the same time it gets boring quick because like I'm done with Zeppelin kinda 
they play so much of it on the radio that it's just like, dude, if I never hear another Zeppelin song, I'm good. Like, they're a good band, but, like, time and a place for it. And uh, I just got burnt out on that shit. So if a band comes along and they sound exactly like Zeppelin, it's like, you know, if I'm playing Forza and it comes on Forza, it's like, oh, cool. Like, I thought it was a Zeppelin song. It's not. I fucking forget what those guys are called. But anyways, yeah. Um, Stimbo Narnar says the Beatles are a psyop and McCartney is dead. Okay, so... I actually, funny you should bring that up, because I 100 fucking percent unironically believe, not that they were a psyop, psy but that Paul McCartney fucking died, man. I 100% believe that. Because if you read the lyrics of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, the whole fucking album is like this homage to Paul McCartney, and they talk about him being dead, and they even name drop the name of the fucking lookalike who uh, replaced him, allegedly. It's in the album. The guy's name is in one of the fucking songs. And the, the album cover is like a wreath of a bass. Like, a, they're at a funeral. And then after the fact, when people fucking started, like, thinking they figured that shit out in interviews, they backtracked 100%. And they're like, no, 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 you're all wrong. That's not what it's about. It was uh, an homage to a uh, jazz bassist that we really liked. Blah, blah, blah. But it's like, give me a fucking break. And here's the reason why I think that shit is true is because... First of all, you see pictures of this fucking look-alike, man. Like, that's the idea is what happened is Paul McCartney died in a car crash. They were at the height of their fucking, uh, their boy band status or whatever in, like, 64 or 65. And then uh, their manager or somebody had the idea of replacing Paul McCartney with this look-alike. And then what happened, if that's what happened, is it turns out the look-alike was also a fucking phenomenal musician, if not even better than the original Paul McCartney, right? And then uh, I think that's why the band broke up, man, because after a few years of this guy pretending to be Paul, they fucking started arguing because it was like, dude, we sold out our dead friend and replaced him with a total fucking stranger, and now we're releasing albums with a dude pretending to be our fucking friend, and, like, it fucking tore them apart, and that's why they started fighting, and they fucking broke up, and they got all weird with acid and shit. And, like, honestly, considering how they were fucking so so close such good friends and then all of a sudden within like a three-year period they just uh broke apart and like never fucking basically spoke again for the rest of their their adult lives until you know whatever i mean it wasn't that long till uh lennon got shot and whatever but dude it almost like feels like there's some truth behind that so i like don't believe a lot of crazy shit but that's one of those those weird conspiracy theories i looked into and i was like oh fuck man especially considering that if you look through that sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club band album there's fucking too many coincidences of like lyrics and shit of them basically talking about it because like you know they wanted to man it tore them apart everything that happened you imagine if you're fucking you're best friends with somebody all through fucking high school you start a band you become absolutely famous and then you have to deal with the tragedy of not only your fucking best friend dying but the fact that you sold out his image to continue being successful and now a total fucking stranger who you had never met until like you know he won a look-alike contest, is now taking the place and the name and the legacy of your dead friend. Dude, that would fucking drive you insane. And they did all kind of go a little crazy, so I don't know. I mean, the acid probably helped, too. Don't do that shit, kids. It's bad for you. That's my Mr. Rogers moment. Okay, so where the fuck... Where are we again? Ancient Spire? No, this is plunder. This is plunder. You can tell because of the spire. Right? So what the fuck am I selling? Stone. Here we go. 15 crates of broken stone. I don't know what they're doing with it. I don't ask them. They don't tell me. I'm not gonna fucking worry about it. I'm just the guy who delivers the package, man. And I'm getting 2,000 coins per fucking broken stone package. So if, you know, people want to say, Oh, you're never gonna get those... Those fucking Dark Adventurer sales, solo slooping, because Sweaties just come in and fucking drop nukes on you constantly. Well, here I am with $8.6 million. Still haven't bought those sales, though, but I'm going to fucking buy them. They're 8.5 million. But like I said, I'm going to save it for, like, a meme stream or something if and when I get some, uh, some viewers and followers here. I mean, I say if, but, like, I ain't going to quit, even if I'm just fucking streaming to three people. This is the shit. And like, you know, if shit doesn't work, I'll try something else. I mean, not like, 
Uh, I'm not gonna go fucking learn to play the trumpet. I mean, like, I'll just change the format of my streams or whatever. I'm, I'm really quite fucking passionate of making this work, dude. Making content and entertainment is just fucking... It is... It's tough, but it's rewarding, certainly. I honestly think that, like, I mean, I don't know, I think a lot of crazy things, but I feel like uh, more people in the future, it'll become more common just, like, doing small streams and stuff. Because I feel it's also, like, it's strangely therapeutic in a way, getting yourself out there. But then again, like, yeah, I'm a totally fucking different beast, and what works for some people doesn't work for others. But for me, it's therapeutic anyways. I don't know what the hell it is. There's just something about, like, you know, just making content, man. Bringing joy to other people's lives. It just makes me happy. So Stimbo Narnar says, Oh man, <laughs> but about Zeppelin, they actually got into the occult. They inscribed those symbols into their albums, into the discs themselves on original pressing to gain energy and power from their fans. And they all got fucked over by it in the long run. Their lives fell apart, divorce, tragedy, etc. All except John Paul Jones. Here's the thing about the occult, if you believe in this shit. And this is what people don't fucking understand, okay? If you're gonna write, for instance, in Led Zeppelin's case, occult symbols to gain power from your fans, this is what people who engage in that kind of nonsense don't fucking get. Every person on this planet is a spiritual being, a fully activated spiritual being. If you have any kind of belief whatsoever, if you have a religion, or even if you don't fucking believe in it, that will give you a spiritual fucking defense, okay? So if you cast dark rituals that fucking target, and this is what these fucking dumbasses always do, right? Like, anyways, I'm not going to get into it, but I fucking, I know some of these people have tried to talk to them about it because their lives are just, whether or not this is true, like I personally, you know, I'm not going to say it's real or it's not. I would say I don't even believe in it. But as I said, people who do this kind of dark magic shit, all of their lives fall apart. And what it is, okay, they do these rituals, for instance, the Led Zeppelin one. You put the symbols on the fucking disc. You are now attacking every person who listens to your music. You are but one person. You have one million fans, okay? So you're pulling in some fucking energy from them, but what happens is their fucking spiritual defense system boots up. Not only does their spiritual defense boot system boot up, but the shit, it communicates between people, so their family members, everybody who cares about them, their shit boots up. Uh, their friends fucking boot up. Their fucking colleagues boot up. And now all of a sudden, yeah, okay, man, you might have had a little bit of fun when you fucking cast the ritual, but in the days, the weeks, the months, the years afterwards, these people's energy is now fucking attacking you like a defensive fucking uh, antibodies in the fucking system, right? And that's why if you do that shit, if it's real, not saying that it is or it's not, your whole fucking life will fall apart, man, because every single person that you try to fucking pull energy from, they will fight you fucking back and they will hit you twice as hard and in numbers greater than you can fucking handle as a single person because when these people cast these fucking rituals man they always cast rituals that like they try to pull energy from like the whole fucking world man it makes no fucking sense from like a logistical point of view anyways that's my little dark occult rant whatever like i like i i know about it because like i said it used to be funny to me and of course being like a musician yeah, we all fucking joke about that shit, and a lot of people think that's the trick to being successful is you cast all these dark rituals nah, to get fame and power, but it's like, dude, it's called selling your soul for a fucking reason, man. You know? The devil will make you pay your fucking dues. But the thing people don't understand is, like, it's not the devil. Like, I don't think the devil's real. It's all the fucking people that you spit on are going to spit back on you a hundred fucking times over throughout the rest of your life. So, like, you know... The real way to make it is you just got to practice, 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 man. You just got to practice, man. You just got to practice, man. You just got to practice. I hate hearing myself say it. <laughs> yeah, Stimbo Narnar says energy boomerang. Uh, Stimbo Narnar also says, I think Dave Grohl stayed in a house they did too, a house that belonged to Aleister Crowley owned at one point. Yep. And John Paul Jones was the only one that didn't really get into it. He wasn't down with it. There you fucking go, man. And again, I'm not saying the shit's real or it's not, but you look at every single fucking guy who got into this shit and, like, the the amount of tragedy that comes down on their fucking head within, like, years, 
years, man. It's not even like in their old age. It's like fucking plane crashes, car accidents, divorce, fighting, drug addiction, fucking insanity, like uh, hallucinations, everything you can possibly fucking imagine these guys end up dealing with, man. And you can say that like, okay, maybe it's a coincidence. It could be, but uh, is it worth fucking around with? I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't like, I don't even joke about it anymore because of the shit that I've seen happen to people who get involved in that shit. And I've tried to like, I know people who do it in their lives are fucking just a wreck and I try to talk to them about it and I'd be like, you know, maybe you should uh, give up the witchcraft there, buddy. Like, haha, I know that uh, you love it, but um, is it really worth it when you take a look at your life? It certainly hasn't been helping and they always get so fucking offended too because they just think like, oh no. Um, Stimbo Narnar says sometimes it's just the CIA or the music industry. Yeah, not most of the time probably. That's probably what it is. I can't wait till the CIA fucks with me, man. I'm gonna love that shit. I had a I had a funny fucking encounter. You remember uh, that David Hogg kid who was in the Parkland shooting and his dad was an FBI agent? So I used to post a lot of videos on, uh, not videos, but just comments on YouTube nonsense. And one time there was this video on, on Reddit, the front page of Reddit, and it was about... I don't know, maybe you've seen it, maybe you didn't. It was a few years ago, but it was big news for a day anyways about this guy that uh, he was a lifeguard and these kids leaned their surfboard up against a garbage can and he came to tell them to take his surfboard off the garbage can because you can't lean shit on the garbage can. And so, like, I didn't even watch the video, but I went to the comments and posted a fucking shitstorm because... I'm not a, I'm not like a troll, okay, but I'll post like if I have a controversial opinion, I will post it. I won't be rude about it. I'm not doing it specifically to get flamed, but I'll do it because I enjoy having like the argument and the flames and the fucking attention to <laughs> But you know, I'm not doing it specifically for that, but that was one of those days, right? Where I went in there and I was like, "You know what? I think that this kid's stupid." His fucking surfboard should not be leaning against a garbage can. Some old lady has to go throw their garbage away. They gotta move the surfboard. You know, they're they're mostly concerned not that the surfboard's in the way, but that they're gonna accidentally knock your surfboard off and damage your fucking board, dude. Furthermore, your fucking surfboard isn't garbage, and so you shouldn't put it with garbage, man. You should take better care of that. So long story short, a bunch of people started posting, and then one kid fucking posted, and he said, Hey, I'm the person who filmed the video. Okay, and he started arguing with me, but when I fucking read that comment, I got like the weirdest fucking vibes I was like, this is it man. This is the snake. This is the fucking Illuminati This is the, the fucking devil or something like whoa holy fuck man Like I just got the weirdest energy from his posts. So long story short The kid was David Hogg Because it turned out that he was the guy who filmed the fucking video and this was before the Parkland shooting, but after I got in that argument with him, dude, I would be getting the weirdest fucking posts on my YouTube comments. I would post on a video where nobody would even go to. It was like three years ago that the video got posted. And you don't get, if you post a comment on a three-year-old video, you won't get any interaction with your comment. I learned that. If you really want to get like the old fucking argument started, you got to go on a post that's hot. But I'd post it, and then these accounts would show up and say shit about like, fucking weird shit man it was like they were they were like reading my fucking phone uh like location and stuff and alluding to it and then i was like yeah okay and then like i used to post on uh 4chan back in the day don't judge me on that okay it's not if you don't know anything about 4chan it's not what the media fucking says it is it's just a garbage website where you just a bunch of anonymous people just joke about a whole bunch of stupid shit anyways the point being is that um in one of the fucking 4chan uh, sub communities there was a post about the town I live in right and there has never been in the two years I was on 4chan in that sub sub fucking community ever a post about any fucking city in the entirety of the world never mind London never mind Toronto never mind fucking anything and it was a post about my town I lived in and it's only 85,000 fucking people who live here and I'm Canadian and that was the day I was like oh I'm not posting on 4chan anymore, and I'm gonna stop posting on fucking YouTube, and I stopped posting for like a year or two, man, because it freaked me out so bad. And that all shit all started happening after uh, I got in a fucking flame war with David Hogg, whose dad is in the FBI. And then all oh, this shit's coming out about like the FBI's involvement in Facebook and Twitter and shit and everything, and fuck, I don't know if that's all just a coincidence what happened to me, dude, but I'll tell you that it made the hair on the back of my neck stand up.
So yeah, I know. I know what goes on and they all watch people and everything. But my whole thing is I got nothing to hide. Like, I live clean and I don't really actually mean anybody any harm. And uh, even my jokes, I'm careful about my jokes. That like, uh, you know, they're jokes, but yeah. I'm not I'm not out there to fucking actually, you know, hurt people. But at the same time, what gets the flame war started on YouTube, for instance, the last one I got into... It was about this sword fighting game, and I, uh, you know what, actually, I don't want to out, I have a separate YouTube account, so I don't want to out my fucking other account, because sometimes, uh, I don't know what I was posting on there six years ago, and the rules of what we can and can't say on the internet, um, fucking changes, so forget I said anything about that, but I will give you, like, a, a vague example, is, if you go in there and you're really passionate about something, and you just show that you know a lot about it, and you care a lot about it, then you will get... A dozen people coming in there just to call you fucking names and a loser and blah 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 and say you're wrong and whatever and yada yada yada. And that's the kind of shit that like, yeah, I'll post on there just to fucking... Just to keep... I'll just stand my ground and I'll just keep like... Uh, not even arguing but just keep like reasserting my facts and points and stuff. Because it's like, I don't know, it's a good, uh, a good exercise to like, you know, put yourself in the fucking flame. And learn how to like keep your cool while still talking to people and arguing and shit. Sometimes you gotta do that in real life, and I, again, I'm an adrenaline junkie, so I get a kick out of that. And then also now, too, like, these people who come in and they just say, like, oh, you're a loser. They'll just, like, pin you and be like, you're a loser. Um, it's actually against YouTube's harassment policy, so you can just go down there and you just flag them for harassment. And it's so satisfying because it's like, bro, you can't just, like come in to a chat discussion and just call somebody a fucking loser and be like, oh, go touch grass, or like, oh, you're a weeaboo, or like, uh, what some other things that I've fucking heard? Uh, you're a fucking... Oh, you must be fun at parties. You must be really fun at parties. And, uh, yeah, actually, I'm pretty fun at parties, but funny thing is, is a YouTube comment section. It's not really, uh, the same kind of party as the parties that, you know, everybody likes to go to. So, uh, you know, but the trick is you don't engage with those comments, man, because then you get pulled in. Like, never go, never be defensive. That's one of my, my, uh, my big things. Don't go on the defense, because when you're on the defense, then, um, yeah, you just don't feel good, man. It's all about feeling good. It's all about posting shit and then feeling good about it afterwards. Feeling good about yourself. And when you're on the defense, it puts you in a weird, a weird thing. So those comments, I just ignore them. I'd never attack other people. I don't call other people stupid or fucking weird or whatever, because that's just, like, pointless. Um, I'll just keep reasserting my facts, man. Like, one of the things um, that I argued about was there was this really bad live performance by a band, and I just went in there, and I was like, you know what? This was a really bad live performance, and, like, and this is actually a phenomenon that I've noticed, is that in the 70s and 80s, Live performances used to be better than the fucking albums. These guys were like phenomenal musicians, man. You see, yeah, Stimbo Narnar says, attack the idea, not the person. Yeah, exactly, man, exactly, exactly. And like, that was one of the idea was that like, yo, like these live performances, it started like the first bad live performance I ever saw was Blink-182 playing on uh, the Jay Leno Tonight Show. And it was fucking, or maybe it was SNL, but dude, oh, it was so bad. It was, oh, fucking just so bad just so fucking bad and it's like dude we don't have live like performances anymore uh people don't fill stadiums there's no bands that fill stadiums and rock and roll has essentially died we don't even have fucking pop punk anymore and i was arguing the point that it was like dude it's bands like blink 182 and this other band i was commenting on it's like you know they drink all fucking night they don't practice they go on stage they can't play the riffs they can't fucking sing the bass player's fucking up the bass the drummer's fucking up and it's like this is fucking gross, man. And not only is it gross for me watching it right now, but you're literally hurting the entire fucking industry as a whole. Because, like, now people think, oh, it's just a live performance. You can't expect it to be good. Live performances suck. It's like, buddy, live performances used to be so fucking good right up until, like, somewhere in the 90s it became appropriate to just fucking bomb on stage and be like, well, our album sounds good. And it's like, dude, I feel like... That's a lot of the reason why we don't have rock and roll anymore. It's because of these fucking bands that came through and just fucking suck so hard live for so long that people just gave up on going to live shows. And if you don't have live shows, then you don't have, like, you don't get really get stoked to make the albums anymore. And, you know, even, like, a, a lot of local bands, I want to give them a pass because they're locals, but, like, these people play, they don't practice, 
They don't fucking put effort and passion into what they do, and then they say, oh, this this community sucks because nobody will come out to the fucking our shows. And it's like, buddy, you're the entertainer. You're the entertainer, man. It's your fucking job to entertain, and if you can't pull the audience, you ever hear that uh, stipulation or whatever, uh, the customer is always right? What that means is, it's not that if someone comes into your place of business and they argue like a fucking idiot that they're always correct. It's not what it means. What that means is, the person with the money who buys the ticket or the toaster or the fucking automobile or whatever, that's their money. And their choice to spend it or not spend it is always going to be correct regardless of what the fucking product is because their choice to spend the money is an endorsement or a fucking rejection of the product. That's what the customer's always right is, okay? So if fans aren't coming out to your shows, you can't blame the fans. You suck, okay? Try harder. I shouldn't... That's actually kind of mean, man, because you're probably not, like... You're, you're probably cool. Hey, you're doing good and everything. But, like, that's another thing, too, is, like, don't take failure. Like, if you go and you play a show and you bomb, just fucking... Keep playing shows, keep playing uh, whatever you do and practice and practice and practice and just put more fucking work and energy into it and eventually, man, people will see you and they'll fucking love you, man. But whatever you do, don't blame the fans or the people for not coming out, right? And uh, this sounds like a skelly sleuth. Hold up a second. Yeah, don't, don't, don't blame the fans because it's not the fans. You're providing a service and you need to recognize that and that's all I was trying to tell these people and this fucking YouTube comment chain went on for like 40 comments i got fucking pages from that comment chain for two years and i would just come in and be like and just make these people sound like fucking idiots without attacking them like you said attack the idea not the person and it's just like so much fun for me man when you get good at it because it's like i don't know i'm a writer as well i like to write so i like posting comments and shit and everything and it's just like dude i always have this saying everybody wants to fucking a cop oh, oh, ah. Ah. Uh, that was a headshot. I didn't know that headshots did more damage than regular shots. Good thing, though, that uh, Rare has actually patched the game significantly and loading back into your ship. This used to take, like, 15 minutes. Like, it was fucking god-awful, so was, you'd be in PvP and you'd get sunk. And you'd be like, come on, come on, come on, come on, get me off the boat, get me off the boat. You had to wait here. There'd be three guys waiting at this door all the time playing the accordion and shit. <laughs> but now it's super quick, man, so... You know, that's what I love about games these days is that they just, they're never done. And I know that like a lot of people hate that because it's like a game first comes out and there's nothing in it. But now it's like you come back to a game four years later and it's like, holy shit, there's so much shit going on here. So yeah, now I got to just fucking make sure I'm not, uh, not taking in the brine, buddy. Put some fucking wood on that, on that hull, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, we're good. Anyways, what was I talking about? Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, I think that was about it. I can't fucking remember. Some about those YouTube fucking comments. And people just come in there and they keep being like, well, I thought this was a good performance. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Your, your opinion's subjective. You can think it's a good performance, but objectively, it was a really bad performance. The fucking guitar player fucked up the only riff in the song that he has to play four times. The bass player was playing the wrong notes at three different places, and the drumming was sloppy. So I'm glad you liked it and I'm glad you enjoyed it, but like this really wasn't a good fucking, a really a good rendition of the song, man. And it's just funny that people like, I don't know what they come in there expecting. They just don't stop. Like they expect me to just go, you know what? You're right, man. You can play as shitty as you want and you'll be as famous as Led Zeppelin and Phil fucking studios. And you don't even have to like learn to tune your guitar, man. Like, that's fucking fine. It can be all out of tune. You don't even have to have all six strings on it, bro. And just play it with your toes, man. And just wear, like, your sweatpants. And that's all we want from an entertainer is zero effort and a total shit show. Like, that's what they expect me to fucking say. And also, too, I don't know why they even, like, they put me on a pedestal. I'm just some fucking YouTube commenter and they just get so uptight about the fact that I won't budge on my fucking opinion when it's like it's bro it's literally just one guy's opinion like they don't even know like that account isn't even linked to any of my music or anything so they don't have no other fucking idea of who I am or whatever it's like basically a joke name and they'll just argue with me for like a hundred hours and I'm just like <laughs> like you want to talk about dark rituals that's my dark rituals man as I start arguments on YouTube and then I like suck energy out of the people who argue with me but like I said, I do it in a way where there's there's nothing wrong with what I do. And in fact, people need to understand uh, 
that like people are allowed to have opinions and they're allowed to be passionate about stuff and they're allowed to post them online without having a bunch of people coming in there fucking saying like, oh, you must be fun at parties. You know, like that's fucking wrong. Like what I do isn't fucking wrong. Them coming in there and like just dropping fucking insults and shit on people where it's like, you know, what if I was actually a person who was like self-conscious about myself and maybe not in a good place? Or, like, you know, not as fucking strong emotionally as I am. And I had to read those comments just for fucking having an opinion about something that I'm perfectly, uh, fucking, perfectly allowed to have, man. So I like to do that because I feel like, I don't know, I'm standing up for, like, something I believe in, which is, like, we should be able to post on the internet without people coming in and just being like, Oh, you suck because you say something we don't say. It's like, well, deal with it, man. People have fucking different brains and different experience just because i'm saying something that they don't like which is like in this case was saying that like hey if you want fans to come to your show you gotta fucking put work in and practice and like led zeppelin used to fill stadiums and now fucking bands can't even fill like a hundred person fucking theater in a city because their live shows are fucking shit and like you know there's still bands that do good live sh shows and they fucking fill a fucking Big ass fucking stadiums. You want to talk about like Arcade Fire, Foo Fighters, uh, Qu Queens of the Stone Age. Talking about Queens of the Stone Age, they kind of suck live, but Hami also does a lot of drugs. He's one of those guys who just thinks that like the more drugs you do, the better the music will be. I'll just do more drugs, man. I'll just stay up. He said that he stayed up for nine days. Nine days fucking straight on drugs, which like for one, uh, the literal fucking record is 11 days, so I don't think that's true. Yeah, yeah, he said that. And, and two, that's not something to be proud of, and you shouldn't really even be talking about it, because that's fucking gross, man. Especially, you know, in his position, he probably fucking took sleeping pills at the end of it, and it's like, well, it's not really impressive if you're just taking drugs to stay awake, and then drugs to fall asleep, and drugs to do this, and drugs to do that, and like, I don't know if you've looked at him lately, but the guy literally, yeah, he literally looks like uh, a fucking ghoul. Stimmo Narnar says, quote unquote, sleep deprivation will make you a million. Is that something he said? I fucking don't know. But like, fuck, dude. Um, yeah, it's actually kind of just a meme, and a lot of people fucking, oh yeah, it's a lyric. Yeah, he, it's a fucking meme, like, and he bought into it hard. It's like, dude, doing drugs does not make you an artist. If anything, like, it's probably gonna get in the way of you being a better artist. So like, yeah, especially like fucking long term, man, because drugs are just they. They don't work. They don't work. You want to talk about gaining a tolerance? To oh, okay, I'm not even going to go down that road because pharmaceuticals are fucking great for people, man. And it's not even like it's not even like drugs or whatever. There was one guy who said like there are no bad drugs. There's just bad situations for certain drugs where it's like, you know, like if you're going to get surgery, for instance, morphine is fucking great. But if you're going to go for a f evening drive, no, morphine is not great. So, right, it's just about like, you know, situations and stuff and I personally believe that uh, doing drugs to try to find creativity is a fucking lost cause and like I was talking about Josh Homme his music has kind of just been going down and you take a look at him now dude he was married to that fucking girl from the distillers what's her fucking face she's a model she's fucking beautiful he's got two kids with her and now they're divorced and he looks like a fucking ghoul like a literal fucking crypt keeper ghoul, like eh, 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 hiding behind fucking graves and shit. And uh, she just like allegedly chases him around. He, she got a restraining order out against him because she hates him so much. But then she hates him so much that she also chases him around so that he'll get arrested because he can't keep up with the distance on the restraining order. And like all he had to do was stop doing so many drugs, and he can't because again. The problem too about doing drugs to do uh, to do art, and a lot of other people have talked about this. Um, you get caught into this pit where you feel you have to keep doing the drugs to be the artist, right? You feel like you can't be productive unless you do the drugs. So when the drugs start to tear your life apart, you can't quit them because you feel like you're useless without them. So you know, everybody's got to go make their own mistakes. I'm not a licensed therapist. Uh, or a guru or etc etc and whatever and this is all advice for the entertainment only etc etc um, blah 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 and you know I'm a little older and other people are young so do what you fucking want and everything take it with a grain of salt from a guy who's been around the block a couple times that's all, that's all I'm going to say but again this is one of those subjects where you, you post it in a YouTube comment and people will be like eh, eh.
drugs are fine, I want to do all of them all the time, and it'll be great, and it's like, okay, well, then go for it, whatever. But I think they give you brain damage, so ha ha ha, that's just my opinion, but then people can't fucking, they can't handle it, man. But hey, you know, maybe like a little bit of brain damage is sometimes what we need to get by as well. And your brain fucking grows back anyways, so. So I'm just gonna fucking change the subject, except for the fact that like I really miss like uh, Josh Homme being uh, not a fucking ghoul, not just being like this walking fucking crypt keeper, just looking like pale and sweaty in every picture you see of them. And then also too, they they were not good live. Nobody liked them live, and I've really they were Queens of the Stone Age was my favorite band for a great many number of years, and was a huge influence on my own music. It was one of the the bands that really. I didn't really know like what I wanted my music to sound like like as a teenager and in my 20s there I used to just like put out a ton of fucking different shit every song I released was of a different genre and then I got into Queens of the Stone Age and I was like you know what yeah this is something like I want to fucking make you know and I got big into it but it just broke my heart because you, you try to like you show that shit to people and they're like oh but they suck so hard live and I'm like yeah ooh but you know What's the point of being a rock star if you can't drink 21 beer every night? I don't know. I'm not there yet, man, so I don't want to fucking be a hypocrite. But I don't think I'll ever fucking be there. We'll see. Like, I, like I've written other places, I don't do... Uh, yeah, allegedly in Minecraft. Um, I, I don't like... I don't do live performances anymore, but it's just mostly because... Again, living in a small town and everybody here... They just like, they don't want to work at it at all. Like I played with one guy who wanted to play guitar for me and he didn't know how to tune his guitar and he was a friend of a friend. And it's like, you know, so that's why I was playing with him and shit. Cause he's, you know, you want to play with your friends and stuff, but it's like, bro, you need to learn how to tune your guitar. Like that's literally step one when you learn to play a guitar is you learn to tune it. And I had to like, then I started like tuning it for him. Like he was like a fucking child. And I thought he'd get embarrassed about it and learn himself because uh, of how, like if someone had to tune my guitar for me, I would just be mortified, dude. But then he just was like, just letting me tune his guitar. And eventually I had to be like, bro, just fuck off. Like you, if you don't get it by now, you will not get it. Like I brought it up with him. I was like, if you don't have the ear for it, then buy a tuner at least. Which to me, like, okay, tuners are great, but for one thing, they're not as accurate as the human ear. And I've tuned my guitars with tuners, and they're still not close enough. Especially because there's this little thing about the major, uh, major third, where like it'll buzz a bit because like I'm not gonna get into like the physics of music, but harmonies are like these fucking. Um, what do you call them? They're like fractions, okay? And so the more complicated the fraction is, the more buzz you're going to get, and the more clean the fraction is, like two-thirds or four-fifths, then the nicer the harmony's going to sound. And uh, the major fifth, when you tune, like, standard 12-tone music, you break that shit up into 12 tones so you can play in all 12 different keys and whatever. The major fifth is, like, one of the only notes that is not actually a real major fifth. So if you're playing rock and roll music and you want that major fifth to just sound like the fucking Rolling Stones and ring the fuck out, you gotta tune it a little flatter than what the tuner tells you to, okay? And so, like, if you don't learn with your ear, you're never gonna fucking be able to bring that enjoyment to your audience, all right? And, like, you can try to cheat at it, but, like, there's just... There's no tricks, there's no cheating. You just immerse yourself in it and you just fucking love doing it man and the way I learned to tune and you get an ear for, for it you just sit there with two strings and you pluck them and you tune them and you listen to the fucking back and forth back and forth you do that all day and hum to it if you want and just you know fucking smoke a little dube if that's what you're into and just fucking get into it you know have a beer or two it's all right just make it fun and enjoy it but uh you can't expect to fucking be in a band if you can't show up with a guitar that's tuned and your fucking uh band leader's got to tune your guitar every time like come on but that's the people that I fucking played with. I had one guy, I played in a two-piece, he was a drummer. He fucking thought that he was the head of the band. He told everybody he was the head of the band. He called me his, his guitarist. I thought it was a reference to Charlie Watts, the fucking uh, drummer for the Rolling Stones, because Charlie Watts had this thing. I don't know if you heard that, that joke about Charlie Watts where uh, Mick Jagger was like, called him one night it was like 9 30 whatever he's getting ready for bed and he's like you need to get down to the studio because i need my i need my drummer and then charlie watched fucking showered 
got dressed, went all the way down to the studio, and then punched Mick Jagger in the face, and he was like, I'm not your drummer, you're my vocalist, and go fuck yourself, and then he fucking left. So I thought it was like some sort of clever illusion of that, but no, this guy actually thought he was the band lead. He couldn't play a single one of our songs without me there. He never practiced. I lived in the same house as him. He didn't practice fucking once when I wasn't playing with them. And it's just like, yeah, it, so I don't do live music because I just haven't, haven't found, like, uh, you know, I played in a lot of groups, but I just walked away from all of them because I was just, I was too passionate and I was doing all the work and I was getting none of the credit. I am fine with doing all the work, but when I'm going to get none of the credit and then also, too, sometimes people are going to be fucking dickheads to you about it, then uh, I'm just not into it, man. What am I going to stick around for that for? Absolutely not. So I just enjoy fucking doing that shit. But, you know, sometimes if I could really, like, like I was saying, if I could hire some people or whatever, so then it was uh, an employer-employee basis, and I could crack the whip and they could fucking actually practice and sound the way they need to sound. Dude, I'd love to do live music again. Uh, Stimbo Narnar says, I don't really like going to big shows anyways. It makes me uneasy to be around that many people. What if it all goes horribly wrong? Mob mentality and all. Dude, yeah, that's, like, part of the fun, though. I'm talking about being an adrenaline junkie, sailing around these seas with 90 pieces of cargo on my ship. I've liked the fucking, the big, I don't know, man, it's weird, because I'm, I'm a person that, like, I've had a lot of anxiety in my life over a lot of shit, and for some reason, big crowds, I lose my anxiety, because if I'm in the crowd, it's like you fucking blend in or something man I don't know I just feel like a part of like a big group and so I lose my anxiety and then if you're playing for a big crowd to me it's almost like the bigger the crowd the less anxiety you have because it's like uh, you feel legit right it's like if you're playing a crowd and only three people show up then it's like oh fuck it's tough not to feel like a dork and still give a good show sometimes but if you're playing for like a hundred people or something then it's like yeah cool I look like a rock star so let's put on the best show possible right but I hear that, because, like, that whole thing about, like, mob mentality, dude. Like, um, you've ever seen that shit with Bill Burr, uh, the comedian, where he's, like, at that Philadelphia thing, and he's just, like, fucking ragging on the crowd because they were booing him? And it's like, dude, if you're a performer... Like, I don't worry about that as a musician, but if I ever did, like, stand-up comedy or something... Stimbo Narnar says, oh, man, did you watch Woodstock 99? I think there are a couple documentaries. Yeah, I saw the one on Netflix. We can talk about that in a second. I recommend anybody who wants to see a shit show watch that. That is fucking good documentary in an unbelievable situation. And that's, like, a good example of it, man, is because, like, you get a big fucking festival crowd like that, and uh, it could turn into literally a fucking riot. Like, literally a riot. Like one of the worst fucking situations possible in terms of like total destruction and, and like lawlessness and just a frightening situation to be in where people are just running around attacking shit oh dude uh stimbo narnar says fred durst did not give a fuck haha ha. yeah i feel like he should have been charged but also too after watching like the whole thing who gives a fuck about fred durst because the people who put that shit on were fucking idiots like, it was their fault entirely. Like, there was no uh, clean water. Uh, just, oh, God, man. That whole fucking thing. <laughs> Even the fact they had it at, like, an Air Force base where it was just all concrete. Like, the whole thing was, like... Because, like, festivals and music and entertainment, it's all about vibes, dude. So if you bring people into a place where the vibes are all, like, militaristic and fucking, like, totalitarian fucking, like, uh, you know, whatever, and then you invite, like the Limp Biscuit fans and the fucking, uh, I think Slipknot probably played and all those people who are like against that kind of shit anyways and they're violent fucking people. It's like they're all, as soon as they show up, they're going to start thinking about like knocking some shit down, man. Like those are not the kind of people who are, who are down with military authority, especially not at coming to like, oh, it's a Woodstock concert. Stimbo Narnar says, uh, I mean, he's an asshole. Where'd I go? Yeah, how can you expect Fred Durst not to be Fred Durst? Totally on the organizers. I mean, he's an asshole, but it's no mystery. Yeah, one of the fucking guys, because uh, it's in that documentary, he was, um, he was like the only younger guy in the organizers. He was like, you know, in his early 20s, and he's sitting there as they're booking the bands, and he's like trying to tell them, he's like, do you have any fucking idea, like, what kind of a crowd you're going to get booking, like, Limp Biscuit and Metallica and Slipknot and fucking, uh, Dude, did I, ICP didn't fucking play, but, like, who the fuck played somebody like that, dude? They fucking invited 
the most riotous fucking crowd. And they just did not listen. People were telling him, like, the one guy, he's like, dude, you gotta understand what kind of a show you're putting together here. Like, you're basically creating a fucking powder keg. And yeah, they just ignored it. They whatever. And yeah, no water, no shelter from the sun. Uh, no security. The security was all fucking, um, like, just kids. Kids in their, in their teens and 20s that they were just like, oh, yeah, I'll pay you for the day. The garbage cleanup guys didn't fucking clean up. Yeah, red hot chili peppers. Simonarner says, yeah, I was one of them. Um, the garbage guys didn't fucking do anything. Yeah, Creed was another one. Talking about Woodstock 99 here. Um, the fucking, the garbage pickers, like, nobody fucking did what they were supposed to do, man. And they just had, like, it was a lot of ignorance on the fucking... Oh, corn! That was the fucking one I was trying to, trying to fucking, uh, remember. Yeah, corn, dude. Good fucking God, man. You invite corn, and everybody who loves corn to a fucking Woodstock 99, it's like, dude, you, like, you better give him water, at least. <laughs> like, fuck me, man. Such a fucking shit show. But hey, it made for a killer documentary, man. I love that. Watch that whole fucking thing. I was surprised to hear that only, uh, I think two people died only. By the looks of it, you would think, like, dude, seeing that crowd in the hot sun, how they're all packed in there, in the mosh pit and shit, dude, I know what you mean about, like, big crowds being anxiety-inducing, because, like, that shit. Uh, yeah, they lit the place on fire. Uh, that was because Red Hot Chili Peppers, and they just, they fucking played, uh, there was one fire, and then they played fucking, um, what the hell did they play? Light My Fire by Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised it wasn't worse. Absolutely, man, because I heard, after seeing the documentary by the end, you think, like, dude, at least a dozen people must have fucking died. Like, that's completely insane. Then it's like, no, only two people. And one was from Heat Stroke, and the other, I think, got hit by a fucking truck or something on the way out. So it was, like, probably a drunk driving incident or something. But you would think... Like, that's the weird thing about crowds, man, is it seems like such a totally fucking uncontrollable situation, right? But then... Everybody's kind of just, like, looking out for themselves as well. So people are pretty good at, like, you know, identifying danger and, like, just staying out of fucking harm's way and, and not putting themselves in a situation that they shouldn't be in. Except, dude, I swear to God, seeing that fucking crowd, like, the people, like, that crowd was, like, fucking, I don't know, what the hell, 50,000 or 100,000 or something, and it was, like, they were packed like sardines, dude. I thought, like, and they said it was 36 degree heat, so I thought it, like, if it wasn't gonna be heat stroke, then it was gonna be fucking something, dude. Like, trampling death or fucking whatever the hell. I don't know. But yeah, only two people died, so. Woodstock 99. They should do it again. Could you imagine fucking Woodstock 23? That would probably just be like fucking. I don't even know what. I feel like. I didn't properly load cargo at the last stop, but yeah, we'll see what's going on. Okay, where am I? Moro's Peak. Spices is what we're selling. Buying minerals and everything else. See what I mean? Though, by how it's, uh... Yeah, I'll talk about Bill Burr in a second. About having shit organized, man. It's so fucking great. It's so great. Non-organics on the left. No, non-organics on the right. Organics on the left, and then you do them from sim simple to complex. And it's just, like, so easy. I watch a lot of, like, because I've watched a lot of streamers, man. And a lot of the running jokes with a lot of these guys I watch is that it's just like, oh, we're going to be fucking as unorganized as possible. And it's, like, funny the first time you see it. And then after watching, like, 100 hours of their streams, you're just like, bro, you're just looking for, like, a fucking burger in the corner of your base under a pallet that you hucked there and it's taking 10 minutes and it's like, oh, it's kind of uncomfortable. But yeah, so Bill Burr, I don't know if you saw that um, that Philadelphia thing where like it was supposed to be a, a comedian thing at Philadelphia, uh, wherever the fuck. And um, they were just heckling and booing every comedian that went on there, right? So then Bill Burr, it got to be his time and he went up there and he just tore into them. He was saying shit like, what the fuck do you guys know? You have a statue of fucking Rocky Balboa as the hero of your fucking city. Like, he's not even a real person. He's a fictional fucking guy and you have a statue of him as if he's like 
the fucking George Washington or some shit, just saying shit like that. And it turned out it worked really good, and he won the crowd over, and everybody ended up liking it a lot and cheering and stuff. But then you fucking listen to him talk about it afterwards, and he's like, yeah, that was one of the most terrifying experiences of his life. Because, like, you know, you go and you do a live performance, and that's always a fucking fear, dude, that if you don't entertain the crowd, it can turn into a fucking riot. And then, like, you're pretty much responsible for everything that that crowd does, man. Because if you don't please the crowd, dude, you know, you get a fucking thousand people, and suddenly they start hucking rocks at you and booing, and then, you know, it, it's not even that part. It's like, fucking then what do they do? They start tearing the place up. So yeah, yeah, that's always a fucking big fear, but I never really thought about that, but I never, I've never played like big crowds anyways. Biggest crowd I've probably done is like 150 people or whatever. At some fucking out and about wherever. Which is fun, that's this that. Will be a fine town one day. All right, fuck yeah. I'm gonna check what the fuck I've pulled in so far. I haven't even been looking at the money, man. We've just been talking about shit. That's another thing too, is like if you wanna if you wanna grind shit too and do um really anything, like you know, if you wanna fucking go to the gym and get in shape, just learn how to uh learn how to enjoy the moment. Don't focus on the goals, right? It's like if I'm grinding out these commodities, don't like I don't stare at my money and, and whatever and think about that shit. I just like uh the Stimbo Narner says that happened with the doors, didn't it? And like, yeah, that's a funny story because didn't Jim Morrison, he, uh, what's the word? He exposed himself to the crowd and he ended up doing jail time. And then uh, he later fucking got out of jail and said that it wasn't real. He said he used a prosthetic or something, but like, Get bro, I don't think Jim goes. Morrison fucking doesn't seem like the kind of guy to bring a prosthetic to a show and then whip it out acting like he's exposing himself to the crowd. That seems less like Jim Morrison than him just whipping it out and getting arrested for it. Uh, Stimbo Narnar says, uh, the Hollywood Bowl, 68 July 5th, I think. It's not even clearer that he did. Yeah, so I guess it's not... It wasn't like... I don't fucking know. I don't know if there's any video of it or what. It's all alleged. It wasn't like, you know, they didn't have iPhones and shit back then. So I'm not sure, but I, uh, I'm i not really sure. I kind of feel that like he probably fucking did because it's Jim Morrison. And he's kind of like that sort of fucking guy to just take things too far and get caught up in the moment, I think. Like, I don't know, never knew him personally. But uh, just listening to his music and reading his lyrics and shit, he seems like the kind of character that probably would. You know, because he was a real character. But then also, too, right, he talked about that kind of shit. Uh, he was a real fucking, real smart guy, man, when it came to, like, philosophy and stuff. Talking about uh, people wearing masks and all that kind of shit. So who knows? Maybe that, that was just one of his masks that he wore to entertain people. Jim Morrison's particularly interesting uh, to me as well because, like... With a lot of old uh, rock stars, movie stars, like Charlton Heston and everybody, the style right up until I don't know when it changed was that you'd never have a picture of you smiling, ever, right? It'd always be like... And then you see pictures of these guys smiling, and it's like a totally fucking different person. So, like, you see Jim Morrison in, like, his elbow shots and his... Ah, uh, sorry album shots and his publicity shots and shit it's one thing but then like if you look up Jim Morrison smiling and it's like oh he's a real person like looks like a totally fucking different dude and you get a totally different energy from him so yeah Simbo Narnar says the cops caused the riot no I'll back up here one of the cops cousins testified no one else saw it. yeah 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 the cops caused the riot in part but the show was going downhill I think because he was not doing well at the time uh, he predicted electronic music and DJs. Yeah, he probably wasn't doing well at the time, because, like, what was he, like, uh, just hammered fucking drunk? I heard that shit, um, where what the hell, man? Sometimes he'd just be too fucking drunk to play or whatever, and then the, the keyboardist would just do the vocals and play the keys, and then just play without him. Because I guess uh, most of the Doors was the fucking the keyboard player. But anyways, I fucking love Jim Morrison. I love his vocal style. That was a fucking big ass inspiration for me, man, when I finally, like, I finally stopped and I was, like, you know, talking about having to, as a musician, you know, eventually you gotta 
pick a genre and a style, right? I used to release shit that every song sounded completely different. And then I was like, nah, I gotta release, like, you know, I gotta, I gotta grow up here, man. I gotta fucking put some songs together that are actually all of one style. And then that was like, I was like, you know, what do you want to sound like? And I was like, yeah, I want to sound like fucking Jim Morrison. And then I wrote that shit and then people were like, yo, you sound like Jim Morrison. And I was like, nice. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, you know, everybody's got a different voice, but I can get into that too. Uh, the only thing that like when it comes to music that I won't talk about is my recording and my production like my mixing and shit because that shit's like trade secrets as far as i'm concerned and i won't talk about that until i'm fucking old and gray and writing like memoirs and shit and, and whatever um then i'll fucking i'll talk about that stuff more but i'm totally down like talking about like like singing singing styles how to write like larry larry your music and whatever and blah 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 and um yeah stimbo narnar says uh yeah jim morrison was Fucking with the crowd and insulting him. Yeah, I believe that. That's why I believe, like, he fucking... Yeah, because didn't he, didn't he, like... That's what I remember, man. Um... Oh, okay, yeah. Stimbo Narno says, but in a way that most probably didn't realize, he was realizing what a performer was, bread and circuses. Yeah, man, that's the thing, is it's like... Whether it's good or whether it's bad, you're just there to bring entertainment to other people, man. It's entertainment. It's not about, like, uh changing the world dude if you want to change the world then uh, get into law and get into politics and stuff and start some community groups and blah 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 and whatever because uh you know i don't think that that's like eh, whatever that's that i mean you know it certainly can change the world with music but um you're talking about the fbi and the cia and that shit uh they got a fucking they got a lockdown on that i mean you're not going to be starting any fucking political movements man and rightfully so you're just an entertainer and that's that. So I never, like, getting into entertainment, I never have any fucking, um... I know what it's about, man. Bread and circuses, and I'm down with it. Because I just want to, like, you know, bring a little fucking bit of joy to people's lives. And maybe, like, you know, with here, with the Twitch thing, I kind of want to build, like, you know, an entertaining community where people can come. And I got those fucking chat rules that it's like, you can break the rules, man. It's fine, but... I think that it's going to be a better community if you can try to stay away from it unless it's like, you know, current events, everybody likes to talk about that shit, but a lot of those things are in the rules, it's just like people get burnt out on that shit, especially especially me, because, you know, I go out and I hang out with people and I talk to, to strangers and stuff, and that just seems to be like, dude, those nine fucking topics are the only thing people can talk about, and I want to talk about, like, something else that people are passionate about, even if it's just like... Like, one of the things in the suggestions there, it's like, dude, I just want to hear about people, like, just talk about your work. Even if you flip burgers, I'm I'm super interested in that shit, and people don't think that that's interesting, because, like, if you do it every day, you might not think that what you do is interesting, but other people don't do it, and it's interesting to, to us, man, you know? Stibbo Narnar says he was realizing the futility of it because that's what he thought he could do, and it was hard for him to accept that he couldn't change the world that way, I think. Live at the Hollywood Bowl, man. You can hear it fall apart. It's a beautiful tragedy. Yeah, so there's an audio recording of it, and that's what I remember, because he was saying, like, oh, do you want to see it? Is that what you guys want? Do you want to fucking see it? Right? And then it's like, okay, did he actually whip it out or not? So it's like, dude, whether he did or he didn't, I feel like that... I should have been below deck, boys. I should have been below deck. I should have been below deck. I was talking about this before. Going through the volcanoes is fine, unless you get smoked by a fireball and it kills you, because now my boat is taking water and I have to spawn in. So this might be the fucking, uh, this might be the end of this run, man. But like, I've been going for five hours anyway, so we'll see if I can keep her afloat. Uh, if I can't, man, I don't know. I, I'm fucking, I'm still down to hang out here and talk, so I might just pop another emissary and start running them again for another hour or two till I completely lose steam but maybe as well if my ship it hit me in the back so i might not be taking water too hard here oh yeah we're fucking fine man we got the old luck of the sea Oi -te -toy. not the problem not the problem my book it's on fire and all my clothes are burning as well but it's good it's good you guys ever see uh jack septic guy um he's irish and one of the things that uh, I've always wanted to discuss is that, like, his name, like, Septic Eye, basically just means butthole, right? So, like, his name is Jack Butthole. And I feel that nobody 
brings that up. Like nobody's ever nobody's ever talked about that. Like he's just like a mainstream YouTuber and his name is Jack Buck. I don't know. Good on him, I guess. I mean it's pretty fucking funny. He's a he's a fucking I like his content. Um you know. I don't I don't watch it all the time. He's not one of my fucking you know, my top three or whatever, but But I've actually just never really like watched a lot of his stuff. I think he's, he's like, you know, I actually really don't know much about him. I only saw him because I used to watch like PewDiePie videos for a couple months there where PewDiePie was being like all mature and cool. And then he started doing like weird shit, weird shit that I couldn't excuse. And people were saying he was doing weird shit. And I was like, no, he's just, that's a coincidence. And I was like, okay, fuck this guy. I cannot, I cannot fucking pretend that he's not doing weird shit anymore. So I stopped watching his videos. And he did a couple of crossovers with Jacksepticeye. It was like pretty funny, but it's not, like, not as funny as like I like the uh, fucking Vine Sauce streamers like Joel and Vinny. They're fucking cool. Big into their comment content rather. That's kind of what got me into it. Is I I was searching for Doom 2 videos on YouTube and uh, Vark Skeletor, his shit came up. And then I was like, who the fuck is this guy? And I just was watching his shit. And then I've been watching like hundreds of hours of it ever since. And I don't even fucking know why, man. Streaming is so weird. It's like sometimes you don't even know like what the entertainment value of something is, but it's just like, it's just nice to get the fuck away from it. How many of these fucking fireballs am I gonna have to get hit by, man? This is almost gonna be a highlight right here. Man gets fucking hit by three fireballs in a row while bailing water from his ship, talking about Jack Butthole. Holy fucking shit. This never happens, man. I sail through these so often, and usually you do not get hit by them, even once. But it's a good thing I'm under deck now. Chewie, I know you're the captain. I'm doing the best I fucking can, okay? You pay me fairly. I appreciate your feedback. Have some chicken. Calm down. Have some chicken. Have some chicken. Eat the chicken, Chewy. Chew on the chicken, buddy. Chew on the chicken. Chew on it. Put it in your mouth. Ah, he's not hungry. He's freaking out too much, man. <laughs> Stimbo Narnar says, come on, baby, light my Spanish caravan. Yeah, come on, baby, light my sloop. It's fucking insane. But hey, I spent a lot of time in the devil's door, man. This is my fucking bread and butter. As once again, you can see by my incredible cosmetics. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, this is, this is where I like to chill. I used to, uh, oh, fucking, fucking hell. Now everybody thinks I'm an idiot, because I threw water into the boat instead of out of it. That's it, the fucking stream's over. No, I'm, I'm fine with it, I'm fine with it. Um, come on, buddy. Come on, Chewy. Yeah, now these commodity runs are out, I just make more money doing this, and it's more fun. Y you run into more people trying to chase you and shit. Yeah. He's fine. So, uh, what the fuck were we talking about before I got annihilated there, man? I don't even remember something about that fucking Jim Morrison at the Hollywood Bowl. Was that like, uh, they kept going after that, right? They didn't break up because of that? I mean, I guess they, no, I guess they broke up because he died. 27 Club. I got a, a poster of all those dudes and, uh, the dudette, one dudette there. But, um... But yeah, shit. Shit, man. It sucks, too, because I liked a lot of their later stuff, too. The Doors. The Bearded Era, when they all grew beards. Something about a beard that just makes music sound better, man. Stimbo Narnar says, not sure if it was the last show, but it was one of the last, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yep, probably. That shit's crazy, man. Speaking of crazy, I wonder what fucking Kanye's up to. I was gonna say, like, we don't really have rock stars anymore. He's, like, the closest thing. He always calls himself a rock star, but, like, uh... I mean, I don't know. I guess I could speak freely about it now because he's been outed as like a total fucking lunatic, so I'm not gonna like offend anybody. <laughs> there was a lot of Kanye fans 
in the past where, you know, saying some things about him might alienate a lot of evil and uh, maybe I don't want to go down that road, but uh, the man is like a talentless hack. You know, I don't know. You, you ever see him try to play an instrument or sing? He's tried to a couple times on stage and it was like watching your fucking seven-year-old cousin's first first time playing a guitar when he gets it for Christmas. Like, that's what it was like. It was just, like, so fucking bad. And then his ego was just, like, through the moon. So, yeah. I hear the last thing I hear about him. Simo Narnar says, I'm not going to leave, but I love Kanye. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, no comment. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I know he's got... I've heard some of his tracks, but I can't... Oh, 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 this is the wrong direction. Man yaks about Kanye and sails into the Blood Sea. It's all good. I was like, what's that ominous music? Okay. Petting is good. Yeah, so uh, this is the edge of the map. This is what I get for going for fucking past my bedtime, buddy. Come on, come on, come on. We got this shit, Chewy. You keep just being the best little fucking Shibu captain in existence, man. I hope he doesn't fire me. I also hope my heading's good. Where the fuck are the islands? Where are the islands? Where are the islands? It's all good. Straight to see again. So, as I have now proven, yeah. I used to run Reaper ships. I'm not like one of those professional pirates or anything. But I know how to fucking shovel water. This is the fucking Kanye curse. I'm never bringing him up again. Timbo Narnar says, yeah, ha, ha. He said his biggest regret is that he will never get to see himself perform. See, this is what I'm talking about, man. Like, some of that shit, like, it, it's funny and it is entertaining because we like larger-than-life characters and there's something about a narcissist which is just like, I don't know, it's fucking funny, man. I love watching that shit. But the thing about Kanye is when it was like, we all found out, it's like, oh, oh, he's like completely serious. Ugh. You know? I don't know. And then, you know, the whole Balenciaga thing, and he's wearing a hood on his head. He's doing a bunch of weird shit, too. It's like, whatever. Last I heard is he was, uh, he's like avoiding a court summons. So we might never see him again. He might just disappear into the ether. Sail off into the fucking blood seas like I just did. Holy fuck, that was stupid. <laughs> Holy fucking shit, man. Okay, but, uh, you know, this is where uh, I was going to buy a slide whistle, and I could play a slide whistle and go like, pew, but uh, I didn't prepare well enough for that stream, and I'm not going to fucking blow the trumpet because it's like uh, quarter to two o'clock in the morning here, you know, so. <laughs> Um, that's fucking Galleon's Grave straight ahead. Or where the fuck even am I? I gotta check my, my fucking heading now. Stimbo Narnar says, 
Okay, so 68 was where it all started to go downhill for the doors, in my opinion. March 1st, 1969 is where he exposed himself, and it really went off the rails. Yeah. You gotta wonder, too, if, like, um, you know, I don't know the exact details surrounding his death. Uh, I know Hendrix. Um, I can't remember what the hell Jim Morrison was. I think he just choked on his own vomit. Pro Excuse me, probably, right? But anyways, the point being is that I feel like... I don't know. He was just in a bad state mentally. And yes, Timbo Narno says, I think it was the CIA. And honestly, it could have been. Um, and I don't even like, you know... How do I put this? I have a very, like, practical, realist way of looking at things, and it's like... I don't think the CIA should go killing rock stars, but I also think that as a rock star, you need to, like, respect the planet you live on enough that the CIA isn't gonna want to kill you, right? So <laughs> it's kind of a weird centrist position that I take on that, you know? Yeah, he died in the bath. I think he, he probably choked on his own vomit. Um, from drinking too much, is, that's how that happens. If you drink too much and then you fall asleep on your back, uh, you will puke in your sleep and you can choke on it. And that's why if any of your friends ever drinks too much, always put them on their side. It's called the recovery position. I had a, I saw a friend, we rolled him onto his side and he's on the bathroom floor. And yeah, man, he fucking was completely out unconscious and he fucking puked. It's just like onto the floor and we were all we we're all younger than I am now so we thought it was quite funny and we were also of course you know, drinking ourselves so it was like haha he just about died the rock star way but good thing we're all fucking well educated people and put him on his side and everything so yeah um yeah it's interesting man I mean with Hendrix too like Hendrix his, his deal was he snorted a line of uh, a line of heroin because he thought that it was cocaine and then you cannot do that so he just immediately died from that. But again, there's a lot of weird things that were going on with Hendrix, man, that people speculate that maybe maybe he was killed by the CIA as well. Like, I don't know. <laughs> you think the CIA would have better things to do? But I, I believe that less than with Morrison, just because, like, Hendrix was pretty fucking chill, man. Like, he didn't, he wasn't rocking the boat. Like, you know, he wasn't, like, trying to start riots at his shows and being all disillusioned with shit. He just fucking loved playing the guitar. He didn't really have anything controversial to say. None of his songs were political and and blah, blah, fucking blah, man. So I kind of just think that was an accident because it's one of those things where I guess... I guess actually they don't look the same. I'm not really sure. I'm not that that big into that fucking scene to tell you, but that's what I heard anyways. Is it was some sort of white powder that he thought was a different kind of white powder, and then he snorted it when you're not supposed to snort it. But uh, this is your captain speaking. We've stopped at Galleon's Grave. I'll be selling minerals and once again buying everything. Sorry for the turbulence in the Blood Sea. Yes, Chewy, I know. I didn't do well. I'm the best helmsman that you can afford, so just chill, bro. Just chill out. I'll give you some more pork chops. And, uh, wait, did I say minerals? Dude, I got fucking, st I got streamer brain big time at this point. I'll be lucky if I'm gonna fucking spot a sloop that is, uh, like right rolling up on my ass this very miss minute, very moment. Nope. Would've been good comedic timing though, man. Would've made for a good joke, good highlight. Sloops are never there when you need them. All right, so Stippo Narnar says, the official cause of death from Morrison was heart failure, no vomit, no autopsy either, according to Wikipedia. Oh. Okay, then. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you about that one. Like I said, that's probably... Probably more fucking... More whatever. Maybe he just, like, wanted to... Like, his soul just left his body. He's just like, peace. But, uh, who knows. I'm surprised that that didn't happen to Johnny Cash. You want to talk about heart 
failure. Or fucking, uh, the guy from Motorhead, Lemmy. Did you know that the name Motorhead is literally what they called, uh, fucking meth heads in the UK, is a Motorhead. That's what the band was named after. So there you go. It kind of like, I don't know, I, I fucking, um, I love him, man. I love Lemmy, I love Motorhead, but like, that kind of like diminished the band a bit for me, because I was like, oh, so you guys got to do fucking speed to write speedy music? Like, that's not actually very cool at all. <laughs> I don't know. That's just me, man. I'm like basically fucking Mr. Rogers these days. I'm an advocate for like, or like Hank Hill, you know? But like I said, everybody's got to go fucking... Don't do that shit, but... Everybody's got to learn their own way doing whatever they do. I'm not going to be like hitting people with a police baton. But I will say, all those people that fucking uh, did that kind of shit, man, I do not hang out with them. And it's it's not even just because like they're just doing the shit, it's because the fucking, it affects who they are, and it affects their behavior, and they just fucking, they're really fun to be around anymore. So, that's that. And if you're one of those people and you're watching this stream, and I know you, I fucking love you, buddy, but like, seriously, fucking clean yourself up. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with saying it. But yeah, I'm at the point uh, where it's just like, like that Hank Hill quote where it's like, why would anybody do drugs when you could just mow a lawn? And it's fucking true, dude. Go fix a fence. It feels good. Like, really fucking good. Like, really fucking good, actually. So, you know, that's that. Stimbo Narnar says, yeah, it's hard for a lot of people to just be themselves. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that, absolutely. Yep. I mean, what even is, like, you know, we all think about what even is, like, you know, not to start another spiraling philosophical discussion of, like, whoa, dude, like, what even is toast, man? But, like, who are we, man, as people, like, you know? Are you, are you you? Are you you after three beers? Are you you after a joint? Are you you on a good day? Are you on a bad day? Like, what does it even mean? I struggle a lot with identity, and I think that, like, the whole planet right now, everybody's really struggling with identity. You know? I'm trying to come to terms with, like, what defines you as a person, and can you define yourself, and blah, 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 and whatever, and... Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just an, a fucking ongoing thing, forever and always and always will be, and people should just learn, like, again, not a licensed therapist, not a guru or whatever, but, uh, just be comfortable, just with whatever it is you are, just learn to be comfortable with it, man. You know, you're, you are the only person that you'll always have to fucking be around, so you gotta learn to, uh, to be tolerant of yourself and to fucking accept yourself for all your flaws and to understand that like you know we all have flaws i got them for sure but those flaws don't mean that you can't be happy i think that's the the one thing that people um they trip over they they get obsessed with their flaws thinking that they won't be able to have happiness because they aren't perfect but the truth is is that like dude we all can be happy with uh with our lives just being who we are i truly believe that that no matter who you are and what you're born with and what you got, you fucking can be happy. And like, um, I'll talk about like Kierkegaard and absurdism and some shit someday, some other time or whatever. But it's just all about finding something that makes you happy, man. And, and not worrying about whether or not that makes other people happy. Um, in terms of like, not like, you know, I'm saying like, okay, if, if it makes you happy to go run around and fucking slap people in the face, well, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is like, if it makes you happy to just sit down by the water and just watch the water go by, don't worry about whether or not that makes everybody happy. Like, don't look for happiness for others. Just look for what makes you happy, man. And that's what's called, uh, you know, finding a subjective truth instead of an objective truth.
and you just fucking stick with that and you run with it, man. Find something that makes you passionate and don't worry about other people judging you for being happy. Because that happens a lot, right? Is where it's like, you know, I was trying to show people about streaming and shit because I'm getting into this and it's, uh, it's like a streamer ghost flew up my fucking ass, man. And I just want to just stream all the fucking time now after I did a couple of test streams. And I try to explain this to people and they'll be like, you know... I don't really get it, and I don't know what you're trying to do here, and blah, 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 and like, I'm at a point now in my life where I've realized that you just can't let those kinds of comments and those kinds of opinions from people, as hard as it is, don't let that affect you, because it's really easy to think like, oh, well, if this doesn't make other people happy, then why does it make me happy? But you gotta just like, you gotta just fucking stay true to your own heart, man, and just follow it, sail it into those fucking blood seas and be like, what the fuck am I doing, man? Uh, but it all works out in the end, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna end up in the in the blood seas sometimes, but that's life, and you just gotta fucking scramble, and you're gonna struggle sometimes, and you're gonna fucking yell at, at I would never yell at you, Chewy. You are my favorite dog. I mean, Captain, who is also a dog, but that's not, I mean, I don't, I'm not friends with you because you're a dog. It's not like that. It's not like, you know, I'm friends with dogs. I don't tell, you know, like, I don't keep you around because you're like the token dog or anything, Chewy, but you're just so beautiful. I just want you to know that. Here. Yeah, here. I have a fuck. Oh, 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 I have offended him. I have offended him. He doesn't like the fucking bananas. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Are we good? We're good. We're just playing? We're just playing? Yeah, we're just playing. We're just playing. Where are we at and what am I doing? We're at Galleon's Grave. I know that because I love this dock. This is one of my favorite docks in the whole fucking game. You can pull right up to the drive through You don't have to use that stupid little speaker box like a fucking dagger tooth. I'm selling minerals and I'm buying everything. Okay. Yeah, Stimbo Narnar says fuck them if they can't take a joke. Yeah, exactly. 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 But, uh, you know, whatever. People are going to get offended, too. Another thing I've been learning, too, man, is I used to be caught up in this whole thing about always being super polite to everybody I know and just being agreeable and shit. And I've realized that, like, you know, sometimes true friendship and even just talking to strangers, man, it's like you can kind of get into a little bit of an argument. You don't always have to be polite and shit. But the important thing is, is, like, when it's done is to, like, be the bigger man and to fucking apologize or sometimes ask for an apology if you feel offended. And then, like... You know, it brings you closer together with the people that you know. And you feel more comfortable um, being around those people because you know that it's like, hey, it's no big deal, man. Like, you can fucking say some shit that'll get on my nerves and it's all cool. We can just fucking, you know, just apologize for being fucking idiots because we're not perfect all the time. And you just move on with their lives, you know, and you fucking have some more good times. I feel when you just become, well, me speaking specifically, like, and I get caught too much in, in, uh, like I said, always trying to be agreeable and never disagreeing with people and always being polite and shit and whatever. It's like, yeah, people fucking... I'm not gonna lie, dude. If you can be the most agreeable person ever and be polite and know how to, like, walk through the minefields of social interaction and never offend anybody, you will have a million fucking friends. But here's the thing about it, is you will hate every single one of them because you don't get to truly be yourself around them. So, like, yeah... That's my fucking advice, dude. If you really want to win a popularity contest, that's the road to road to go down is, yeah, learn how to be polite and agreeable and everything. But then once you learn how to be polite and agreeable, then you should really start learning how to just be yourself as well and just have people accept you for who you are and learn that you can, you know, fucking sometimes have a big old disagreement and, and fucking not lose your shit over it. Like, I think we needed a paradigm shift as, like, a change in the entirety of the world, man. I was talking to an, another friend of mine about that. Where I was telling him, like, you know, I think everybody's really just too uptight about, like, about, you know, not being offended by your friends and, and everybody fucking with. And I think that we should be, you know, as a society, more able to, like, as a society and also, too, like, to have strong, strong friendships. You should be able to fucking, uh, you know, shoot the fucking shit and say some stupid shit and not have to worry about people jumping down your throat about it because when they do you can say like oh hey you're right actually i was being a total fucking idiot and i wasn't thinking about what i was saying sorry for saying that and then it's all good it's just water under the bridge or as we in canada like to say a water under the fridge because uh we watch a lot of trailer park boys and that shit's fucking hilarious so yeah again you know not a guru not a licensed therapist not a not a fucking this or that but I do like I put a lot of a lot of effort into trying to like 
enjoy life, you know? So I've, like, fucking put a lot of thought into things. I've, like, just sat down by the fucking beach, just stared into the water and watched the fish jump for, like, three hours and been like, what even is toast? Like, it's just bread, but it, it, it turns brown, and then it's different. I'm not saying that makes me better than anybody else, but maybe I got some ideas that I can throw out there. It certainly helped me feel like a lot better in my own situations. Especially about toast. Here's the thing about fucking toast, okay? When you put that toast in the toaster, don't take your fucking eyes off it. We live in a society of absolute convenience, and you want to have a toaster where you can just set the fucking toast to like uh perfect we'll just set it to three boys and it'll it'll come out at three the toast will come out at three every fucking time and then what happens you take the toast out and it's fucking burnt if you're making toast man you put that toast in and like you're good for the first like 30 seconds or something but near the end of it the difference between perfect toast and completely fucking burnt toast is only about a good 15 seconds so just lean over that toaster a bit and just watch it watch it up, the whole fucking time and then you'll see it when it's perfectly brown and then you hit the fucking toast thing and the toast comes up and it's perfect you put the butter on it and then it's like yeah it's good that's what I've learned about toast in my life sail back later because I've eaten a lot of toast man if you know what I mean does anybody know what I mean by that I've eaten a lot of toast I'm not gonna get into it but if you eat a lot of toast you might know what I'm talking about <laughs> All right, let's fix this up. Get over to Dagger Tooth. I can fucking bitch about Dagger Tooth some more, like I do every fucking time I go there, because it's the worst dock ever. As I was saying earlier, when they had that big vote to blow up uh, Golden Sands or save it, uh, I wanted to blow up Dagger Tooth, and I still fucking do. And I don't just want to like blow it up, man. Well, actually, you know what? In all seriousness, I just want him to change the fucking dock. Is that still that same Skelly Sloop? Nope, that's a real salute. That might even be a brick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fucking raise the shit up. I'm gonna get up into the old crow's nest. I'm gonna take a close look. I'm gonna see what kind of mustache that this guy has equipped. And that'll fucking tell us whether he'll be hostile or not. Or it could be a lovely lady of the sea. In which case, uh, I don't really have enough information to make a judgment on that. You don't see a lot of lovely ladies of the sea, man, in this game. I've played with a few in LFG posts and shit, and they're fucking always great. Uh, so that looks like it could be a brig, right? Because it's got that top sail. Like, that's not a sloop. Since I hate Daggertooth anyways, I'm going to just say fuck Daggertooth. Because we we're fully stocked and whatever. We'll uh, fucking run around back to it if we need to anyways. So, I'm going to pick the northward passage and loop around, because then when I'm passing the island, uh, I'll be in his blind spot, so that'll give me a little bit of a fucking, uh, a little bit of a hope there. And also, too, if I decide to cut around the south side right, I'll be cutting down through the middle of all the ports, and there's usually more traffic down on the south side, so that's why I'm doing that. Oh, fuck, that guy's a reaper, too. Oh, I might get my fucking highlight stream together yet tonight, ladies and gentlemen. For anybody just joining, uh, I've been at this for five and a half hours, and I haven't got one fucking ship to chase me yet. Um, so, you know, tell your friends. See a thieves, man. It's not as dangerous as the subreddit keeps leading you to believe. But it's always when you're looking for action, right, that you can't fucking find it. When I'm like, yeah, I gotta get my fucking, get my highlights together, man. Of me fucking uh, running away from all these ships and hucking blunder bombs and all that. But nope, not tonight. Or maybe, we'll see. That's one thing that uh, I was thinking about. I know they really nerfed blunder bombs. But, um,. What you do, right, is if someone's coming up behind you and they're on the bowsprit, is that what it was fucking called? 
I gotta write down these nautical terms, man, so I sound like a real captain here. When they're out on that little wooden pointy thing on the front of the ship, when they decide to run out and fucking uh, jump on your ship, man, when they get close enough to huck a blunder bomb, what you can do is like, you just pop your sail a bit so they get a little closer, and then if it's two guys on a sloop, right, this guy's standing here, if you hit him with a blunder bomb, it'll knock him off into the water, and then you can jump onto their sloop, light it on fire and drop the anchor, jump off, catch a fucking uh, one of those ambiguous mermaids back to your own ship, and then yeah, there you go, problem solved. Makes for a good bit of action, and also they usually stop chasing you after that. But, I haven't gotten that one on video, so I don't know, we'll fucking see that'll ever happen. I'm kind of wondering about like the nerf on blunder bombs as well because like back in the day, back in the day, I don't know what day, I don't know when they nerfed them, those fucking things used to send you six feet into the air sideways off to the moon, dude. You could be in like the middle of the boat and you get hit by a blunder bomb and you're just like on a fucking island in a different part of Sea of Thieves. But now they're just like, they don't even really lift you up. I think that if you were on the fucking, the bowsprit or whatever it's called, and you got hit with one, probably knock you off it, but they don't seem to launch you airborne anymore. They don't really do a lot of damage either, so we'll see how that works out. I'm really not concerned about that, uh, about that Reaper, because, like, okay, they're only level 2, and also the fact that they're at a normal port is really fucking sus to me, that, like, I don't think they're legit Reapers. Because what fucking Reapers hang out at a normal port? They could be, uh, Buying cannonballs and shit, that's possible. Ooh, speaking of buying cannonballs. Fuck me, I don't have any wood. Oh, this is gonna be embarrassing if I get fucking annihilated without any wood on the ship. Yeah, that'll be a big hit to my ego, man. Oh well. YOLO. Do people still say YOLO? Probably not. Hey, that's like some fucking 2012 shit. I was thinking about that. It's funny being like old enough where you've gone through like two sets of uh, I'm not getting fucking... I have no fucking wood just about Jesus. This is not uh, not an ideal situation. But yeah, anyways, the whole thing is where it's like, you learn all the new slang terms, and then like, they're different again. Like, people don't say YOLO, people barely say LIT. Uh, what the hell else do people say that they don't fucking say anymore? I don't know. There's, like, some other funny ones. I feel like there isn't really like, uh... Oh, yeet, yeah. I said yeet one time. I was playing Skate 3 with a bunch of fucking... I call them kids, but they were like teenagers. They were like, uh, I don't know, 18, 19. They were telling me some super fucking funny party stories, man. But like, I didn't like, they wanted me to tell some party stories and then I was like, just didn't. And then they were like, oh fuck. But it was like, bro, I don't want to tell my party stories because like, you know, I'm older now. So all my party stories are like dark and sad. <laughs> it's like, that was cool, but I don't see that guy anymore. He's like, he's crazy now, that kind of shit. But uh, yeah, I said yeet where I was like, oh, I yeeted a fucking skateboard. Yeeted that skateboard and they were like, had n n almost like no idea what I was talking about. And then they started saying yeet, but they were saying it like really awkward. Like it was the first time they'd ever said it in their entire life. So I don't think like, that was like a year ago. So I don't think people say yeet anymore. I still fucking say it though. I say all that shit. I got all the slang words, man. I say them all. I say them all at the same time. It's just like, bang! People are like, whoa, slow down. You're too cool. I can't stop being around you because you're so fucking cool. I'm like, yeah, that's right. YOLO. Um, seriously, though, how many fucking pieces of wood do I hear? I got four... And five. I got nine boards. I'm freaking out about nothing. I'm mostly concerned about like a Kraken or a Skelly. Oh, yeah, that's our fucking buddy in the brig too. They're sailing this way, so I'm gonna fucking uh, do this. 
This is going to be interesting. I wish I had some fucking more wood though, because I will have to probably pass by uh, their broadside. Uh, Stimbo Narnar says, everything was the vibe this past summer, or not the vibe. Yeah, I feel like the vibe, that's some shit that'll never fucking go away. I don't even feel like that's slang. That's just like a real thing, dude. I remember playing, um, there's this game called uh, Afterlife made by LucasArts. It was like SimCity, but it came out in like the 90s. I played that shit on my uh, grandfather's computer when I was like a, a little kid. And it, one of the, the, the mechanics of the game is all about like your different buildings you put down, put out different vibes, right? And it's all about like good vibes and bad vibes. So like if you're building uh, the heaven part of the city, then you want to have like certain good vibes near need to be like near other good vibes and then like certain buildings put out good vibes bad vibes so like oh jesus fucking christ they're coming straight for me well it's gonna be time for me to put my money where my mouth is i only have nine pieces of uh whatever this is like the worst situation though i'm just telling you right now because like I gotta somehow get past these guys without them fucking hitting me and boarding me. And considering the angle that we're at and the fact that I'm squished on the edge of the map, this is not gonna be an easy maneuver. Um, I'm gonna have to probably cross the broadside, so they're gonna be shooting like some cannonballs at me and I'm gonna lot of wood. But luckily, they didn't see me do that because I'm kind of in the blind spot of this and maybe I can just fuck off up the map a little bit differently. Oh no, coming around that way. This is perfect. They fell for that. Well, not fell for it, but this is still perfect. Because now I can fucking head directly upwind and just try to snag him on some islands. And what can I say, man? I've been at it for uh, five and a half hours. I usually want to do these streams for, for five hours. Uh, it was a fucking super good hangout, man. Talked about some good shit. I had fun. But uh, we'll see how this uh, this chase goes. And then uh, if I get sunk, I'll just fucking I'll just call her. But uh, like I said, man. Like I said, there are things you can do, and this situation I'm in here, if I can head directly upwind, I should be able to catch him uh, speed-wise a little bit, a little bit. But they're in a brig. Brig's the fastest ship anyway, so we'll see. There's also not a lot of big islands around here. So. What are you going to do, man? Sometimes you eat the bear, sometimes the bear eats you. That's the way she goes. Also, too, let me just check. Uh, Stimbo Narnar says this has been both entertaining and informative. Thanks, Stimbo, and thank you for hanging out. And anybody else who's hanging out here, man, uh, I know I have like nine chat rules, but like it says in the chat rules, don't don't fucking worry about it. it they're just chat guidelines, because it's like you know, I just want to kind of build uh, build a community that's just entertaining, maybe something different. And and a lot of that shit in the chat rules is just shit that you know I. You just get bombarded with it everywhere, all the time. So it'd be nice to have a place to come where you can get exposure to, you know, some different things. So, you don't have to be shy or whatever, but it's all good, man. It's all good. But yeah, we'll see how this goes. This is also going to be interesting too, man, because like, if I'm heading directly into the wind, will they be able to catch up with me or will they not be able to catch up with me? Because... This is a fucking old school thing where the sloop is supposed to be the fastest directly upwind, but I've had brigs actually get pretty fucking close. And these guys do look like they're gaining on me. But we'll see. They're on the left side. So I'm gonna try to fucking snag them with some islands off the left. And also, let me check my heading here. Southeast. That means we have all the seas in the seas. What do we got here? Plunderous plate, shark fin, and galleon's grave. Sunken grove would be good, but it's kind of like not in the wind direction I want. You really can't. <laughs>
what I was saying is you want to kind of find like uh, one of the bigger islands, right? And then you can uh, you can snag him there. That was uh, what I meant to do, by the way. Oh yeah, he's gonna pop a white flare. I don't believe that for even a second. Also too, it looks like this wind thing is actually working. I never know whether they changed the fucking game mechanics or what, but uh, you head directly upwind in a sloop. You gotta be careful, like I said, not to go like kind of crosswind one way or the other, because they will catch up to you if that's the case. But uh, yeah, fuck it. The thing too is like. They're a little crosswind. I'm going like straight wind. So, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know until I know. <laughs> Stivo Narnar says parlay. Yeah, that white flare. I think that's what that's supposed to mean. But like, like I said, I don't fucking play that shit. I don't play no parlays. Fucking banana. Shouldn't have fed all that meat to my dog. I I take it back. It was totally worth it. He's a good captain. He deserves a good meal. Oh, perfect wind change. Another thing too is, I mean, you know, you could say this is what it is, but if you find another uh, another ship. You can usually just like run the Reaper into the other ship and then you get away, right? Just uh, training them onto another. Come on, I need that pork chop in me. For anybody who doesn't know, when you eat meat, cook meat, um, you can gives you like a little regen thing in the bottom so if you do get into the shit you don't have to worry about constantly eating to refill your health fuck this is going to be a fucking funny chase man I got a feeling these guys probably won't give up and I also have a feeling that we're the only like two people in the server so but there's like, fuck, there's so so much ocean here. We'll see. Mm -mm. Oh, I have like almost full regen anyways. Still need more pork for the battle. Another thing with brigs, right, and galleons is like their turning radius isn't as good. So uh, if they do get too close to you, what you do is you just crank left and crank right, and they can't uh, they can't follow your turn, right? They can't change directions as quickly. What side's this guy on? Not that it really matters. Left still or right? Kind of like right in the fucking middle. again. Crooked Mass, Fort of the Damned, Crook's Hollow would be good. Outpost, not so much. Like, Devil's Ridge or Thieves' Haven would be perfect. Um, I'm 
not really gaining much on him with just the speed advantage here. So I'm gonna fucking uh, hitch him on this island. And then that'll put me at least uh, in a situation where he'll lose sight. And then, yeah, I don't know, man, I'll just engage, like, submarine mode? Is that a fucking thing? <laughs> Not really. I am just wishing, like, so fucking hard that I would have, uh stocked up on wood before this happened because like oh this is not like <sighs> not ideal nine pieces is pretty good i guess but if you gotta like you know come across their broadside and shit gonna be taking some hits Okay, so depending on where they are, right there, just sail it around a little bit. And then when you break line of sight, somewhere around here. Crank it back up wind. And through the power of triangles, that will give me a little bit more distance. I see lightning, so I'm going to go for that, because if that's a storm... Yeah, that's a storm. So I'm just going to take it in through the storm. We'll see if we can lose them through that. Just as long as I don't take it into the Red Sea again, but we got plenty of room to work with, so yeah. And as you can see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess you can't you can't see it when I do that, but I'm all like making uh, fucking making signs at the screen, man. We'll have to watch these in post and see. I think the way my camera's set up is it's like if I point this way, I'm on the wrong side of the screen or something, so it doesn't really work out. But that's fine. You get the gist of it. <laughs> Good luck, man. With this wind straight up, I will make it to that storm. And then what I'm going to try to do is you go right into the eye of the storm, and then uh, nobody knows what fucking direction they're heading in anyways when you're in those goddamn things. So at some point, you just fucking try to crank a 90 and come out one side or the other, and hopefully they are not still on your ass. And also, I get more of those ill-fated commendations for time spent in a storm, which is fucking great. Because I feel like nothing really says uh, I don't give a shit whether you sink me more than a uh, title that calls my shit the ill-fated. Getting the rogue titles would be good too, but um, yeah, I don't know, man. I got nobody to play shanties with. I mean, the whole thing is like usually when I play this game, I've been talking about it before. I just usually put up LFG posts on the Xbox Live thing, and then you just you know you meet all kinds of crazy people, whether they're good or bad or whatever. You just play with them once. If you don't like them. If you do like them, then add them to your friends with, play with them again. It's fucking great. But, you know, if I'm going to be streaming on Twitch, I, I can't just be playing with randoms on the LFG because, you know, I don't know what kind of crazy shit those guys are going to say. Get me banned for life, dude.
Now, the big question is, do I cut left or cut right once I'm in this storm? And also, too... Okay, my guess is I'm gonna cut right. Head on back up to the shores of Plenty. Oh, yeah. That's better. What I'll probably do is I'll probably just hang out in that storm for a little bit. Anybody knows any good storm songs? Any good storm shanties? Now would be the, the time to start chanting them. Maybe if uh, there's any pagans in the audience, you can just give a prayer to Neptune for me. I'd really appreciate that. Stimbo Narnar says riders on the storm. Doesn't fucking get much more relevant than that, having a half hour conversation about Jim Morrison. Yeah. We're gonna go fucking ride it out. God, hopefully it's like a fucking, just a killer of a storm, man. I don't know if there's like different grades of storms, but I hope this is just the worst fucking storm imaginable. The downside of it, though, is that when you fucking sail around in a storm, your ship breaks, and I only got nine pieces of wood. Yeah, and these guys are messaging me, too, of course. Oh, we just want to be friends. Yeah, he says, come on, buddy. No, you fucking come on. And this is what I'm saying, man. People fucking hate chasing you. They hate it. They fucking hate it. It's, it's like the most uh, demoralizing thing ever when you're chasing a sloop and he's just running around and you can't catch up to him. Eventually they pull off. What else has he got to say? We just want to be friends. No, ain't playing for it. These guys are cops. I can fucking smell a cop, man. Fucking police. Simbo Narsa, Narnar says, or a girl. Yeah, um... I'm trying to be, like, gender neutral with my shit here, but... I don't know even what I'm, what I was, uh, this, this is a, this is a guy. I can tell this is a guy. I mean, I guess I can't, but like, yeah, I guess I can. <laughs> I'm not saying like by his behavior or anything, which is by his like his chat, his chat shit. Oh, Stimbo Narnar says, I just mean chasing a girl can be demoralizing. Yeah, chasing anything, man, where's you out? Where's you out? This storm isn't really going to give me the cover I was hoping it would be. I feel like there's different grades of storms, man. This is not the one I wanted. But hey, whatever. It's all good. That's a good omen, right? Dippo Narnar says, is it DEFCON 3? Uh, which one's the fucking... DEFCON 1's the worst, right? I'd say we're at about DEFCON 3, yeah. Because these guys are... not going to give up. And this storm isn't as fucking big as I wanted it to be. It's not obscuring... Um, some of these storms, man, they got like the thick fog, and that shit can like obscure the vision, right? of what's going on. This is not one of those storms. This is a pretty chill storm. <laughs> this storm is not DEFCON 3. This storm is fucking DEFCON 25. I wouldn't even call this a storm, to be honest. It is more like a gentle breeze. Uh, it's getting a little thicker here. It's on fire. It's burning. I'm on fire, everything's on fire. <laughs> Fuck, this is gonna get interesting. Simbonarnar says, unobscured by clouds by Pink Floyd. <laughs> oh, am I still on fire, man? Come now. All it takes is the littlest bit of anything. So 
He's off to the left. Ah, fuck. I don't want to cut crosswind with the brig, but... Yeah, whatever. Do what you gotta do sometimes. Really no fucking uh, good way to do this. Cause yeah, you start hitting crosswind, right? And it's like, that brig is gonna fucking catch up real quick. Especially too, since I don't have the uh, the crew to work sails, right? But yeah, nope. No wind. Think what'll probably happen is whatever island that is. Oh yeah, I remember that island. We cut through that last time. We'll see how it goes. We'll probably have to fucking circle around it a few times. Fuck with them over there. Unless they've gassed out already, but I don't know. These guys seem like pretty fucking hurt and for loot. They're sending you messages and shit. Simbo Narnar says, Did you ever play Wind Waker, the Zelda DS game? Oh, there they are. Uh, no, I've seen Fate play it though. Stimbo Narnar also says, I think I'm delirious. Can you get scurvy from watching a stream? Uh, you know, you're probably good. Probably good, man. Is this real life? Shooting more white flares? No. <laughs> Quiet, Chewy, try to remain stoic. You are the captain. Yeah, I saw some people playing Wind Waker. The one thing about it that I didn't get is, like, the islands seemed a little small for, like, a Zelda game, you know what I'm saying? There's lots of, uh, lots of whatever, but the actual islands seemed kind of like, there wasn't a lot of, uh, I don't know. I haven't seen all the islands, so I just saw, like, um, saw some other streamers playing it once or twice. Hmm. Wind's not really in my favor. Mm -hmm. You know what? Fuck that. I'm gonna keep going the direction I'm going here. Check my map again, because I don't really know where my heading is. Looks like we're in the shores of plenty, though. Oh. 
Oh yeah, they got me pinned. I only got one maneuver here, really. Crank it up wind again. And see if I can make it to that island there before whatever the fuck. They're up. They always try to board. But, uh, you know, before I go down here, if they do get me, um, taking a look at the captain's log. My current voyage. Yeah, so 250,000 gold. It's not a bad run. Can't complain, man. This is, if I can fucking get rid of these guys, it'll be one hell of a daring escape. But they seem quite thirsty. Depending on how close they get, you know, because it's like I'm not going to start running around the island completely until the okay, that's absolutely close enough. <laughs> so, this is my whole gamble, man. If I can fucking uh, get close to that island before they're fucking close enough to board me or whatever, I've got my blunderbuss to watch the sides. And uh, what I got for throwables? Nothing. I'll just grab some blunder bombs here, just in case. They get close enough, like I said, I might be able to blundy them off. But I'm not like, you know, a pro gamer here uh, in the sense that I'm going to fucking blundy off two guys and then hit their anchor. And also, too, even this cut here, yeah, I should be able to make it. We'll see what happens. Because that's the whole thing is if they were too close here, if I can't make this cut across to this island, then I'm definitely boned. It would have been game over, but... Since I can now cut across this island, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sail around this island in my little sloop, and they're going to sail around it in their brig, and because I'm in a sloop, they're not going to be able to catch me. And uh, they'll probably shoot some guys to the island, maybe sword lunge to try to get onto my ship or whatever. Maybe they'll get close enough to harpoon me. I'm not really sure. It's been a good run anyways, so I'm not really, like, sweating it out here. But, uh... It would be nice to escape. <laughs> this is my favorite part. Follow me around the island. Follow me, follow me. Ha 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 ha. That's probably the guy fucking shooting us up there. Trying to board. <laughs> Come now, chase me forever. <laughs> that made me sweat a little bit. Dibbo Narnar says they had levels, though. I think a lot were dungeons and went quite deep. Yeah, I only saw some people play a little bit of it, so I don't know. I do have to pay attention to the situation at hand, though, because. Boop, 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 boop. How many times do you think they'll follow me around this island? That's the real question. I've never fucking been in a situation where I've had to infinitely sail around an island. But this is... I mean, it's what I'm gonna do, man. <laughs> Pretty good island, too in general. It's got a lot of palm trees, got a lot of coconuts, it's got all the things that uh, an island should have. Stimbo Narnar says, almost hit you right in the wheelhouse. Thanks for noticing. Yeah, I almost died. Not really though. I have reach can't one shot you in this game. The funny thing is, is at what point am I going to be behind him? Oh! That's the guy there. Hold on, I gotta wave my dog at him. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. Oh, fuck, that's border. Get off my ship, you son of a bitch. <laughs> at least he's got the car. Don't light me on fire, that's my fucking thing. Okay, so now we're downwind. 
God, I gotta put these fires out. We gotta fix a hole in the ship. Merchant's job is never done. Oh! No, that's Megalodon, can't use that. Fix the hole. And then we do it again. And again and again and again. Should be a little more careful of, uh, you know, just everything in general, I think. I should be more careful of. Like, I will run out of wood at some point. And also, too, I got a feeling they're probably going to double around back on me because I can't, I can't see them now, so I'm not really sure if they're still fucking doing circles. So I got to be careful about that. Dude. Looks pretty good so far though. Don't really need to hug the island if they're on the other side of it. Yep, yeah, there they are. There's another guy there, yeah, he's gonna try to board. Maybe light me on fire some more. I mean, he'll run out of fire pots eventually. What would be funny? Oh, am I? Oh, I'm getting hit by a fucking, yeah, all right. Well, sometimes you just don't get the luck you want. If those are fucking anchor balls as well, I'm 100% fucked and this round is over. But hey, that was, uh, <laughs> Was what it fucking was, man, when it was. Was what it was when it was it. I don't know what kind of fucking magic balls those are, but if those are anchor balls, I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking, uh... I'm fucked the whole ways right now, so... Welcome to the stream, but, like... Again, I don't know... Oh? Still good. My problem was I was yakking earlier and I fucking did not pick up enough wood uh, at the port that I was in, so I'm not gonna have enough wood to fight this skelly sloop and uh, still get away from these guys. So that's it. I've been going for six hours here, man. Dave Head says the lag ball. Yeah, we all know the lag ball. Two skelly. Loops, and that's probably the brig on my left, right? So this is where... Come on, baby. Yeah, it's over, buddy. I know. I've been going for six hours here. I made two, uh, 250,000. But, you know, I fucking gonna struggle to the very end. Never give up, never surrender. My biggest problem, though, like I was saying, is we were talking about Jim Morrison for like an hour and a half, and I fucking forgot to stock up on wood the whole fucking time. And so now I only got like four planks left, and uh, you just want wood when you're in a ship made of it, you know? God, there's so many holes. How many fucking blanks have I got left here? None. Let that be a lesson. <laughs> that is fucking, uh, yeah. Banana, my only friend of the end. If I had the fucking wood, man, that pisses me off. Cause you see how much, uh, 
You see how much fucking distance I gained on that guy? Oh, it's a dancing ball. If I had fucking bought that wood, then we weren't yakking as much, even though I love the yakking, that's why I'm here, man. Um, I could have fucking kept this going if I just had those planks. That club hall was like a decent maneuver, but now that I got two of these uh, skelly sloops on me, okay. Hit. And no wood left, yeah. Ripped me. I hope these guys have fun selling uh, 90 fucking boxes of commodity, okay? They're not even really worth anything if you don't sell them at the right ports, so it's kind of like a fucking gag loot. Stimbo Narnar, don't even fucking worry about it, buddy. I'm glad that we fucking talked about Morrison. It needed to be said. You know, did he whip his, uh, did he whip his member out there, didn't he? We'll never fucking know. Nobody will ever know. But it's an important part of history. It's funny that, you know, talking about wood and I didn't even bother to buy it. Dave Head says he did. Yeah, I might have. Fuck you! <laughs> All right, well, boys. I'm really, uh, I'm really disappointed in myself for not buying more fucking wood so I couldn't have kept that chase going longer because I'm telling you, you can fucking keep those things going indefinitely, as you saw with the uh, little island maneuvering there and whatnot. Just do some club hauling. Uh, generally, what you try to hope for is not to get hit by your own... Uh, not to get hit by this fucking skelly sloops. You want them to get hit by it, right? But it's like... Whatever, man. Oh yeah, I got the automat uh, automod turned on there, still on Arnar. So, uh, so that's that. That's that. Stimbo Narnar said, uh, "Well, you know what? I'm not gonna even repeat what you said. You should know better than that." It was uh, Schrodinger's package, right? Because it's like, did he whip it out or didn't he whip it out? Because it's a big, uh, it's a big point of like, you know, we just will never know. There's no video of it. As we were talking about it, there's audio and he's like, my opinion is just knowing Jim Morrison. Uh, not that I ever knew him personally, but I'm pretty sure he probably did. He probably did. That's my guess. So, uh, yeah, man, I've been going for like six hours here. It's pretty late. Do you want me to, to just fucking, you know what? I'm fucking, I'm just gonna start another fucking, uh, another flag. Maybe or maybe not. I cut my finger on a, uh, Cranberry juice bottle today? Can you fucking believe that shit? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable to me. It's one of the big ones though. Something about the weight of it. And it had like a little nub on the bottom. I should have taken that as a... As a, uh, an omen. A bad omen. Stayed off the seas today. But you know what? I can't even complain because like... That was 100% my fault for not buying wood at the fucking port when I was supposed to. So, um, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to stay on the save server. I'm going to pop another emissary. I'm going to load up. Uh, I'm going to load up like a little bit of supplies and maybe see if, uh... If I can get that guy to fucking chase me a little bit again. But you know what? Honestly, I've been at this for six hours, so I'll fucking tell you what, guys and gals. I'm going to be here. Uh, I'm going to try to stream, you know, every night for a while, depending on how my schedule is. At least three or four times a... Uh, three or four times a week at least. Like I was saying earlier, I'm going to fucking edit a lot of these down into a uh, series about commodity runs. Um, you know, and just to to document like uh, the times I sank, what worked, what didn't work. Um, that club hall was fucking badass. If I wasn't getting annihilated by skellies and uh, 
you know, I had the wood to repair the ship. I don't know how much longer I could have kept that going, but. But um, in a situation like that, like I really want to get into a situation like that again because um, usually, like the last time I ran into a brig that was circling an island with me, they just fucking uh, damn near gave up and then they got hit by a, a, a skeleton galleon. But what I'd really like to know, and I don't have the data on this, right? So why I want that to happen again is I want to see how many fucking times, like you can just keep circling that island indefinitely, man. And at what point are they going to just give up? Will they just keep going? I mean, they probably will. But I don't know. Like I said, I don't have the data on it. So just got to keep trying. Um, but yeah, that was a good run, man. I got like 250k. Uh, I could have gotten more if we weren't having such fucking good, uh, good chat there. About all kinds of shit. I don't even know what the fuck I talked about. I'm going to have to like, you know... I thought I'd uh, remember it by the end of the stream, but it's totally fucking different when you're actually, like, you know, chatting with people and shit, so I should be writing them down on my fucking notes. On my note page here. Very important notes. And, uh, thanks for fucking coming out, everybody. And, uh, I'd appreciate it. If you enjoyed hanging out, you know, give me a follow or whatever. You'll know when I go live next. I don't have much of a schedule yet. But I'll probably be live around the same time. It'll be uh, in the evenings. I'm on the west coast in Canada here, so I'm on Pacific Standard Time. So I usually, I'm thinking I'll go live around like 6 o'clock uh, p.m. But, eh, you know, sometimes I might decide to go earlier if my schedule's open. Because I got a little bit more energy earlier in the day. So it might be easier for me or something. I don't fucking know. I'm still like new at this, so we'll see how things go. And, uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by, everybody really appreciate it. Is this my book? It's probably somebody else who got sunk and quit. Fuck, that was a good chase, but like, uh, Stimbo Narnar says, Yar, she's a salty stream. Yeah, not, I'm not really like, I can't even complain because, uh, well, for one, that's why I'm out here. I'm out here to get chased, and two, I made 250k, so, whatever. Um, but like, <laughs> uh, I wish that fucking storm, man, that's the thing is that storm pissed me off. Next time I get in a storm, I got to remember to see, cause I was under the impression and like, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody who's played this game before, but usually when you get into the storms, is there not like a wall of fucking fog? Like I know there's the fog walls, like the gas attacks. But also, it's like, uh, is there a fucking, is there not, like, more fog in the storms? That kind of, like, I was sort of embarrassed about that, because I was like, oh, yeah, I'll lose them in the storm. And then I go in there, and that was, like, the clearest storm I've ever seen, man. You could see, like, right across the map, and it was just a, a light bit of rain and whatever. And it actually fucked me up more than it fucked them up, because it's like, I don't have the, the crew I don't have the crew to run the fucking sails and patch my ship as I'm doing it. So we'll see. Maybe that's not a good strategy, but I could swear, man, I've been in storms before. And you couldn't see shit. Couldn't see shit in front of you. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to, like I said, next time I'm in a storm, take careful fucking, uh, be careful watch of that. So yeah, man. Thanks everybody for hanging out. That was fucking a good time. I had a blast. Like I said. Follow me if you want. You'll see me next time I'm online, but I'll definitely be streaming tomorrow. I'll do another fucking uh, do another run, and we'll see what the fuck happens. I'll remember to buy wood at the port there, so next time I get chased, I'll be able to keep that going a little longer. But um, that was good near the end, man. I had that good club haul. Took him for a spin, and then like I could have just kept him around that island indefinitely. That was some fucking funny shit. And uh, yeah, that's that, man. Yeah, fun times, buddy, fun times. I don't want to go, but, I mean, it's like 3 in the morning here. And I'm, it's been 6 hours and fucking 15 minutes. Where does the fucking time fly, hey? Where does it fly? Where does it fly? That's another thing about this game is I just love the fact that you just get on a boat, man, and like 6 hours goes by. That was fucking dope, though. Except, like, you know... 
Shit about that wood. Shit about that wood. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I'm out of here. I'll catch you next time.